to our phones right at 877-365-3636, since the stuff is happening here in New York, where we are today. And in Washington, D.C. And right. back at home. So uh, plug our phones in, Rob, because this is a, a lot of times when we've been on the air in these situations, this is the best way to find out stuff that's happening right. because we know people who are by the Pentagon. If uh, the phones are working, I know that uh, here in New York City, uh, a lot of people are uh, without phone service because of what has happened. Right, let me see if we got service. it. Hold on, Mike. All right, well, we can, we can call out. Let's see what's going on. All right, flip the switch at 877 877- Three six five thirty six thirty six. You can call us on that line, or you can call the. Uh, do we have the NEW lines up also? Uh, Johnny, what's that number? Hold on a second. Eight seven seven six nine two one zero two seven. You can call us on either lines. Uh, let me see. The planes have crashed in the World Trade Center. Christ, it was a mess watching this thing on on TV. Uh, I got the call that the that there was a first explosion, and then you could actually see. The, the second plane fly into the building. I mean, it's clear, clear as a bell. Now, what is the latest we have on uh, one of the towers at the uh, World Trade Center? I, 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 you know, this has happened. S- news is breaking on this as we it speak. It collapsed. It saw it collapsed. Well, we don't know that for sure. Yes, yet. yeah. Do we know that. Has, that, that, has that been confirmed? I have yeah. seen it. Yes. Right. Uh, the first uh, World Trade Center building that was hit this morning, which is Tower Number 2, the South Tower. That was the one that was hit by the 757. That's right. That has collapsed now. We've seen uh, some of the most horrific things you can imagine. Uh, uh, dozens of people jumping to their deaths out of the building, trying to escape. And uh, as Don alluded to, uh, uh, problems in Washington as well, including uh, the reports of a, a crash or a fire at a helipad at the Pentagon, as well as a fire at the Washington Mall, where the monuments are located. The nation is on full terrorist alert. Uh, alert. The city of Los Angeles is under full uh, tactical alert. And uh, this is considered a nationwide terrorist attack at this point. And here in New York, if you're not in the city now, you're not going to be able to get out or, right. or get in. All the tunnels are closed. All the bridges are closed. And, I, and Buzz, you and I just heard, haven't we, clo- haven't we closed on every airport in America now? All airport takeoffs have been stopped across the country in the United States. No planes are taking off in the U.S. until further notice. All right, let's go to uh, Tom here from uh, New York, who is at the Trade Center and uh, saw the uh, collapse. Todd. Hey, guys, how you doing? Uh, Tom, good morning. Hi, buddy. Hey, I'm a little on the shock side right now, but yeah. I, be, um, I, I was about maybe Chamber Street, which is about 10 blocks away, and uh, I saw maybe four or five bodies jumping out, and uh, all of a sudden, <clears throat> all of a sudden, the, uh, the South Tower just, 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 just collapsed, and I never seen anything like it, and people, there were tons and tons of people seeing all this, and then all of a sudden, this debris starts coming down West Broadway, and then everybody starts running. People Buzz, are you falling. monitoring right now? All yes, right, Buzz, Buzz wants to break in here. I'm sorry. All right, what well, you got, Buzz? We've heard reports, and those reports have now been confirmed that the collapse of that first building was caused by an explosion at the base of the building. So apparently a bomb in the building collapsed what remained, causing a third explosion and the collapse of the uh, first building that was hit today. Yeah, I see that. Was, uh, that was a theory, and uh, now that's been confirmed. See on Channel 2, it says a uh, third blast brought down building. Right. Christ, what a mess this is. All right, uh, Tom. Yes, sir. You saw, you saw people jumping out of windows? Yes, sir. Um, on the North Tower, we saw at least three on the North Tower. Um, and before I got there, there was one before that. But the um, uh, the thing that's really really knocked me out was the uh, the way the building collapsed. It was, it was incredible. I've never seen anything like it in my life. All right. Thank you, Tom. Thank sure. you for the call. Now, listen, you got to bear with us on the phones here. We're trying to get our regular number, 877-365-3636. New York, you can call 212-757-1027 or 877 692 one o two seven. This is like something from that Denzel Washington movie. This is beyond the anything. siege. I think really what we're looking at, and when this is all sorted out, this is something beyond uh, what you would see in any movie. Nation's um, under attack. The yeah. uh, nation is, seems to be, uh, you know, right now with. Uh, we don't have. Do we have updates on what the situation is in Washington, Don? You had mentioned the Pentagon right now. Yes, uh, the, we, there, there was an. Ex- was it a plane flew into the Pentagon? Also, Buzz. Yes, that's the report that we've heard. And now the White House, the State Department, the Treasury Department, uh, and the U.S. Capitol have all been evacuated mm-hmm. uh, in anticipation of possible further terrorist attacks. I know the mall is on fire. Yeah, down, down by now, all when the you monuments. say the mall is on fire. You're talking about some of the monuments, some of the I'm monuments about down there. Just, just they fire at the mall. We don't 
and die. Have a picture. I mean, the mall is on, an open space with... Uh, yeah, on the bottom know. of the screen, a crawl on MSNBC, it just says on the bottom, National Mall on Fire. CNN right. had just reported there has been an explosion on Capitol Hill as well. Christ's uh, sake! You know, the news is breaking so fast right now, it's very difficult to keep up to date on everything that we're getting. Now, but, are we uh, getting our local... Are we getting the D.C. lines going here? Engineering is working engineering on Engineering is working on right now, because that's going to be right now... We have a bunch of people from New York who could tell us about the World Trade Center. Right. Mm -hmm. But we have also have the lifeline uh, to JFK in D.C., where we we're on now. live right now. Let's... Uh, hold on, let me take this call. Excuse me. Uh, hello, Donna Mike Show. Hello. Are we able to get any? Uh, have we? Uh, you know, we've gotten one phone call through, and that that surprises me because a lot of the cell phones yep. are shut down here in New York City. Let's try another one. Hey, Josh. Hey, what's up? Hey, you're on NEW and JFK. Hi. How are you? I just want to let you know on the president's status. He took off from Florida and was heading back to Washington D.C. There were some questions about what the president was doing. And I would imagine uh, with another explosion on the hill, on Capitol Hill right now, yeah. that uh, security precautions for the president are, are at an all-time high oh, yeah. also. Now, didn't I see him Definitely. on TV, though, about an hour ago? He was probably uh, doing that from Florida when he said, uh, you know, that, that was when we, uh, we had had the initial attack when someone had uh, flown this plane into the World Trade Center, and he was ordering a full investigation. And this, that is before what, what has developed in the last, I would say, half hour. Uh, occurred. There's so many questions I have, and I know Buzz is monitoring uh, our, our sister station, Winds in his ear. Uh, the planes that flew into the World Trade Center, they, yeah. they, they were hijacked planes? The first one was for sure. We still don't have details on the second one, but the first one was an American Airlines jet out of Boston's Logan Airport, and uh, apparently uh, pilots have a, a way of sending a coded message to air traffic control to let uh, someone know that they are being hijacked, and that message was sent just before the first plane. I also want to mention that uh, with Witnesses say that on that second, uh, apparently sort of uh, unmarked or not clearly marked plane that crashed into the second tower, just before it hit, did what's known as a victory wave, where it rocks its left and right wings back and forth before actually uh, uh, crashing into the and, building. And, Mike, you know a lot more about these planes and stuff than we do. 757 is uh, a long-range uh, twin-engine plane that is uh, not as big as a 777 or a 747, so, so but tell this me, is a long-range pl uh, plane. Give it, give it to me, layman. How many seats in, in an aisle? Is it, is it one of those three-seat jobbers? Uh, no, it is not a three-seat jobber. I think you've got three and three in a 757. So that's section. a big plane. It's a large yeah. plane. It's not as large as a 747, but it is, as I said, it is the type of plane that, that goes cross-country, and it is the uh, type of plane. It is a large plane. It is not as large as a 747, but it's a big enough plane to uh, to do an incredible amount of damage, as obviously it has. And has anybody even started, I hate to be the one to bring this up, but has anybody even started to, at least here in, in New York, to think about the amount of people who have been uh, killed, yeah. injured. In I don't the think. I, I mean, forty thousand people work in the World Trade Center, right? I think what you're what you're getting right now is a situation where this is happening so fast that uh, you know hospitals and ambulances and emergency service people are trying to deal with the situation as it happens. Uh, the CNN has just recanted. They now say there was no explosion on Capitol Hill. Yeah. Ah, okay. Well, you know how it happens, and I think we all have to. We have to be uh, as careful as we can, also because. Uh, in the hours when something like this happens, what you do uh, get is a situation where a lot of erroneous stories come through. And, uh, Buzz, I, I think it's important because people at this time of day are turning on their radios immediately. And, Buzz, can, can we get Buzz to give us an update on exactly what's yeah, happened so please far? Please do, Buzz. Again, it started uh, this morning in New York, uh, the what appears to be a full terrorist attack on the United States, when uh, the American Airlines jet out of Boston, uh, hijacked, slammed into uh, the World Trade Center, one of the two towers, the South Tower. It hit at about the 70th floor of, the, of that uh, building. Uh, about 18 minutes later, a second plane crashed into the second World Trade Center tower. Uh, since that time, we've seen people jump. There have been explosions and fires reported out of Washington, D.C., and then since that, uh, the uh, first World Trade Center building that was hit by a plane this morning, uh, a bomb went off at the base of that building, causing the entire building to collapse. Uh, there were obviously uh, rescue workers and reporters and other people below, medical uh, technicians uh, standing by to help. We don't know how many people we've lost in that respect. We don't know yet, and, and it will be some time before we'll know how many people we've lost in the crashes in, into the buildings. What about the uh, Pentagon? What do you know about that situation? Uh, they, uh, the false report from CNN 
again uh, about uh, the explosion on Capitol Hill apparently was uh, uh, actually a reverberation from the Pentagon explosion. And now that's a, that's another plane that they indicate has uh, flown into the Pentagon. Yeah, uh, a small plane at a uh, at a helipad uh, there at the Pentagon uh, caused the fire and explosion there. And uh, as not, of course, nearly the damage we're talking about at the World Trade Center. But it's very scary. I mean, and I don't have to underscore this, but it, it makes us and for that matter the world realize how vulnerable we are if our own freaking Pentagon can be attacked. Yeah, now, now, you know, I got all kinds of questions about uh, about airplanes coming in. I know in D.C. that there are that there are restrictions that you can't fly over certain areas, right. and you right. can't fly over the monuments, you can't fly over the White House. Those same restrictions uh, mm-hmm. apply to uh, when you're flying into New York airports as well right. with the city center. So well, then how come we don't have guys up there to... Shouldn't we have guys up there to, to shoot these planes down? I think down? what you're dealing with in the situation of Washington, D.C., when you've to- when you're talking about a much uh, much different security situation, you have uh, people ready that if a plane breaks its flight path, that is, uh, there are there are jets that that scramble in a situation like that. But you know, when you've got a madman that is hijacked a plane and he has a, a plane the size of a 757, I, I'm not sure. What I don't understand, I'd like to know, so many unanswered questions about when the code went through, you know, whether there was anything that could have been done. And, and this uh, is obviously something that whoever's doing this has timed this out pretty yeah, well, that they've, yeah. got, they've got the two things happening at the World Trade Center, they've got the, the deal happening at the Pentagon, they've got whatever's happening on the mall. Uh, let's go to Eugene here in New York, who was... Uh, uh, at the around the tower, saw the second blast at the uh, at the World Trade Center. Uh, Eugene. Yes, hey guys. Hey, you're on the air on uh, NEW and JFK. Yeah, I was going with my friend uh, to Midtown. I work on 41st and 3rd. Yeah. And I'm on, going on on the FDR where Pier 17, where the big boat is. And all of a sudden, we're driving and we see like a bunch of papers flying in the air, and we're like, "What the hell is going on?" It's like a big pillar of smoke. And all of a sudden, it's like boom, like a huge, huge blast. I turn around and I see like fireball, like one big fireball coming into another, a second one from the second building. And it's like like a curtain of fire was on the second building that got hit, like all across the surface of the building, like on the 65th floor about, going straight up. And the other building was like Godzilla took like a huge bite out of it. Like yeah, so this, is, this is absolutely. Thank you, Eugene. Probably one of the most terrifying things that's happened in the United States. And for those of you listening, uh, wait to hear our regular show today. Uh, uh, we ain't doing it today. This is, this is the Don and Mike show. We are on WNEW. We are on WJFK in New York and in Washington. I think the other stations on our network will uh, pick us up soon. Uh, the engineers... Listen, it's only the biggest catastrophe in the in the history of, of America. How long till they can get our telephones up? Do you know? They're working on it, Robbie? They are currently working on it. I think one thing that's slowing them down a bit is that about half the phone service in, D- in New York is down. Right I've, now. I've just lost the internet yeah, services. So mind. they're doing their best to do it, and we are in touch with JFK via internet because there's no other way to get in touch with D.C. right now. So right. Buzz, you're still monitoring uh, the uh, sister station here at WNEWWINS. 1010 wins. And they are giving you updates. Buzz is going to be giving us updates as, uh, as he gets them as to uh, what the the very latest is. All right, so so you know this goes from this morning when I, I'm watching the Today Show, and you know I, I've had a whole rap on Katie Couric today because I, right. I saw her on the train yesterday, and we had a a conversation. Right. I'm watching and I'm thinking to myself, you know, hey, this girl looks pretty good considering that she was on a train last night at, at eight o'clock. Mm-hmm. They come in with the breaking news that the the, the plane has crashed into the World Trade Center, and you know you think, oh, tragedy, this is awful. Then two seconds later, while they're still on live TV, yes. you see the second plane come in. Then you get the thing with the Pentagon, and this this is it's unfreaking believable. And I don't think that people have yet felt the realm of, of what's going on. I, I, I know. I left my building today, and the doorman was sitting outside, standing outside, and you could see the smoke. And I live down by 67th Street, by, by Amsterdam Avenue. You could see the smoke from the World Trade Center all the way from there. And at that point, it was just registering with him where he said, do you realize that these guys on purpose flew, the, this is like an hour and a half ago, on purpose these guys flew the planes into the World Trade Center. It's truly amazing. And uh, you, you, to give it some perspective, uh, you know, even having breakfast about an hour and a half ago, uh, the waitress who had a, a mother that worked in the uh, World Trade Center, in the building actually next to the World Trade Center, on the phone trying to get information. Uh, my brother-in-law, who uh, who works uh, on a semi-regular basis, comes down to New York, does his business at the World Trade Center. Anyone, uh, when you have 40,000 employees that are working in, in, this, uh, in this environment, 
this touches so many people immediately. It's uh, it's truly a phenomenal uh, tragedy, and uh, that's why I think uh, as as this goes on, this you know we're, we're at the very beginning of this right now, and as we get more information in, the uh, magnitude of this tragedy uh, is going to prove to be. I I don't see how it couldn't be the greatest tragedy in the history of the United States. And who are the who are the MFers who did this? And, and I mean, and, you know, there's going to be right. There's good. There's got to be retribution. I mean, someone's going to. Well, you know, you're talking about suicide uh, bombings, right. and uh, you know, you're talking about uh, retribution that is. Uh, it, it, it probably is the same terrorist that we hear about occasionally, but that, that is also going to, uh, it's going to be a long time before all this uh, settles down and we find out what's going on. I see now that all, if indeed it's over, all flights to D.C. and to New York are now being sent, all incoming flights are being sent to Canada. Wow. So the, so the planes that the planes that were in the air mm -hmm. that were on their way either to D.C. or here to New York, they're all, they're all they got to go to Canada. That's probably for the best. That's where to go now. Go to Canada. Our phone line eight seven seven three six five thirty six thirty six. You got to bear with us because the phones are, are crazy. Two one two seven five seven one zero two seven or eight seven seven six nine two one zero two seven. Although I've been told now, if you pick up the phone virtually anywhere on the East Coast, I don't know how it is on the West Coast. You can't even get a dial tone in some cases. Right, absolutely. This is like a war, and we don't know who the enemy is just yet. Uh, as uh, someone mentioned, it's probably the usual suspects. So the World Trade Center was the target of an attack uh, by terrorists in 1993, but uh, no one has yet claimed responsibility, and in many cases, nobody does claim responsibility for attacks like these. I do think, uh, you know, the United States has been aware of the threats from certain uh, fundamentalist groups right. that, uh, that have uh, targeted the U.S. before, but I do think what you're saying right now will be a fundamental change in the way our borders are, are looked at from this point sure forward, you are never going to see security in airports anywhere else uh, be the same after today. This, I know, this is amazing. I know that you got on me when I kid about this. If I'm building that giant wall yeah. <laughs> around America. Well, you know what? You know you might not be too far <laughs> off there. <laughs> it, it might be time. And let me give you a perspective. As, as someone who, who was born and raised in D.C., and now we live in New York. We live in both places. I think the feeling in New York is that when when the the, the first the news that this happened at the World Trade Center, it's awful, but it's happened before. Right. Uh, I think in D.C. people have a feeling that if you live in D.C. you're invincible mm -hmm. because you've got everything in the world there. You got the Pentagon there. You got all the juice there. You got the rules that no one can fly anywhere near. And and I got to think back at home, th those people in D.C. are flipping out more than the people in New York are. I don't think anybody could flip out more than the people in New York right now when you're talking about the magnitude of what has just happened. The the, few, the pure numbers that we're talking about here Hold in on, New York City. Hold on, we got some more. We got, we got some more. The other building's down. The other, are the other trade down. centers down? Both of them down. Unbelievable. Jesus Christ. Is that the result of another explosion or just the stress on the building? It was, All right, thank you. It would certainly seem so. That's what happened with the first one. I mean, this is... This is like Armageddon. This is too weird that this is happening today. You're talking about how New Yorkers are reacting to this, and I think they have a certain feeling of invincibility, too. And when that first plane hit, they, they, they thought, well, you know, a bad thing has happened in New York. This happens in New York. But to see the, this orange-colored smoke uh, sweeping over lower Manhattan and to stand next to New Yorkers, lifelong New Yorkers watching this, gasping, as they saw I, this happen, I, I really, you know, we're we're doing our job here. We're trying to pass along the information, but I got a sick feeling in my stomach that I've never had doing a broadcast before. Mm -hmm. This is, uh, I don't think this can be described. No, the, the, the amount of uh, the, the the magnitude of what what has happened today. It is so surreal, and I can almost equate it with the movie Independence Day when they mm -hmm. blew up the major things that are right. you know, that mean America. The, the 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 I believe they blew up the Empire State Building, and to see the. The World Trade Center actually fall. Mm -hmm. It is the most horrifying thing, and you're mixed with fear and mm -hmm. sadness and, right. you, and disbelief. But get back when it's like you're right, Mike. That that it's bad for everybody. It's bad for the people of New York. They feel awful. It's a tragedy. But back in D.C., where we're from. Mm -hmm. We've never had anything like this happen. I mean, the closest we've had is when, like, a nut will jump right. the, the gate at the White House, or when the one guy did uh, fly his small plane in, in, in into the White House. Right. We've never had it. I mean, did, haven't you guys, like me, always thought the Pentagon is right. absolutely like Superman's... I, I hate to bring Superman. It's like the Fortress of Solitude. It's the Defense Department, yeah. for crying out loud. Impenetrable. I mean, I know. And, and, and that, uh, just so we update on that situation, we're talking about a fire at the helipad, right? Right. That's, that's what happened at yes, the Pentagon. We've heard. And for you guys who aren't from D.C., you should know, I mean, you see the pictures of the Pentagon. You, you, you see the, the, the weird shape of it. But for those of us who, who live in Washington... 
You drive on 395, you drive through Arlington. Yesterday when Rob and I were making our way to, uh, to the airport, we eventually had to take a train. It is no big deal to drive past the sign that says Pentagon, and it's I know. right there, and it's a normal building. Well, and things you, are going to change right now. You look at it, and you think it's invincible. Buzz, what do you have? Nothing new. We're still waiting for more information, and I'm still having a hard time. You talked about the phones being tied up. Uh, the Internet is a difficult maneuver as well today. Well, it would be nice if we could get some phones working, but I, I understand the gravity yeah, of, of this situation. We're talking about major communication centers on top of the World Trade Center. Buzz, oh, what do you have? A Washington, D.C. police airplane has been hijacked. A Washington, D.C. police department airplane has been reported hijacked by 1010 winds. Jesus Christ. Oh, wow. So this is, you know, this is a, a major deal that some organization has put together, mm. and the pieces are falling one right after the other. I, I'd say, I, although, how do, let, let's, say, let's say you live in Chicago, which is another town I've lived in for a long time and worked in. You've got to think that if they're hitting uh, New York and D.C., Chicago might be next. How the hell do you stay on alert against something like this happening? You don't. Right. That hijacked D.C. plane is headed for Washington. What its uh, point of origin is, I do not know. But the hijacked Washington, D.C. police airplane that has been hijacked is now headed for Washington. It's headed for the city. Yes, for the city of Washington, D.C. That's all the specifics we have right now. All right, you're listening to uh, the Don and Mike Show. Uh, right now we're on WJFK 1067, Washington and in New York City. 1027 WNEW. Obviously, we're not doing our regular show because we're trying to keep you updated on all the, on all the information we have. Because we're at war. And, and, I mean, we can't. We can't even take telephone calls because uh, the phone lines are down. And I've got to think, I know that we all, before we went on the air today, we were going through the same thing, trying to call our family. Yeah, I'd love yes. to talk to my family and uh, my extended family in particular. You know, maddening trying to get a cell, trying, trying to, not only, well, I was trying the, uh, the apartment here, I was trying the, the house back at home, trying the cell phone. Maddening, everybody's doing the same thing. At one time, Buzz, what, what are you doing? Are you, oh, you're, you're I'm monitoring. Just, I'm const constantly listening to both you and to 1010 Winds as, as we also watch the CBS television. And uh, I, I also tried to contact my wife and was unable to do so. So I called my dad back in Kansas and asked him to try. Maybe he'll have better getting luck uh, through getting than I have. Had. You know, I'm looking now at, at at another picture here of 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 New York and the and the smoke now from both of the towers that have both collapsed is. Incredible, unbelievable. This, this, is it. let's go to Tom. Hold on, we do have someone on the phone. Good, we do have Tom on the phone. One guy managed to get through. Uh, here's Tom uh, from New York. Hi, Tom. Hey guys, this is Tom again. I told you that I saw the first tower. Yes, Tom. I saw the second one go down. Incredible. Where you at, Tom? Well, I'm on the I'm on the West Broadway in about two blocks uh, north of Chambers, and um, on my block. We saw it from the back of the building. I ran to the front of the building, and the, the, the debris just coming down. It's just like that Independence Day. Incredible. Never seen. I'll never forget this day. I will never, ever forget this day. Yeah. Oh, thank you. God. For two beautiful towers, it's gone. Yeah. Gone. Uh, it's, 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 it's beyond words. It's incredible. The thought that this has happened. And, and, you know, again, not to reiterate the obvious, but that has happened to... The two greatest, most powerful cities in America. I am sick to my stomach uh, with looking at this. And if you see the skyline of New York City, it is, uh, and the Statue of Liberty, uh, you know, dwarfed by the smoke. It's amazing. All right, thank you, Tom. Uh, now you know. Now it's the point. Now I'm getting handed notes by by the right. general manager about you know what again hand you there. Oh, it's, it's, it's a personal note. Okay. It just says I love you. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, it's <laughs> nice to have support in a time of need. Uh, let's go to uh, Wally in Brooklyn. Wally. Hey, how you doing? Wally, you're on NEW and JFK. Hi. Hey, how you doing? Listen, Hi. I was just driving through Brooklyn. I was in Red Hook when, uh, right after the uh, first building fell. And I tell you, the suit's falling down all over the place. You can't even breathe out here. Yeah, you so think it's bad in the city. Wait till the, start, the wind starts pushing everything over. So, so in Brooklyn, it is also very, very, very smoky? Oh, smoky, suit. I mean, it's all over the place. It's like, it's like Grandma's old shelf, you know? It's dust all over it. You know, this, this is beyond... The realm, my wildest the realm of imagination. And all I can think of, again, is that movie with Denzel Washington, right. the, the movie The Siege, where there were terrorists that were blowing up stuff in New York City, and Bruce right. Willis came in with, with the army. And at that point, I remember watching the movie and thinking it's a good movie, but 
Ah, this could never really happen. You know, it, it's amazing to think this has happened to everybody. Uh, this is not the people that are directly affected right now. Everybody is experiencing this, especially everybody here in New York City. And uh, and I, I've never seen anything like it, and we're getting updates uh, as we speak. But it, it seems to me if the other tower collapsed, there may have been another explosion. Buzz, are you getting any update on that? We haven't heard that yet, but because of the location of the explosion and the result that it brought, it would not be a leap of faith to believe that uh, the second building was brought down by a bomb just and you're not the gonna, first building. You're going to have information play out as, as this thing yeah, has to stay in AP is now reporting there's a, a, the car bombing at the State Department. A car bombing at the State Department. The State That's... Department, fortunately, had already been evacuated, but uh, that still is not good news. So whoever whoever the, the, the guys are behind this thing, man, you know, again, you're talking about... The scope of this is, is uh, unbelievable. A, a hell of a lot of, of preparation. And then you gotta, you've got to wonder, at, at some point... Were any of us in on it? Were any of the good guys in on yeah. this? I've got to think. You yeah. you could uh, all right. Let's give the, these these guys the these morons the benefit of the doubt. But you, you could you could hijack a plane from Boston and and get through and and, and fly into the World Trade Center. Maybe you do it twice. But but then you, you hijack a, a police plane. You, you get the fire and the helicopter. That, there's, there's not a, the latest on that. We don't have correct. We don't know what the latest is on that hijacking of the police. And plane. I want to tell you something. I'm still waiting to hear. Guys, I'm looking at CNN right now and. For what you described as a helipad right. fire, right. the the smoke coming out of the Pentagon is similar to the smoke that was coming out of the World Trade Center when when, when the second plane flew into the uh, to the second tower of the World Trade Center. Mike, can you see the? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna switch over. You see the picture of that? Can you see that? Yeah. Look at that. That's 395 uh, over by Route 27 in Arlington. Where the smoke is just billowing out, offices in D.C. all over are being evacuated. Bus has another update. That D.C. plane, that D.C. police plane that was hijacked, is now on it en route to uh, Washington National Airport. It's flying uh, just south of Reagan National Airport right now. Obviously, it's being tracked. It's got to be one of the few things still in the sky right now. All right. So, so here's a question, guys. If if there is this plane. That has been hijacked. At what point do, do our guys in charge make the decision there are lives on that plane? And, and yeah, you don't want to call. you don't want to endanger the lives on the plane. But if you've got but if you've already had the instance of, of the the Pentagon and the World mm -hmm. Trade Center, mm -hmm. do you send in do you scramble your jets? Do you, do you just decide, okay, we're gonna take that plane? Nobody out. can answer that question. You don't know what the circumstances are, you don't know what the radio communications are on that plane. It's it, impossible it to tell. It has been confirmed. It is the D C police department itself that reported the hijacking of the plane. And uh, as uh, difficult as a decision uh, that it would be for anybody to make, it seems pretty obvious that if you could save a thousand lives by taking out two you might have to do that mm -hmm. all right um hey uh joe ardinger can you hear me joe yeah ardinger? Hear are you running our board back at jfk we run on the board we should really take a break and, and try to get our information yeah, together. let's try to get, okay. get things together and, and, okay hold on the phones in new york are completely dead Pat johnny we can get no phones at all we, here we don't even have dial tones to dial out are to anybody we can't now. dial out uh, i guess that means what about the phones from D.C.? Well, Equally our dead? lines are switched, and I'm getting dial tone when I pick them up. However, no calls are coming through. I don't know um, if the phone company hasn't gotten them switched yet or is having a problem rerouting them here. All right, then the only phone number right now you're going to be able to get us on that we think we have a chance of working is 877-365-3636. Yeah, boys. A portion of the Pentagon has now collapsed, and yes, it was a plane that crashed into the Pentagon, part of our Defense Department, our Pentagon, has collapsed. Jesus. I am Jesus. I, you know, I'm watching this on CNN right now. Uh, this is, a, and, and I think, I don't think we're wrong to say we're watching this on television for, for the many people who are stuck in their cars, like the, the millions of people who can't get into or out of New York. I'm sure D.C.'s roads are, are just as bad. The Beltway's got to be backed up forever. There's just been the report of a large plane crash in western Pennsylvania. All right, listen, I, I mean, I am not being facetious when I say that the world is coming to an end. Hey, Tom. Today. Something's happening yeah, today, folks. It. This is uh, this is a bad stuff. Hold let's on. Let's get our act together. Well, let's go to line number one. Hello, uh, Don and Mike show. You're on NEW and JFK. No. Uh, no. Yeah, you know what it is? Oh, yeah. nope, hold on. Hello, are you somebody. there? Hi, who's this? Hey, what's going on? It's Vic in the wrong. Hi. Uh, hi, you're on the air. Good morning. Going on. Uh, I guess now the engineers have worked the magic. You can call two one two seven five seven 
1027 to get through to us at WNEW. What can we do for you? Yeah, my TV, the black tower. Any, any question on that? We're going yeah, well, I, I, know, I know that Channel 7 uh, had their tower on the, on the World Trade Center. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so Channel 7, you know, Regis is going to be pissed. Channel, mm -hmm. Channel 7 got knocked yeah. off the air this morning. No, that's a minor thing. I know that uh, I know that uh, our tower is on the Empire State Building, right? Mm -hmm. NEW. Hello, Don and Mike. You're on uh, NEW and JFK. Hello. Hello. Hi, you're on the air. Um, this is David out in um, White Plains. Hi, David. What's happening there? Actually, nothing. It's just that there's a lot of concern. Um, yeah, there is. We're even being this far out, uh, out of New York, and I tried calling Brooklyn, and... Uh, I couldn't get through. The lines are down. I tried to call my house in Brooklyn, and, and it's down. So yeah, now, I, I see uh, our producer, Lisa, in the next room. Lisa, are you able to, to instant message on AOL? Is AOL still up? I mean, that would be a viable alternative, mm -hmm. I guess, for some folks. Sure. If, if your phones are... You're still monitoring uh, WINS for us? Absolutely. All right, thank you. Thank you. you so you're on AOL? <laughs> Yeah, I'm able to get an AOL connection, no problem, and I'm keeping up with people at home. Um, Kate says, who I'm communicating with at home, says that Joe was speaking to us over the, the microphone and that right. people in the studios could hear him, but the line wasn't coming through to us. So there's now a problem, some kind of problem with the line between home and here. All right, well, w whenever we got to go to a break, they should just be advised. But hey, can you hear me? Up, let's go to them. Uh, our New York lines are working at 212-757. 1027, it's the Don and Mike Show on WNEW in New York at WJFK in Washington. Hello. Hello. Hi, you're on the air. Who's this? Uh, this is Bob. Bob, where are you from? Uh, from uh, Long Island. All right, Bob, what's happening in Long Island? Well, I'm not, I'm in, I happen to be on 38th Street and Broadway, and I just saw both of the towers go down. But i got to ask you, uh, is there any way of getting out of the city right now, either by the railroad or by uh, by subway? Yeah, um, uh, I didn't say about that, Buzz. I know, I know this. Let me just tell you this, that my wife was coming in today on the train, mm -hmm. and I called her. I was able to get a cell about right before we went on the air to right. tell her she, she the train had just stopped in Newark. Mm -hmm. her turn around right. and, and get the hell out of here, go go back home. So I think trains are still operating. I know if you're going to try to drive into the city today. No, I'm not going in. I want to go out. You, you want to go out? All I, I think everything going into the city has now, is now shut down. I think going, uh, I'm more concerned about going out of the city. I don't think you can get out today either. I think it's the same thing, unless the subway is still running. Yeah, you don't know. Yeah, the, lower Manhattan, the lower Manhattan subway shut down. All bridges and tunnels throughout New York City are closed right now. All right. bridges and tunnels are shut down? All bridges and tunnels in New York City are closed. Yeah, so if, if you're here, you're here. That sounds... Uh, I just want to say one thing that uh, uh, you had a gentleman that just called on the phone and he's worried about his TV set. Uh, don't worry about your TV set. Anything. I mean, this how stupid can people be? I agree. Well, I mean, uh, well, you know, we're going to be here for five hours. Of people die, and he's worried about his TV set. Well, yeah. it's communications, and people are trying to keep in touch. I understand what you're saying, but but people do want to know what's going on, and they are concerned about their loved ones and the safety of them as well. Shannon, you are on the air. Don and Mike show on NEW and JFK. Hello. How are you doing today, Don and Mike? Hey, we're doing all right, Shannon. Hey, I'm down here in uh, Fort Belvoir, Virginia. All right, and, uh, so now, all right, so we got a call from back at home. What, okay, what's what's going happening what's going in the D.C. On? area? Well, I'll be honest with you. I just tried to go through uh, Fort Belvoir down here. They're in uh, a level B. Um, they've got, you know, roads shut down. You can't go through Fort Belvoir. Obviously, I'm not with the military, uh, so I had to divert and go around. Uh, I heard you say that a uh, report of a plane just went down in Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. Now, my question is, you, you made a statement that all planes are being diverted to Canada at this point. Mm -hmm, right. How in the world are planes still coming down? Yeah, it's, uh, it's well, you know, it I guess a plane that, was, that had been diverted. Planes that were in the air already. Uh, I mean, I, I think, didn't we have a report they were going to try to send all those planes to Canada? Is, Absolutely. At least it was the planes that were incoming mm -hmm. to either one of the three New York airports or one of the three D.C. airports. Right, right. So it, it's entirely possible that if a plane left... You know, two hours ago, right. from from Los Angeles, they're for instance, in before this happened, they're still in the air, man. Right. right. They may right. be on the right. way to Canada. All right. Thank you. That, Buzz. For that guy who was asking how you get out of New York City, you walk. Right now, thousands and thousands of people are walking across the Brooklyn Bridge and out of New York City. All right. Let's see. Uh, I understand now that we can take calls from D.C. if Joe pots them up on WJFK, right? We is can it? try. I mean, we can I try. I think this is a way we can... All right, all right. Joe, give it a try. Punch one of the phone lines and let me see if we can take a call from D.C. 
Uh, hello, can you hear us? New York City. All right, let's see. Uh, I understand now that no. we can... No, that's the delay we're hearing. Here. Forget it. All right, let's go to uh, Rob, who's uh, down on Wall Street. Rob, hi, you're on the air. Hello. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Uh, I'm down here at 40 Wall Street, approximately three blocks away from the site, and it's almost midnight outside. Because of the uh, smoke and the debris that uh, exactly. the dust that's been kicked up. Exactly. You, you know, oh, you, and you want to talk about... <laughs> The guy, the guy who called and said the thing about is is the t- my TV's not working. I think Buzz had it right that he was concerned he's not able to get, to get his information. Right. I had a guy today when I was walking into the building stop me. I had my little pager thing, and he said, "Do you know if Wall Street is open today?" Yes. Right. No. And that, and they evacuated yeah, right. everything. Yeah, and that struck me as incredibly Truly amazing. Asinine that while this is going on, what right. you're you're concerned about your AOL stock. Amazing. And while we're on the subject, uh, today's New York primary uh, election has also been postponed, as has, by the way, tonight's Yankees game. You know, uh, no surprise that perhaps uh, that you know that who knows what the timing was. I think we'll find that out later. All I know is when both when the towers went down, a solid wall of black came across uh, Chase Plaza between um, on the back side of 40 Wall fronting Pine Street. Mm-hmm. People were sprinting at Olympic speed, yeah. and then right behind them, it was a scene well out of a science fiction movie. Yeah. Yeah. It's awful. Thank you, thank you for the call. All right. You're listening to uh, us. We're Don and Mike on WJFK in DC, WNEW in New York. We do have. Uh, I know it's busting balls, but our engineers have done a, a great job yes, to, they have. to get a phone system working for us. Here's the number today, 212-757-1027. Let's go to uh, Milt. He's calling us from uh, Arlington, right, right, uh, maybe right by the Pentagon. Milt, hi. Hi, Dan. How you doing? Hi, we're doing great. What's happening? Uh, down in Arlington, down in Roslyn, they're evacuating all the buildings. Everyone's got to get out of I mean, everything is completely done. And all my, so my friends work on Capitol Hill, and I just got word that there was a car bomb out by the Senate building. Oh, yeah, yeah. It yeah. went off? That is... Yeah, it went off. The car bomb, they're all up in the, uh, they put up in the Hilton, and a car bomb went off by the Senate building about maybe eight minutes ago. None of the phone lines work here. Um, I tried, like, three different cell phones. I finally got through. Everything is done. You can't get through to anybody. All right, now, so what is the... Fe- we know what the feeling is in New York. The feeling, what- the feeling in New York is... Not only sick to your stomach, but fear. There's fear in this city right now. And I'd like to know, out on the roads, on, for instance, what, what road are you on? Are you, are you on 395, 295? No, I was, I'm actually back home in McLean, um, right off the 495. All right, so you're right off the Beltway. How's traffic yeah. on the Beltway? I mean, are, are people leaving the, the, the government offices? Are, are people going yeah, home? Everyone is, is, is evacuating D.C. Um, everyone that can get over, they're trying, but it's completely gridlocked. You can't move anywhere. It's... Um, None of my friends. I've got two friends I talked to that are up in the Hilton building, up in the Hilton. They can't get out of D.C. They've evacuated everything, but nobody can move. The whole town is completely shut down. None of the phones work, so no one can call, call or talk to anybody. All right, hold on. We're going to go to Rob in D.C., who's going to tell us now that 395 is shut down wow. in, in, in D.C. Rob, is that true? Yes, sir. Rob, everything. Why is 395 and everything's locked. you got to go around Hold on, everywhere. Buzz has an update. What's up? I'm simply speculating that the reason that 395 is shut down is because it goes right by the Pentagon. approach of that high D.C. police plane. Yes. Oh, yeah. Either, Mike, it could be either one. It could be sure. on the way to the Pentagon or mm-hmm. towards National Airport where mm-hmm. that, that plane's going. So right. 395 is shut down. Where are they turning you around? They're turning you around. They gotta, you got to get on 495 either uh, south or west. East to try and get you out of there. It's going to Richmond or going to Baltimore. Traffic is back to back. All right, thank you. Let's go to uh, Jr. Hello, uh, Jr. from DC. Hi. Hey, Don. Hi, you're on the air with us. Sorry, guy. Um, yeah, they just uh, said that. Okay, all federal personnel have been instructed to leave work immediately. This is on News Channel Eight. You know our Rinky Dink channel here. Right. right. Um, but they're also saying that uh, a car bomb went off by the Senate Building. And also the State Department, and they've called in all of the firefighters and EMS people in the uh, metro region to come into work immediately. All right, thank you. Now, here's a thought. I, I know that, that everybody who's working downtown, the government people, they've got to be let go. Mm-hmm. Are you creating more of an opportunity for disaster by letting 
uh, a million people leave at, no, at I don't one think time? So. I don't think so. You're talking about the, the buildings that are tra- that are targets, you know, and uh, that's that's what you have to do. You have to get people and out be- of there. Because there are symbols. That's why they're targets. And, yeah, I think it's a smart thing to do to get people out into the burbs where there's less likely to be an attack. You know, and again, my only thought about that was when there was the blizzard in 78 in Providence. Mm-hmm. When, when the mayor, and I know it's nowhere near a similar situation. Yeah. The mayor of Providence gets on it and says, hey, everybody, there's a blizzard. Leave right now. Mm-hmm. And you had a million people leaving the city at once. Right. But you guys are probably absolutely right that those buildings are the targets. Mm-hmm. Um, here's a, a, a weird thought. What if they know that those buildings are targets and that we're going to let everybody go? I, you, don't, you never know. You, you can't speculate. You really can't because it's impossible to, to know where this, where this originates from and how, how large a scale it's on. Yeah, you're right. All we're, all, all we're doing is guessing here. We're doing the same thing now that we bust balls on when we yeah. watch well, TV. Well, but what can we do? You know, until you and Buzz, you have more yeah. information. I just wanted to say that the reason that I've been so vague about exactly what happened at the Pentagon is because everyone else has been as well. We now know, thanks to counterintelligence, spies from other countries have now informed us that it was, in fact, a plane that crashed into the Pentagon this morning. And uh, it was a small plane uh, that crashed at the end where the helipad is. So the pieces of information that we've gotten so far are coming together, but the south end of the Pentagon has crumbled, and uh, we've seen a tremendous amount of smoke there as well. Nothing, of course, like what we're seeing in lower midtown Manhattan. All right, let's go to uh, Pip. Hi, Pip, you're on the air with Don and Mike. Hello. Hi, Don and Mike. How are you guys? We're doing all right, thank you. Um, the, 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 the thought I had was that if you ever seen the movie Gone in 60 Seconds, yeah. The the whole idea of the stealing of the cars at night was to boost all of them. By the time they found the first one, the job would be done. Mm-hmm. So that maybe the flurry has been done. Maybe there's not a fear of being attacked anymore in that they have this concentrated attack and then it's over. All right, listen, I, I will give you this. What's your name, Pip? Yeah. I'll give you this. That Perhaps that's a valid theory, but working it into the plot line of the movie... Gone in 60 right. seconds with Nicolas Cage. But that's, a that's a little shaky. And, you know, it, you know, there's there's a feeling right now in New York City of fear. I mean, everybody the, is feeling uneasy. The airport in Newark, New Jersey, Newark International Airport, is now being evacuated. We don't know why. We simply know that it is, uh, I guess, because it's a, a possible target. And uh, just an update, that D.C. plane, uh, D.C. police plane is still in the air, still south of Reagan National Airport. What it's doing, where it's going, I don't know. All right, you're listening to the Don and Mike Show, and we're on WNEW. New York, WJFK, Washington. The only line you can reach us on right now is area code 212-757-1027. We do have a, a ton of lines, and you're on the air. Hello. Hello. Hi, who's this? Jared. Jared, where are you from? Uh, New York, right, right. man. All right, what's happening, Jared? Um, I was just looking at the news, and fighter planes have been scrambled in Washington, D.C., no, about that time. Yeah, you know they're probably going after that the situation we discussed a while ago that that uh, that uh, police plane that they hijacked. Yeah, and uh, the DC police have confirmed that their own plane has been hijacked. And and as sad as it is to lose whatever police personnel may be on that plane, uh, at this point, I'm afraid we got to do it. All right, thank I don't, you. I don't think everybody's fully taken the whole picture into into view. In that when those two buildings collapsed, they also had other buildings. So you don't right. only have the World Trade Center collapse, you get other buildings hit right. and well, higher New- casualties. For New Yorkers, let me say there are three high schools nearby the World Trade Center. Uh, the students were all kept inside, and they are all okay good. at last report. Well, thank you. That's some, it's nice to get some good news. You know, I'm still looking at uh, the pictures. Uh, well, no, what they're doing now is they're replaying. Oh, they're going to love doing this for the next right, three yeah. days. Oh, yeah. They're, they're replaying the, bu- the building uh, crashing. Let's go to uh, Chad from D.C. on WJFK. Hi, Chad. Hey, Don. How you doing? Hey, we're doing okay, Chad. Um, I just heard, now, I had heard that the State Department bomb, um, that that, the State Department was denying that, that there wasn't a bomb that went off in front of the State Department. Now, I don't know about the one. Now, we had a story, uh, CNN came in and said that they were recanting that. Uh, so, you know, this is going to happen in this oh, yeah. situation yeah, where there's, absolutely. there's stuff that gets right. reported by CNN or MSNBC, and, and they, they just go on the air with it, mm-hmm. much like we will if we hear right. it, right. because everybody just wants to know as much information yeah. as they possibly can. And yeah, you, now the, oops, sorry, the go state, ahead, Buzz. The state, state Department was evacuated. The Capitol's been evacuated. We have, since all that discussion, had the report of a car bomb at the Capitol. We're still, of course, waiting for more information. All right, let's go to uh, Frank Heyer on NEW and JFK. Hello. Hello? Frank, good morning. Uh, hello, Don and Mike. Turn down your radio, please, Frank. Go ahead, Frank. Frank, turn down your radio, okay? Hello? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, I just think that, uh, you know, I think this may be a warning. If, if this is the warning, I hate to, I'd hate to see what, what what's really going to happen. Okay. 
Well, I think I think next time, I, you know, now we're going to be on alert. You know, I think they may uh, have some serious business here. Well, I, I think you're never going to see security in the United States the same, I'll tell you that. Yeah. Hello there, Don and Mike Show. You're on the air. Hi. Yeah, it's Joel from hi. down in uh, Seabright, New Jersey. Yes, hi, Joel. You're on the air. Yeah, uh, you can see the smoke from these fires all the way down Asbury Park. It's uh, amazing. into the neighborhoods down here. It's starting to get a lot of police activity along uh, Seabright. Uh, looks like they're starting to close the traffic off and heading up towards the uh, Sandy Hook area. Yeah, that, did a lot that, of people trying to get up there to take a look at it. Well, don't you get the feeling that at some point New York itself is just going to be closed down? That you're not going to be able to go anywhere in New York? I don't know. It, you know, who knows what's going to happen? I mean, this is uh, this is a tragedy of uh, of the magnitude that no one's ever seen before. All right, here is uh, Al in Manhattan. Uh, Al, they just uh, evacuated your building in Midtown. Hey, Hey, hey guys, yeah, what, that, what happened was I, was, uh, I was actually saw the whole thing happen right from my office. I could see it, and I look out there, and I see the smoke, and then I saw the second one hit. Everybody freaked out, and because um, a lot of people had family that worked there. Right. And so um, uh, they started to let some of the support staff go, and then the management went ahead and said that, um, listen, if we have to evacuate the building, and I guess what they're doing is they're evacuating everything out of Midtown. It's crazy down here, guys. All right, crazy. thank you. Crazy. People uh are running... I mean, there are people crying in the, you know, in the streets, mm -hmm. trying to use their cell phones. I'm, I'm totally surprised I got through. Yeah, well, you know, I, I'm glad you did too, but I'm sorry you wasted the call on us. Yeah, I, mean, I hope you, I hope you tried a family or, or a friend. No, actually, actually, I, I did, but, but my main concern, I know a lot of people are worried about trying to get out of the city. Listen, the, the, what the superiors told us is that Manhattan is shut down. There are no subways. Everybody is walking. There is no subways. There is no way in and out. The path, nothing. Everything is shut down. There's a total block on Manhattan. They're evacuating a lot of the high rises, mainly Midtown, because uh, it's such a popular area. I mean, that's the heart of the USA, man. That's right. where we are, Don. Thank you, my friend. Yes, and that's where I live, Mike. Right. That's where I live. Now it's now it's inconveniencing me. <laughs> me personally. Share the phones. People are scrambling for phones in Lower Manhattan. Uh, it, it's it, it, nice to think and, and nice to know in a situation like this, some of the businesses in the area around the World Trade Center have opened their doors mm -hmm. uh, to provide uh, water and, uh, and whatever comfort they can to uh, the people in the area. All right, we're going to go to Christy now, who's uh, in D.C., stuck on the Beltway. Christy, where on the Beltway are you stuck, honey? Um, I'm right on the north side, right by Georgia Avenue. Are you in the inner loop, outer loop? Does, inner oh, loop. Oh, now, is that by where they split the lanes for all the construction and junk? Yeah, that's probably part of the problem. Okay, so yeah, that, that's not uh, ne necessarily a great representative sample because right. I think on a normal day at 11 o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. that's going to be backed up because of, the, because of the construction there. Did you leave work or, or are you just out? Yeah, yeah I work um, out near Dulles Airport and they evacuated us. Um, and the toll road was, was moving, but it was heavy. I think they're evacuating most of the businesses around here. All right. Thank you, honey. Thank you for the call. Let's go uh, to Mike uh, on WJFK in D.C. since he saw the uh, Pentagon go down. Mike. Hey, guys. How's it going? Okay. Where were you, Mike? Uh, I was in Roslyn. Uh, our building overlooks the Pentagon, and actually I worked in the Pentagon for 10 years. Uh, we had a lot of employees over there. Uh did they get uh, did they get anybody uh, out of that building before that happened? We were unable to uh, contact any of our folks. Oh. Uh, we tried calling and the, and the phones were were down. Uh, uh, another question I would uh, have also would be how many people did they get out of the World Trade Center before this happened? Well, there was forty thousand people work there, and, and you know I know that that uh, the evacuation I'm sure started shortly after the plane went in there, right, and the first uh, one hit, and, and I, the plane hit where on the sixteenth floor was it? No, or was it the higher? The plane up? hit the first tower at about the seventieth floor, and the second plane hit the second tower at about the fifty fifth floor. Well, I don't know where I hear the sixteenth floor. I'm, I'm just out of my mind with this. Let's go to uh, Sean in D.C. Uh, WJF. Okay, says he saw the plane go into the Pentagon. Is that true, Sean? Hello. Hi, did you see the plane hit the Pentagon? Yeah, we. Uh, I work in Pentagon City. What and, kind of plane uh, was it, Sean? What kind it of? It was an American was Airlines. Oh God. Uh, I don't. I mean, I don't know how to classify the plane, but it was like, you know, a passenger plane. Mm -hmm. All right, hold on. You know what? You guys got to give me a second here. Hold, hold on, Sean. We are going to do a sync up. 
live and go on our network in approximately 14 seconds. All right. Okay, so while we do that, let me say that uh, uh, Buzz is here. He'll give us a total update as soon as we sign on our network that we have probably going to have to give me the countdown. I can't read the clock, for goodness sakes. There we go. Hi, and welcome to the stations on the network. It's the Don and Mike Show uh, today from 1027 WNEW in New York, also live on WJFK in Washington, D.C. If you are uh, tuning in to hear our regular uh, Wacky Gab Fest, you ain't going to hear it today, folks, because uh, we are live um, in New York City, the scene of uh, one of the greatest tragedies in national history, the uh, collapse of the two World Trade Center towers. And back at, at D.C., the, the Pentagon ha has also been hit. There is a plane that is a, a hijacked police plane that is flying to, uh, towards D.C. There's been reported bombings. Uh, we will tell you that Manhattan is closed down. Mm -hmm. You can't get in. You can't go out. Washington, D.C., all of the government uh, work have been excused from work. The Beltway is a mess. If you're joining us right now, live, uh, and, you, and you're just hearing about this, let's go to Buzz and get a total update on everything that's happened to Buzz. And there have been evacuations in Washington as well. It started at about 9.45 Eastern Time this morning, a widespread terrorist attack on the United States, starting with the crashing of an American Airlines commercial passenger jet that had been hijacked out of Boston's Logan International Airport, crashed into one of the two 90-some-story World Trade Center towers here. About 18 minutes later, to the disbelief of everyone, a second plane crashed into the second tower at about the halfway point. Since that time, bombs have gone off at the bases of both of those buildings, causing both of them to collapse on the rescue workers and many of the people below. Dust and a crumbling building, ash and paper scattering across uh, lower Manhattan. Much of uh, New York and into New Jersey now covered with smoke. As Don mentioned, there have been attacks in Washington, D.C. as well. A U.S. counterintelligence has confirmed that a small plane crashed into the south end of the Pentagon near a helipad, causing part of our Defense Department, our Pentagon, to uh, collapse. There have been evacuations of the White House, the Capitol, the State Department, the Treasury Department. Uh, there has been the report of a fire on the Washington Mall uh, and uh, many evacuations in Washington, as well as now the report of a car bomb at the Capitol as well. Uh, we know that uh, planes in Los Angeles, the United States Air Force put on full tactical alert, and uh, we understand now that planes are scrambling in Washington, D.C., uh, apparently in an attempt to intercept a hijacked Washington, D.C. Police Department airplane that is on its way to Washington's Reagan National Airport. Uh, no airplanes are being allowed to take off anywhere in this country, or for that matter, now land. Any planes in the air with U.S. mainland destinations are now being diverted to Canada. We have also had the report of a large plane crash in western Pennsylvania. Now, as it turns out, uh, to, uh, this, was, this was part of our broadcast schedule to do the show from our New York station mm -hmm. uh, this week. So we are based in Manhattan, 1027 WNEW, and we're also live in D.C. on WJFK. And now our network is on the air. The only phone number you can use to get through today, because the phones are screwed up, please keep this number, 212 757 1027. That's the only number you can use to call us today. What we are going to uh, try to do is take as many of your phone calls as we can to get updates from here in New York City and also with Buzz continually uh, giving us uh, updates. He is monitoring our sister station WINS here in New York City. They are giving us continuous updates. Uh, this is a breaking story. Uh, things are developing as we speak and uh, Buzz has brought us up to speed on everything that's happened. All right, and, and I just want to add that uh, although there are no official counts of casualties, do not be surprised surprised uh, in numbers in excess of 10,000 people, yeah. judging from the number of people who work normally in the World Trade Center and considering all the other uh, points of attack today. All right, so we'll get your calls from both D.C. and New York City and the other cities that have joined us. Just let me say, this is WNEW New York and WJFK FM Manassas, Washington. Let's go to uh, Jason. Let me see if I got this right. Jason, hi, you're on the air. Jason from D.C. Yeah, down a mic. Hi, you're on the air. Hi, how you doing? Okay. I uh, just left uh, Northern Virginia, Alexandria. I was down at the Hoffman Building. They've evacuated basically every federal government building in Maryland, D.C., as well as Virginia now. The Beltway, it's just a mob scene. It's, I just hopped off of it, as a matter of fact. I'm now on River Road, and it's even backed up. You know, and I've got another question, and I'm sure it's a question that parents, not only in New York, but in D.C., have as well. Right. Well, if you got a kid in school, right. at what point do they make the decision 
even if a, a school is not a target, is, is nowhere near any of the, uh, the buildings in Manhattan or the monuments or the Pentagon in, in D.C., at what point do the schools decide they're going to call it off? And, and then what a mess getting to... It's a question of getting parents to pick up kids, and in a tragedy like this, that's what always And happens. I know here in Manhattan, if you, you know, I can imagine if you've got a kid in, in school in Manhattan and, and you live on the island or you live, you live in right. Connecticut, or vice versa. Well, but, Buzz had mentioned that uh, the city is so shut down here in New York that people are walking across the uh, Brooklyn Bridge. Is that right, correct? Right, yeah, walking I, out of the city. I guess that's what you do if you live in New Jersey... And, I mean, and your kid goes to school in New Jersey, and you made it into the city today to and, go to work. And the city shut down. You walk. If they're letting people walk, obviously, across the Brooklyn Bridge, there's no car traffic going in right. or out of the city right now. That's correct. All right, let's go to uh, Tony. Okay, let me figure this out. Tony, hi, you're on the air on JFK and NEW. Hello. Hey, Don, Mike. Uh, it's an unfortunate scene that we have to tell you how great you two guys are on such a tragic day. Well, uh, you know, and i, I got to tell you something, Tony. Being here in the city right now and... Seeing people here that live here full time, mm -hmm. uh, it, this, the magnitude of this tragedy is what I, I cannot uh, begin to fathom. It is. Just I don't amazing. think it's going to hit us. Don't you agree? We saw it all up. The, the numbers yeah. and, and you yeah, see people up. getting taken out of these buildings. Right. Um, I was leaving Columbia Pike area and I and I heard a huge bomb go off. I left the area. It's it's, it's crazy because all everyone's evacuating. So it couldn't really confirm exactly what was going on. But one point I think I want to point out, I don't think a lot of people are emphasizing on, is the fact that with that uh, hijacked D.C. plane uh, coming from the south there, um, of course, Woodrow Wilson Bridge was always gridlocked. It can create a, uh, another big problem. Well, yeah, yeah you know, uh, you're speculating, and I and I, I appreciate that. But you know, who knows what the oh, so of what, that, that what, this, what this guy is saying is that if you get the Wilson Bridge back, that that's a target. But really, you never know. Anything it can be a target because of the simple fact that um, if but, uh, we can't divert that plane to hit its target, it will probably do what it wants can do to create more havoc with a lot of cars always going there, but, always gridlocked. But let me just say, Tony, at, at this point in D.C., with the Beltway, as we know it, any point on the Beltway at this point right. could, could, right. could be a, a target, not just the Wilson Bridge. You're talking about the Cabot John Bridge, the American Legion Bridge, uh, uh, Georgia Avenue, uh, the Mixing Bowl in, in Springfield, sure. anywhere where there's a concentration. Uh, David. In New York, let me find him, line number nine. If, if you're not in a car, don't get into one. And nationwide, people would be wise to stay off the telephone to clear up as many phone lines as possible. Hello, Dave, you're on the air. Hi, uh, Don Hello? Mike on NEW and JFK. Hello. Hello. Hi. How you doing? We're doing okay, thanks. Okay. This is David from the Bronx. Yes, David. Okay, the reason I'm calling is because I'm very concerned because of all the officers, all the cops and firemen are going downtown. Yes. And that leaves room for vandalism in the city. I've seen it happen before where all, you know, vandals just break into stores and all that. Uh, is all the cops going up to the city or is there any protection you know, for right people now, in the city? Right now, we don't have information as to, uh, you know, where the manpower in the city of New York is allocated, obviously. I gotta think there's a backup plan at, at some point. You've got, to, you've got, to, you've to got say, plans in place for you, this. You don't, you don't leave your stores and your banks wide open. Right. Uh, although there's no doubt that, the, that most cops are going to where they're needed. Sure, of course. But I would think that by this point, the New York police, same with the D.C. police, they've called all the guys who have the days off, and they've right. said, you know, hey, guess right. what? Exactly. Strap it on and, and come, to, come to work. Let's go to uh, Mike, who's out at uh, Andrews Air Force Base in Prince George's County. Mike, hi. Hey, how you doing? Hi, we're doing all right, my friend. Yeah, the, it's crazy down here. They're kicking all the contractors off the base. Planes are flying. Air Force One left, and uh, now the president's just flying in. That's why they're kicking everyone off the base, all civilians. It's crazy. The National Guard's just been called up in New York uh, through a request from Mayor Giuliani to Governor Pataki. All right, let's go to uh, Vance, Fort Washington. Vance, what's happening in Fort Washington, Maryland? Hey, buddy, Don, you guys live down here in this area. And yes. besides the guy that just said those, besides the military planes, it is so weird. I mean, the hair is up on my arms. It's it's so weird to look up in this D.C. sky and not see, like, 25 planes at once all yeah, over National, PWI, going to Dulles. It is the weirdest feeling, and it was so strange. I had a job I had to go look at today, and I would have gone up Route 1 right by the Pentagon, but I got mm -hmm. called and had to go look at another job. And, man, when I found out, you know, I got back in the truck, and I found out what was happening. I was listening to the morning show here in WJFK, and it's... uh. This is just a spooky feeling, man. I, I feel terrible, you know, what's going on. I mean, it's like I said, I think tonight everyone's just going to get this big lump in their throat and it's going to hit home, and it's uh, it's an amazing thing. All right, thank you, thank you, you my know, friend. You know, hey, 
Oh, hold on, we lost him. What's the latest, Buzz? What do you have? Anything? I, I don't know. There's just been a, a problem with my headphones. I lost the feed just now. Yep. There, you got it back? Not yet, no. Okay, I don't think that's All it, right. Robbie. I will check into Our it. Our phone number is 212-757-1027. It's the Don and Mike Show on WNEW and WJFK. Let's go to uh, Tony. Tony in New York. Tony, hi, you're on the air. Yeah, um... Yeah, I just want to know, like, where's the security in, in New York City, man? How can all this happen in one day, man? All right, well, well Tony, Tony, let me play devil's advocate with you. Yeah. This is the biggest city in America, one of the biggest cities in the world. How do you possibly plan individuals? You're talking about individuals that did this. And how, right. how it's do you, impossible to stop that. How do you plan two guys from flying airplanes in the World Trade Center? Yeah, but you want to know something? This is what we get for helping other countries, man. Well, you know, I, I think what we're hearing from Tony, you know, listen, this is going to be days of this. You're going to hear the anger. You're going to hear people upset. Um, you can't stop this type of thing. That's been proven before. All right. Thank you, Tony. No problem. Man. All right. Let's go to uh, Krista. She's calling us from Rockville, Maryland on WJFK. Krista, hi, baby. What's happening? Oh, it's totally crazy down here. There's a total mass exodus. I'm on 355 just trying to get back home. I wasn't even trying to get out of the city, and it's like a mass exodus here. 355 is a total parking lot. It's ridiculous. You know, I'm wondering at what point are they going to do in D.C. what they did in New York. At some point, are they just going to shut the beltway down and say... I think eventually you're going you're to see the uh, transportation uh, come to a standstill because they, they have to deal with the situation and get the, uh, get the areas secure, you know, like they're trying to secure New York, uh, you know, which is no small task, and secure Washington, D.C. I think the good news is that we've been on the air now. We went on before our shift started today. We've been on a little over an hour. Mm -hmm. Nothing new has happened in the last Thank hour. God. Yeah, it seems like it's calmed down. We shouldn't get too happy, but yeah, it does appear that things have calmed down for now. All right, let's go to uh, Mario, who's calling uh, from New York. Mario, you're on NEW and JFK. Hello. Don and Mike. Hi. Hey, how you, do how you doing, guys? Okay. Uh, I'm a little freaked out right now. Join the, we all? Uh, join the club. Uh, just waking up and then finding out that uh, my fiance is working down on 40th Street downtown. Oh, oh, God bless right. you. I hope I, uh, our prayers are with you, my friend. Hey, thanks a lot, guys. I mean, really. Thanks a lot. And to make even matters even worse, then I find out that her father's working downtown in, well, you guessed it, World Trade. Well, you know, so many people work there, and uh, our yeah. prayers go out to everybody in the city of New York that has family, and not necessarily in the city of New York, because the World Trade Center uh, has people all over the country. And uh, it's anyone that's had anybody in their family that has worked there, our prayers go out to you. Uh, Absolutely, guys. Absolutely. So you can imagine I'm making like 15, 20 phone calls already. I hadn't already. I woke up at like nine in the morning. And Buzz, uh, Buzz, has, uh, Buzz has an update. Here. Just, Buzz has just something. a pinch more right, information. Thanks, American, thank you. Uh, American right. Airlines will be having a news conference in about seventeen minutes, in which they're going to talk about the fact that the FBI was already investigating a hijacking, apparently through them, uh, just before the first plane crashed into the World Trade Center here in New York this morning at about uh, eight forty-five Eastern time, and uh, they will be talking about that. Uh, obviously, FBI offices across the country have been put on alert. All FBI agents in America, regardless of their location and regardless of what they were working on or what they normally do, are now working on investigating this. Okay, and uh, Rob, you're going to get that so we can pull that up. We're going to get that live. I'd like to give uh, my first Donnie of the day, yes, given the, the statuette that I give out to the networks. The first one will go to CNN for their fantastic graphic, the red, white, red, white, and blue graphic oh, yeah. that says America Under Attack. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, CNN, for being the first Very to get pretty. your graphics department working on this. Way to be responsible. And, uh, Buzz, let us know when that uh, press conference is going to happen. Absolutely. We now have uh, the capability to bring it to you. You're listening to Don and Mike. We're on WNEW New York, WJFK Washington, and uh, I guess... Other stations on our network have picked this up. I believe so. This is the only phone number to get us on today, 212-757-1027. Let's go to uh, John in New York. John, you're on NEW. Hello. Thank you, gentlemen, for covering this event. How are you doing? We're doing all right, Johnny. I don't want to be premature, but I'm not so much concerned with who did this. But what are we going to do? What are we going to learn from this to keep from happening again? You know, I am too. I, I completely agree with you about that. As far as who did it, that is not nearly as important to me right now as what we're going to do in the future to uh, to secure our cities and our and our country. And I think, you know, as I said before, what's going to come out of this, you're you're never going to see 
travel within the United States and certainly travel, you know, coming into the United States the same. You can't. It, but, it'll have to be changed forever. I never imagined you know, the Pentagon. Can, we can, we can the furniture from within or without. We have no idea who could do stuff like this in the future. That's the Oklahoma thing. Yeah. I, I never yeah. imagined that the Pentagon could be attacked. I mean, how do you prepare for that any more than having the Pentagon on the case? Well, you're talking about an airplane, Buzz. Right. And you're talking about, you know, when an airplane, you know, gets hijacked right. and it's in a flight pattern, you know where they go. They fly right over the Pentagon. Takes Anybody that's flown into the National airport you know that's the way it works and they you know when they're when they're hijacked it, it, that answers your question. It, it that's takes how mere, it, mere seconds to divert that plane, but it's just hard to fathom yeah. that our own Defense Department could be attacked. Hey, guys, while you're talking, I'm watching CNN mm -hmm. and, the, and the, the shots now of the streets of Manhattan are, are like something seriously out of the movie Independence Day. People it's running amazing. around. Yeah. Same thing in downtown D.C. People are running out of the buildings like crazy. Uh, many federal buildings evacuated in, in the D.C. area. Uh, the entire city of New York has been closed down. Let's go to uh, Scott in uh, New Jersey. Scott, hi, you're on JFK and NEW. Hello. Hi, Don. Hi, Mike. How you doing? How are we doing? All right. Um, uh, I can see pretty much everything that's going on from over here. Absolutely devastating. I can't yes. imagine you guys in the middle of it. It is. Um, I just want to say, and I'm not saying it is, but if this is the work of uh, religious zealots done in the name of whatever God it is that they worship, Amen. then may our God, who has united our nation indivisible, yep. deliver a swift judgment upon those who have Absolutely. done Absolutely. You know what? And I think, I think I do speak for everybody in this city and the rest of the country. When something like this happens, Americans come together. And I think that we will come together with this. And, uh, you know, if you're doing this, as I said before, if you happen to be, you know, we're speculating right now, a religious zealot saying you're doing this in the name of God, yeah. there there is no God that, that wants this. And uh, I, I sure don't want to hear, and I'll probably be one of the people doing it myself, mm -hmm. two, three months down the road from now, after this is forgotten, right. and after it's in a, a rearview mirror, we're trying right. to move... If it can be. No, no, no. But I mean, at some point, right. it, it will be. I, I'm not, trust me, I'm not trying to make light of the situation, but I'm saying oh, I know you're not. two or three months from now, when it's not right up there in the front, I hope that people, myself included, don't bitch about at the airport. Right. Being stopped to have someone look through your bags, look through your uh, air travel, never to be the same. Because I'm no, I, I know that I'm one of the guys that you would hear me getting on the radio bitching, saying I was trying to get on a plane today and I couldn't do this. Right. Let's go to uh, Rich, see if I got this correct. Uh, Rich, you're on WNEW, WJFK. Hi. How you doing? Hi, it's Don and Mike show. Hello. Good. Listen, Nassau County cops and Long Island Na Medical Center is on staff right now. All the cops in Nassau, well, not all of them, most of them went out to the city. They're sending out Suffolk County cops, too. And our, you know, our prayers and our best wishes go to all those emergency people that are going to be working in the city of New York and in Washington, D.C., to get this situation uh, under control. And, uh, you know, there, there are going to be some uh, long days ahead for, for these people that uh, do the good work here in the city. Let's go to Buzz. Buzz. U.S. fighter jets are now scrambling uh, for a plane they say is headed for the Pentagon. I don't know if that would be the same uh, D.C. police plane that was hijacked earlier. Shoot that plane down. Yeah. Well, I, mean, you, you know, you I mean, shoot it down. This is war. Yeah. This is war. Let's go to uh, Ruben in New York. Ruben, you're on NEW, JFK. Hello. How you doing? Hi, good morning, Ruben. Good morning. Yeah, this is very tragic what's going on. I believe that as Americans we should all put our flags out and not show them that we're not going to go down with this and we're going to stand up for ourselves. No, no, no. You know, whatever whatever does it uh, for, for you and for everybody else, that's a good idea. I mean, I, I know that... When you have something like this, we have to collectively in this country, are, you know, psychologically, we have to do things to, to get us through this. And if that works for you, I think that's a terrific idea. You know, I was uh, telling Mike before the show today when we walked in, I said to Mike, uh, hold on, I'm hearing myself in delay there, Pete. Take that down. I said to Mike, for today's show, think Challenger. And right, that yeah. was one of the worst shows that we ever had oh to God. broadcast. Right, exactly. The day the Challenger exploded. But it was a day when you could let down your guard. You didn't have to worry about being funny. Mm -hmm. You didn't have to worry about being zany or topping people with lines. And for a while after the Challenger, just what you were talking about happened. Everybody came together. Mm -hmm. Right. What I'm, what I'm wondering is, how long is it going to take after this happens 
for people to stay together. Like I said, you know, yeah. three or four months from now, I'll probably be the type of guy that's bitching at the airport. Well, you never know. And, and you know, I think when, uh, literally, and I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to make a pun here, when all of this settles and we see the magnitude of this tragedy, this is going to be like nothing that's ever happened to the United States before. And that is when things are going to change. And, uh, you know, something like this does not happen without major change from, uh, you know, airport security all the way down to, you know, the way we live our lives. And how many of you like me let's look at this from a different standpoint for just a second felt as i watched this unfold this morning and i saw bush go on tv take aside your, your, the way you feel about politics for a second right. let me ask you a question right now who would you rather have in charge with this going on bush or clinton and i, I mean i know we've goofed about this and we joked during the elections for some reason i feel more in, more secure with bush in charge uh, you know even I, though the guy's a dope Right now, you know, whoever the person is in charge, we have to stand behind that oh, person. I, I agree. You know, and I and I think that you you know we are you know we are the the country, the greatest country in the world, and I think we have to band together. And and you know, right now, who's in charge and who's taking care of things? It, it sure as hell matters to to some people, but uh, you know, for for the people that are affected by this tragedy down at the World Trade Center, uh, you know, it, it, it's it doesn't really matter to them right now. I think it's the, the military leaders at this point uh, who who are really coming into play more than the president himself. I mean, obviously, he makes the final call. I would venture to say the president of the United States is being told what to do right now. Absolutely, absolutely, and, and, that, and that would be regardless if it was Bush or Clinton. Exactly. It wouldn't matter who exactly. it is because certain things uh, take uh, you know take place. Certain right. precautions, protocol take place. I was going to. Uh, Andrew here on uh, NEW and JFK. Andrew, hello. Hey, Donna Mike. Hi, you're on the air. Hi. Uh, I know this probably isn't the appropriate time, but I was just I was just thinking that it's not great to see the collapse over and over again. You know, I don't think it reassures people. I agree. But you know what? Welcome to the world in which we live in. You're going to you know, see it yep. continually now. But I'll really, I call on that. I mean, I really do. You're talking about... Something of this magnitude, you gotta change some rules, and I agree. I think that every time I see that, I, I you know, you, you report it, but there's not, you're not doing any good by showing it. And even more than that, CNN was just showing a riot scene down on Wall Street that was really about the most horrifying thing I've ever seen, and it's not doing any good to show people that to show right. other Americans at their absolute time of panic. Right. It's, now, it's, you're not, you're not helping. Yourself. Now, Buzz, what is this I'm seeing on the bottom of the screen on CNN? It says second lost American airline air Airlines flight was from Dulles to Los Angeles. Second lost American okay, Airlines. That, that is new American Airlines confirms yes. loss of two flights. What is that about? That would be the one that went down in Pennsylvania, perhaps. It could be. We're just going to have to wait to hear from them. And their United Air United Airlines passenger jet crashes near Pittsburgh. Okay, that's the one in Western Pennsylvania. So apparently, and, and American will oh, confirm or deny yeah. this in about seven minutes. Apparently, both of the planes that went into the World Trade Center. Uh, yeah, although this doesn't make a lot of sense. I know that the first plane that crashed into the first World Trade Center tower was uh, an American Airlines jet uh, from Boston to Los Angeles, was its uh, original destination. Uh, I don't know how a plane... Uh, I would be surprised that a plane would make it all the way up here from Dulles before some kind of action had been taken, if, in fact, that Dulles plane was also headed well, that's, to Los Angeles. Well, that's what they just said on CNN, from Dulles to Los Angeles. Let's go back to uh, calls here. Don and Mike show on WNEW. WJFK, our phone number two one two seven five seven one zero two seven. Excuse me, Raymond. Hello, Raymond. Yeah, hi, Donna Mike. This is Raymond. Uh, there was a report. I'm watching Baltimore News. I'm in Maryland, and there was a report that a plane crashed near or at, at Camp David, and also one plane crashed in the Maryland suburban area. And the FBI knew about four hijackings prior to all the crashes. Yeah, and and the Red Cross is sorry. The Red Cross is asking people to go to the hospitals and donate blood. Yeah, that's a good yeah, idea. Yeah, if you're looking situation. for something to do, uh, that's, that's a great idea. But this is just, if that's true, this is, this is a mess that's just growing out of control. And, and don't come into the city to do that, obviously. If you're out in the burbs, give blood in the burbs, and uh, the Red Cross will get the blood into town. Let's go to Amanda. Amanda, hi from uh, D.C. You're on with Don and Mike. Hello. Hi. You guys mentioned something about the schools. I'm okay. in D.C. area right yeah. now. Um, Arlington County is staying open. D.C. keeps changing their mind. Now they're saying to pick up the children if you have an ID, and PG is closing two hours early. So they're not really doing anything with the schools. All right. Well, no, that's the three of the three of the school systems in the D.C. area are, are figuring out what to do. Yeah, I know. D.C. is 
changed her mind. I've been watching the news, and in the last three yeah. minutes, they've changed it from well, we're closing when, to we're not. You know, in D.C., it's like when it snows in D.C. Yeah. Right. I think it's gonna be the same thing. Like when the when the plows come out after there's already yeah, a foot yeah, of snow and, on and the you ground. Know, they're reacting to the situation as it develops. All right, yeah. let's go to uh, Laura, who is uh, near Dulles Airport, out uh, in suburban D.C. Laura, hi. Hi. How are you? Hi. Great. You're on the air. It is just crazy here. I'm on Route 28, which is the road that leads to Dulles Airport. Right. Yes. And it is total Centerville. gridlock. Uh, it's gridlock on 28? Mm-hmm. Now this... And I pick my kids up from school. I pull them both out of school. And the, all the schools in Ashburn, which is a suburb close to the airport, they're all the schools are locked down. They have to show ID. They've got all the doors locked. Yeah, it's all right. Unbelievable. All right. And getting to 28, there all the undercover vehicles are going to the airport. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, this, right, is, this is happening as we speak. All right, that's Laura. She's on Route 28 at Centerville near Dulles Airport. Buzz, you got something, or are you just monitoring something? Uh, I'm, I'm, we're hearing reactions now from uh, uh, various uh, r religious groups, religious leaders. The spiritual leader of the Hamas says that he does not, of course, endorse attacks on civilians or innocent people, but he says uh, the United States needs to realize that uh, it, uh, too, can suffer as other countries and people in other countries well, he better suffered. shut his mouth. Uh, uh, at least one other uh, terrorist organization has taken credit for the attack, but uh, now another one is chiming in, so it's really hard to know who to believe at this point. All right, let's go to Anthony uh, in New York. With Don and Mike on WNEW and on WJFK, uh, we want to do, uh, thank uh, Pete Johnson, our New York engineer. Who yeah, the engineer here at NEW have been doing a great job. You can't get a dial tone anywhere in Manhattan, but we do have our phone lines working at 212-757-1027. Here's Anthony from New York. Anthony, hi. How are you doing, Don and Mike? Hi, we're doing okay. Ah, uh, terrible day. Yes, it is. No, uh, no doubt. Yeah, this will go down in history as one of the worst in the yeah, history of the United the States. CBS has just reported that there were eight hijacked planes that are still looking for four. Oh, Christ. So still four out there. Yep. All right. Thank you, Anthony. All right, buddy. Let's go to uh, Tim in uh, New York. Tim, hi. You're on NEW, JFK. How you doing, pal? Doing all right. Uh, I was wondering if you think today's date has any significance with all the trauma and emergency being caused with today's date being 911. You know, I don't know. I don't think it would. I, I wouldn't think that... Uh, I don't think they're that bright. I, well, no, I think they are. I, frankly, I think that it would, no, have, I mean, it would, have, it would have more... That's kind of clever, though, isn't it? Well, I, would have, I think it would have more... Uh, maybe significance that probably wouldn't, uh, we wouldn't relate to in this country. All right, now they're reporting on CNN that part of the Pentagon has collapsed. Yes, yes. We, in fact, had mentioned you that. Had that, that was earlier. Yeah, earlier. Uh, American Airlines is uh, making its statements now. Oh, uh, American can says, I pot it up? I, I, I don't know. They may have already yeah, made them. I can tell you what has been... Said. The same airplane uh, American Airlines says it lost two planes today. Uh, as you mentioned earlier, one Dulles to Los Angeles. That's the one that went down in western Pennsylvania. And uh, also the one that was bound from Boston to Los Angeles. That's the first one that crashed into the World Trade Centers today. American Airlines says it lost a total of 156 passengers in those two crashes. Right, hold on. Let me see what I'm getting here. So we now have at least two uh, commercial airline companies in the United States. American Airlines reporting two of its passenger jets down uh, one flight, Dulles, in Washington to Los Angeles, and then another flight from Boston to Los Angeles down, and now we have United Airlines reporting at least one airline or airliner down. Uh, All right, she doesn't have any new information there. Uh, Philadelphia landmarks have also been evacuated now. The Liberty Bell, the... Uh, all of your tourist spots in Philadelphia have been evacuated. As I mentioned, I think, a while ago, I've got to think, if, if you live in Chicago, you, you've got to go you got to go downtown. You've got to clear the Sears Tower, for goodness right. sakes. Right. You've got to go down to the Miracle Mile. You've got to go down to Lakeshore Drive and, and, and get people the, the hell out of there. And, you know, if, if, you, if you have people here in New York City, uh, in Washington, D.C., that work at the Pentagon, uh, you know, I, I'm just going to ask everybody, say, uh, you know, say a prayer. Whether you believe in whatever God you believe in, just uh, there are a lot of people that are, are impacted. When you see the pictures of these people and the reactions that uh, not just the people that were directly involved in this tragedy, but people that have loved ones down there at the World Trade Center, you know, take a pause. And uh, this, this is just uh, going to continue to develop as, as the greatest tragedy in the history of the United it, it's States. It's a freaking serious 
hilarious situation. It's phenomenal. Uh, the mainland United States under attack uh, like we've never seen it before. Uh, it's 1130 on the East Coast. Don and Mike show on WNEW New York, WJFK Washington. Let's go to uh, Frank from uh, New York. Frank, hi, you're on with Don and Mike. This is Frank. Listen, I just wanted to tell you, I hope the rest of the country feels the same. I'm 53 years old. I'm a Vietnam vet. I'm a business owner. I'm here every day. I take this very seriously, my business. I'm ready to drop, lock the doors, close the gates, pick up arms. My government needs me. I'm ready. I'm going. I'll tell you right now, I don't, I don't think you're alone in that. There's right a right. lot of people who, who feel the same way, and I think that this is going to hit home with a lot more people than an isolated attack Absolutely. Somewhere. Yeah. The Pearl fact, Harbor. Yeah, the fact that New York and Washington have been Absolutely. Hit and planes are going down in Pennsylvania, and you've got the other plane that's, that's massive. That's careening out of control. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, i got to feel the same way. Let's go to uh, Gary uh, from D.C. on WJFK. Gary, hi. You're on the air with Don and Mike. Hello. Hi. How you doing, guys? We're doing all right. Yeah, first off, I want to commend you guys for the approach you're taking today, you know, going from the uh, usual... Oh, well, listen, how could you possibly get on the air today and do a regular yeah, show? We've got, uh, you know, you, you, you have bigger fish to fry on a day like this. This is, uh, I don't think uh, anybody, I, I don't remember anything uh, that re remotely approaches this. And uh, and everybody's reacting to it. And being here in the middle of New York City is, uh, it, it's a strange feeling. It's a, it's a feeling that you get in the pit of your stomach. And uh, we're all reacting to it at the same time. Someone just done some research. It's the first attack on D.C. since 1812. I think right. that would be the last time we've been attacked. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I know I said that in New York before that the, the, the World Trade Center has been, uh, you know, terrorized before. But in D.C., really, I think we had a feeling of invincibility that mm. we live in Washington, D.C. What the hell could ever happen to us here? Right. Anyway, I'm sorry, Gary, go ahead. That's okay. I'm on a 95. Um, Buzz, hold on a second. Yeah. You, got, you got something, Buzz? United Airlines says it has also lost a plane today and is concerned about the welfare of one other. We do not know whose planes crashed where. We now believe that uh, the plane that crashed into the south end of the Pentagon was a United Airlines jet. Oh uh, we're still waiting to hear more from United on that. All right. Thank you, Buzz. Uh, Gary, go ahead. Yeah, I'm on 95 North, uh, stuck in traffic to go across the Woodrow Wilson Bridge. And you see people in their cars, you know, people are crying. Yeah. And my wife, she works on Capitol Hill. I work normally right across from the White House. I was out at a client today. You sure want to get in, you want to get in touch with your loved ones in a situation yeah. like that, and that unfortunately is not an easy task, uh, especially here in New York with the with the phone situation. No phone lines in New York. The only lines that I know that work in New York right now are the lines that people are calling us on. Well, I, I tell you, I've been trying to call my wife for almost two hours. I can't get hold of anybody, but I, I get a hold of you guys. So. Your right hats off to your engineers there, but I, I just you know I know you guys don't have the answer to this, but want to know you know where do we go from here as far as how does the government determine when to reopen you know the district and other areas? Well, I, I would say in, in Manhattan you're talking about God knows how long until things get back to normal. Oh, absolutely, yet you have no idea. I mean, you, you know, you're talking about the center of the financial district of the world that is gone, that and, is destroyed. And the sad thing about this is that I, I think even if you reach a point today when you think it's over, right. and I know that Buzz has just told us there are four more planes in, in the air, it, you don't know if it's over. You don't know. You, you can't fight against a, an unknown opponent. You can't fight against someone you don't know. Right. So, so at what point is tomorrow, do you say to you guys, hey, uh, government workers, all you GSers, go back? I don't think uh, certainly this week, the rest of this week, and perhaps the rest of this month, you're going to see things back to normal. I want to go to uh, Chris from Connecticut, who says he can now see the smoke from the World Trade Center all the way in Connecticut. Chris, where are you from in Connecticut, Chris? I'm from Stanford. And you can see it there? I can see the smoke on 95 heading south. If you come through Stanford and some parts of Greenwich, you can see the smoke out in the distance. Christ's sake. And, you know, thank the good Lord, I might have been down there today if it wasn't for my wife needing to go to the doctor. Say a prayer for the people that were, okay, Chris? D Excuse me, gentlemen. D.C. police say uh, that uh, a plane, uh, presumably their hijacked plane, is now headed at a high rate of speed up the Potomac River. They say the plane is moving at a high rate of speed up the Potomac River across Washington, D.C. We'll let you know as soon as we hear anything. All right, so it's, if it's going up the Potomac, it's going towards... It's going towards the uh, National Airport. All right. Okay, let's go to uh, Don, who's on the air. Our phone number again, uh, the only number you can get us today is 212-757-1027. It's the Don and Mike Show on WNEW and on WJFK. Don, hello. How you doing, Don and Mike? Hey, we're doing all right, my friend. 
Um, some of the eyewitnesses in D.C. said that it was an American airline that crashed in the Pentagon. I kind of found that ironic that they used uh, American that crashed in the Pentagon and the two that were uh, the World Trade Center were also American. How well, ironic you know, it, they it, used American Airlines. It, it should be mentioned the, that there are reports of uh, two uh, United Airlines planes that were hijacked. Yeah, I think we know of two American Airlines crashes. We know of one United crash, and uh, United fears that another crash is pending. Uh, what isn't clear this at this point, except for that the first jet was an American Airlines jet crashing into the World Trade Center, we don't know yet for sure whose jets crashed where. And, and to that point, aren't we giving these guys too much credit to think, whoever it is, to think, okay, they picked 9 one one as the day, and they're going to fly American Airlines planes. No, I, I think that the the the, uh, the the planes that were hijacked were were the planes they could hijack. Yeah, right. right? And, and that that, I, that was my was point. Done. That they, I, that, that's why I don't think nine one one was a significant yeah, day. I don't either. And I don't think that it was an American Airlines plane into right. an American building. You're absolutely right. It's sure. the planes that were flying this morning. Right. And that's flying, the, they're going to have to look at the security considerations around that. Right. That will be part of the investigation. People when all tend to look for around. coincidences. I, I think as a kind of comfort, you know, uh, Lincoln's secretary was named Kennedy. Kennedy's, you know, none. Of that stuff applies here yet. Charlie, New Jersey, hi, you're with uh, Don and Mike on NEW and JFK. Hey, how you doing, Don and Mike? All uh, right. My question for you, I guess when all the dust settles and, you know, everything clears, do you think that warrants us to attack any well-known ter terrorist if, areas or in the Middle East? Or I think if we, if we get definitive proof who did it? Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I think I speak for everybody now. God damn, we come down on them hard. We've done it before. Uh, we've hey, we've sure done these guys before, and everybody's filled with anger. Yeah, but but we, we've got to have definitive proof. On, you have on to. You can't go out. Who did you, this? You know, we're talking about loss of innocent life, and uh, and and you don't, you know, create loss of innocent life for loss of innocent life. I think what yeah. you do is, you know, what's been done before. You're going to have to change the way we protect this country. Charlie, we're very relaxed. Yeah. Thank you, thank you for the call, uh, Charlie. We're going to go to Holly now, who's on Army Navy Drive in Virginia. Holly, hi, you're on with Don and Mike. Hello. Hey, hey guys, I've been listening to you since I was probably ten years old. You know, um, hell of a time to call you though. Yeah, I was here like slightly after it happened at the Pentagon. It's freaking incredible. Traffic is backed way up. The smoke is still really visible where I'm at now, so you can still and it just covered Arlington. Uh, you can still see the smoke from from the Pentagon. Oh, sure. No, oh, oh, yeah, you know no what? problem. Here you go. I, I got a live shot on CNN. Yeah, it doesn't look as bad as it did before, okay. but there was smoke still coming, pouring out of the middle of the Pentagon. So part of it uh, collapsed, not the yeah, entire structure. Right. I was here before they closed down all the traffic, so, I mean, you could get up close, you know, but now they've pretty much closed everything down. It's just stagnation on the roads. Can't do anything. All right, but thank it's just you. Crazy. Holly, Thanks. thank you. Thanks for the call, honey. Let's go to uh, Andrew, New York. You with Don and Mike on NEW and JFK. Hello. Hey, how you doing? Hi, uh, we're doing okay. My name is Andrew Wilkinson. I'm calling you from Brooklyn, New York. Yes, yeah. Andrew. Hi. I saw both buildings go down because we were on the roof over here in Brooklyn, right across from the bridge. Right. My question, and somebody has to come straight with this. How many? Eight planes were hijacked today, right? Right. At least. One, one plane gets hijacked in the country. We all know about it. How can eight planes get hijacked? There's no warning or anything. Okay? Nobody knows anything. There's no radio reports, nothing. Now we're getting all these reports afterwards saying, hey, United's missing one plane and, Uni and America's missing two after the fact. Well, Where you was know, the early warning? The, Let me tell you, that's what the investigations are for. And, we, and you know, there are so many unanswered questions. I, I, I agree with you, Andrew. I, I, I had the same question myself. You, you, you're going to have to wait to, to, you know, see what happened, what broke down, and why why weren't these uh, hijackings reported. If indeed, uh, did we have a report of the FBI knowing about yes, this? the FBI was investigating a hijacking prior to the very first crash this morning. They were already on the case. Uh, well, why they weren't able to stop it, or if anybody could have stopped it, at that point remains to be seen. Now, uh, one more thing. We were on the roof when the first plane hit. Now, we're standing there, and we saw the second plane, and we're like, hold on a second. Have you heard anything yet? And we're like, no. Well, look at that plane. It's getting kind of close. And it hit. And, I mean, come on now. You're telling me you got three major airports in the New York City area. You got the one in Jersey. You got LaGuardia, and you got Kennedy. Nobody was tracking these planes? No, you know, and, and listen, uh, we we got to run. Thank you for the call. I had the same thought as I was watching the uh, the Channel 4 helicopter today. They were showing the first trade center mm -hmm. burned out and speculating as as to, well, maybe it was a, an errant plane. We, we, did, we don't know if it's terrorist. And you can see from the right-hand part of the screen the second plane directly coming at the, at the second world, world trade center. And it's become apparent that not only the planes but the bombs at the base of the 
the towers did the damage. And uh, you know, you're talking about a full scale attack on the World Trade Center towers with the planes and with the explosives at the base. The questions that everybody has, the anger that everybody has, you're going to have to wait and find out where the lapses were, where the breakdowns were. Because right now, with the situation being what it is, we don't have those answers, and I'm sure the authorities that are investigating this don't have those answers either. New York police now say this is a war zone. Manhattan is like a war zone. D.C. has been closed down. The government employees have been uh, let go. Uh, you're listening to Don and Mike, WNEW and WJFK. You can call us at 212 one oh two seven. Let's go to uh, Anthony. Anthony, you're on the air with Don and Mike. Hello. Yeah. Hi. 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 My name is Anthony. Right. Um, I like to, how do you think this will affect our foreign policy towards uh, the it, Middle East? This affects every aspect of uh, the United States government. It affects every aspect of police and and security and the FBI. Yeah. Th this country has changed forever, and uh, what you have to realize is that. Things will never be the same. I, I, don't, Buzz, I don't see how they possibly could be. They can't be the same at this point. We can never, and it will be months, maybe years before we get over this. It, it, try to picture this, if you will. I was, I was strolling last night, a very mild evening at uh, South Broadway. It's hard to imagine that right now, as we speak, people are feeling their ways because they can't see, because the ash and the smoke and the dust is so dense, they can't see. They're feeling their way across uh, uh, lower Broadway today as they try to get you, out of the you area. Can, you cannot imagine this. And if you're watching CNN, you know, to an extent when you watch TV, here, here's the thing. We've been, de we've been desensitized we to have. this type of stuff because we've seen it in the movies. Right. And when you're watching TV, to an extent, and I felt this today, when I watched the World Trade Center, the planes going to the Trade Center, on TV, I felt, uh, that's awful. Right. It wasn't until... I left my apartment building, I got out on the street, and my doorman said, Hey, look, right over there. Right. And then I and this and this was hours ago before it really hit the fan. Right. Uh out on the streets of New York right now, to to say you're watching it on T V and, and you're realizing what's happening you don't. You know, it, it's uh, having my brother-in-law who works, uh, you know, does not work regularly in the World Trade Center, but comes down to New York and not knowing and, uh, you know, wanting to call my sister to find out. Everybody that's got this situation going right now, it, it, that's the tough part. And those are the people I'm concerned about. And let right me now. say to you and to Buzz and to Rob, to all of you guys. Uh, we're not breaking for commercials. If you want to leave and take a break, right. and take a bathroom break. Right go now. ahead, take a break. I'll stay here. You go ahead and do this. Vice versa. So you can. Yeah, I, no, I know I your got, bladder's getting full. I got. I got Ken on top of my situation. I'm fine with the calls. Buzz. Very good. Uh, we want to help out the authorities here uh, by saying that uh, first of all, all NYPD personnel are being called to work, and that includes the operators and the 911 workers. And right now, if you can believe this. Retired NYPD officers, retired officers from the New York Police Department are being asked to report to Midland Avenue and Capabana Boulevard in uh, Staten Island and uh, report to Ed Royce there. Retired NYPD officers meet Ed Royce on Midland Avenue on Staten Island. All right, thank you, Buzz. It's the Don and Mike Show on WNEW and WJFK. You can reach us at 212-757-1027. We do have... Uh, we do have CNN going here. We do have 1010 Winds uh, piped into our studio. As soon as President Bush comes on TV, as soon as United Airlines, American Airlines makes a statement, we will uh, give it to you live, and we are taking your phone calls. Joe, you're on the Don and Mike Show. Hello. Hey, yes, how you doing? I'm driving, driving down the LIE. Yes, Joe. And sitting out here in Huntington, you can see the smoke all the way out here. On the LIE. Now, now if you're coming in, to, well, listen, coming in or going out of town today, uh, in New York, you're screwed. Uh, George Washington closed. Uh, the Triborough the Brooklyn Bridge closed. A, a couple of bridges are, most are closed still, and earlier they all were. But right now I understand that the Queensbound side of the Triborough Bridge is open. Uh, traffic is being diverted in many locations and, and is jammed up on the LIE and elsewhere here in New York. All right, well, thank they you. Are, they are closing the LIE and the northern states to emergency vehicles only. Right. Gotcha. All Very right, good. thank you. Let's go to uh, Steve. Well, Steve, you, you got stuff about kids at school? Steve? Yeah, um, they're going to be closing down the Nassau and Suffolk County school, uh, or school districts are going to be closing down. All right, now, see, this is where I, I think, as a parent, uh -huh. this is where it, it gets me Pinky. feeling... Yeah. 
nutty that yeah. if you're a parent and you're in the city and, and you can't get out and you have to walk over the Brooklyn Bridge mm -hmm. and, and they're letting your kid out of school, that's where you got to be going crazy thinking, right. is my kid going to get home by, by himself, by, 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 her, by herself? Right. Yeah. How, how do you handle that situation? I, I am sure that at these schools what you're going to do is have a situation where the kids that aren't picked up, where, you know, if you have, uh, you know, the transportation, that's going to get the kids to their homes. But if it's uh, parents picking up children, I'm sure that these schools will have certain contingencies to have the kids watched until, you know, they can get in touch with their parents. I know. I, I understand that we can go to calls via Slow Joe. This is an experiment. It should work. All, all signs point that they should be able to press All up. signs point to, yes. yes. Let's go to, uh, <laughs> let's see if we take a call from D.C. on our regular line. Hello, Don and Mike show. Hey, Don and Mike. Hi, you're on the air. Hi, yeah, yeah I'm out on 295, 295 uh, right at Bowling Air Force. Yeah, but that was a bad sell. Right. But I do think now we have a second set of phone lines up. But, Joe, punch another one up, and let's see if we can take another one on 877-365-3636. Hello, Don and Mike show. Don and Mike. This is terrible. This is just a terrible tragedy. Yeah, it is. I was up on, I was up up on, on Mount St. Albany, as you know, that's the highest point in DDD. And in theory, out of the city. But uh, thank you. you know what? The, the, uh, the, the, the reception on that cell is, yeah, is, is awful. I think we're gonna, we're gonna have to stick with our main number here in New York. Absolutely. At 212-757-1027. Uh, Randy. Ryan 11? Is this Randy? Uh, I'm sorry, I don't know who this is. Oh, here he is. Randy. Hi, Randy. You're on the air. Don and Mike show. Hello. Hey, how you doing? We're doing alright. I was working at the Mammoth Mall in Eatontown, New Jersey. Yes, sir. We, we went up on the roof because we're doing, uh, a building over there, yeah. you could see the smoke on t from the build from there, and I mean that's 30, 40 miles away from New York City. Right. And you got like a hundred people working in this building because they're doing a renovation, and a lot of people just they just left, they went home. You know, they're worried about their families and friends that work there. I have a friend that works on Wall Street. I've been trying to call him for hours. I can't get in touch with him. Yeah, I, I think, and I was just talking about that with the kids in school. I think that that now is going to hit people. The people who are not directly affected by this tragedy, mm -hmm. you immediately think, oh, my God, if it's happened in New York, if it's happened in D.C., maybe it could happen oh, where I live. i got to get to be with my family. i got to call and make sure my family's you know, okay. And whether you have somebody uh, you know, involved in this tragedy at the World Trade Center, it affects all of us like nothing. Because uh, when you know the first attack took place and uh, did not do the significant damage that this attack has done, now that it has been what I hate to say the word successful, but a successful terrorist attack, you're you're, you're going to get everyone affected by this, and I and I know that it doesn't matter whether you have anybody involved in it at all. Just to bring people up to speed a little bit, uh, 10,000 emergency workers have been called to the scene of the collapse of the World Trade Center Towers here in New York. Uh, as you may have heard earlier, part of the Pentagon collapsed today as a plane hit that. The government now says that United Airlines plane that went down near Pittsburgh uh, took 54 lives. Uh, President Bush, of course, has called this a, a terrorist attack, has called for the prayers of all Americans for the victims of it and a uh, full investigation. Uh, all federal buildings and the United Nations have been evacuated across the country today, uh, and the FAA has grounded all U.S. flights. Any incoming transatlantic flights are being uh, diverted still to Canada. Buzz, we're going to go live now to a uh, briefing at Logan Airport in Boston. Of course, that's where one of the planes that was hijacked originated from. What is this going to Fort Knox? We have reports of employees screaming Fort Knox around the time that the plane went into the boat. I don't know what that means. Doesn't mean have any connotation here at Logan Airport. What about planes that are flying in here? Are they being rerouted somewhere else? Well, uh, the aircraft were flying into Logan Airport. Uh, we did take some arrivals, but now since the airport is shut down, uh, these flights will be diverted to uh, Canada. They're not taking flights either. Uh, there seems to be some kind of problem with that connection there. No, I, I think it's just the people in the crowd who trying to get the uh, microphones on the uh, reporters yes. that are asking yeah, the questions. You, you can hear the guy from Logan Airport. You fine. See, you know, public transportation or their own transportation out of the airport. Leaving the airport? No. How long do you anticipate the airport to be closed? It's indefinite this time. Um, we're just uh, we'll be meeting with the FAA. We'll be conducting uh, analysis of our intelligence that we have. We'll make a determination later on this afternoon. Flight, uh, flight 11 from Boston to Los Angeles is one of the hijacked planes that was uh, run into the World Trade Center. Another flight from Dulles Airport in D.C. to Los Angeles has been hijacked. 
Is, is that when, is that when the buzzer so many? Has that one crashed? Is that the one that crashed in Pennsylvania? It's difficult to keep track of all of those. The one you just mentioned and that was on its way from Boston to L.A. had 81 passengers and 11 crew on board. Flight 77 from Dulles had 58 passengers and six crew aboard. Uh, both were on their way to Los Angeles. United Flight 93 headed from Newark, New Jersey to San Francisco crashed near Somerset, Pennsylvania today. Uh, no known survivors is what we're hearing so far. And United says it is momentarily a deeply concerned about the status of Flight 175, also from Boston to Los Angeles. All right, now listen, I, I mean this seriously, and, and I know the movie was just out and everything. Do you think that this day goes down in history as being remembered like a Pearl Harbor type day? Absolutely. I, you you, yeah, you could not possibly imagine the extent of this tragedy. This is... This is our generation's Pearl Harbor today, and it's uh, you know the problem is you don't have that country to look at in its entirety and say this is the enemy, this is who we fight. That's what terrorism is all about. That's the problem with it. That's the reason why these individuals can get into the country and do something like this. That's it, absolutely done. I think this is our generation's Pearl Harbor. I, I think once you you know we're, we're re reporting on this and we're talking about this as it happens right now, but when this all plays out and you see the results of this, I don't think I, I, I think this will make Pearl Harbor pale in comparison. Absolutely. All right, Don and Mike show one oh two seven W N E W New York. Buzz what what do you have about the Centers for Disease Control? Seven W J F K Washington. I just want to add a couple of other things. Uh Israel has evacuated all of its uh missions around the world. The President Bush is uh, flying back uh, from I don't know how uh, but is returning from Florida, canceling his schedule there to uh, focus on this. In Chicago, as you suggested earlier, Don, the Sears Tower has been evacuated. And as Mike just asked about, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention in Atlanta has been evacuated. It had been preparing bioterrorism teams in case that was to become a problem. You know, and, and furthermore, I would say throughout America, I, I would uh, evacuate. I, mean, I don't want to panic here, but mm -hmm. I'd evacuate the St. Louis Arch. I would evacuate. Yeah, I, I, I mean, all of your major mm -hmm. American tourist uh, type sites. I would even. I, I would go as far as say, listen, shut down Disneyland today. Yeah, you, you know, it, it's amazing. Might as well, uh, let's go back to the phones. We got tons of people here. Uh, Don and Mike show WNEW, WJFK, Pearl Harbor yielded two thousand three hundred. And 38 fatalities. That answers your question. Yeah, and we, we already know that just from the people in the World Trade Center, you got to think of 40,000 people working there. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Pearl Harbor had 2,338 fatalities. That, that was it? That's it. For the for the for the first day when the that's when the it. Japanese bombed us, there were 1,177 dead crewmen that are listed on the memorial, but all those mortally wounded total 20 uh, 2,300. 2,300 you know, on December seventh. Yeah. There's a question in my mind right now, and and that question is uh, when the planes hit the buildings, the World Trade Center towers, did they? I hope that they were able to get some people out of that building and and do it quickly, and and that's the main question that's in my mind right now, and I I'd, I'd like to have that question uh, answered. Well, you would think I, on the I, on the lower floors, you would yeah, think. you would think. Abs absolutely, and I can tell you that uh, many, most, if not all, of the people in the lower floors of the first tower that was struck mm -hmm. were evacuated. What has happened in the second tower, I don't know. At this point, as you know, both towers uh, collapsed, and uh, right now, uh, as a public service, we'd like to ask all. Uh, plastic surgeons and uh, burn specialists in the New York City area to report to St. Vincent's Hospital on 11th Street uh, to uh, because that, they, they need... Uh, Repeat that again. Are you, are you going to call your own personal plastic surgeon? Yeah, yeah, to come no, in and... I'm going to let him go today so we can focus on this. Again, burn specialists and doctors specializing in plastic surgery being asked to report to St. Vincent's on 11th Street. Obviously, there's a lot of work that needs to be done there. Rebecca, hi, you're on WNEW, WJFK with Don and Mike. Hello. Hi, uh, you guys are doing a great job. Um, the reason I called was I just heard it on another radio station. All the blood banks in New York are asking people to donate blood because they're lacking tremendous amount of blood. Yeah, I think Buzz had that also. Buzz oh, had okay. mentioned something to that effect also. Uh, but obviously, if you're in the city, stay in the city to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you're in the suburbs, you know, right, they go somewhere in the suburbs. The Red it, Cross right? will get it into town and get it where it's needed, uh, wherever you are today in the U.S. And within the look for where they places. need you and, and donate blood. Uh, blood is always needed all across the country. Today would have been an especially good day to give no matter where you live. Johnny, hi, you're on NEW and JFK. Hello. Hello Johnny. Let's, get the, let's get the water supplies. They should have the water supplies protected. The reservoirs right now, right? 
I wonder, has anyone looked into that? I don't. No. I don't know. I don't know what's more ridiculous: the fact that you're asking about the reservoirs, or that I'm seeing now on CNN under their headline that says "America Under Attack." Yeah. They're interviewing Tom Clancy. Oh God! <laughs> can you imagine? Unbelievable. Can you imagine a more ridiculous situation? Well, it is only the biggest disaster in 50 years in America. I mean, this is when you, you don't want speculation. This is when you want to get as much yeah. information as you can. You don't report, want... as I always say to these guys in these circumstances. Report. Get some facts out. You don't want a guy who writes books. Rob, get me Elmore Leonard on the phone. Right. Elmore Leonard immediately. I love his book. Get Shorty. Harrison Keeler on line three. Let's get him. Buzz, you got anything, or should I go to a call? Uh, it just just the latest report from Washington, D.C., that military jets are combing across uh, the capital area, uh, apparently in an attempt to screen out that D.C. plane, which, as hard as it is to believe, is apparently still headed uh, toward D.C. What the status of that plane is, I don't know, but I do know that military planes are constantly fanning back and forth Good. across the capital area. All right, let's go to uh, John in D.C., who was working, you know, they're, they're constantly renovating the Kennedy Center. Mm -hmm. They're giving it a facelift. John was working on the Kennedy Center. Today, right down by the Rock Creek Parkway. Johnny, you're on the air. Hi. Yep, just lost him. Mm. Just lost him. He had something to say, too. Let's go to, uh, I don't know who this is. Hi, Donna Mike. Hello. Hello. Hi, who's hi. this? Um, Lori, actually. I'm calling from Manhattan. Yes, hi, Lori. You're on NEW. Hi, yes. I'd like to know if you can tell me if the 59th Street Bridge is open for walkovers. Hey, I know you've mentioned you that um, the Brooklyn Bridge is. Joe. Oh, hold on. Joe? All right. Yeah, Dad, I got Bart on the line. line. Oh, you got my kid on the line? Yeah, hang, hang on. on. Okay, hey, hold on a second. Hey, Buzz, will you find out about the 59th Street Bridge? I promise we'll find out. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Hello, son. Hey, Dad. Hey, hold on. Did you get my email? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, where's mom? Did you want to talk to me off the air? No, no it's, 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 it's uh, 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 just, just uh, uh, on home. Mom's fine. Listen, I tell you what. Why don't you, uh, why don't you go on hold for a second, okay? No, it's, 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 it's that's fine. All right, but yeah, you got my email? Yeah, mom's fine, I'm fine. Okay. okay. Everything's fine. Mom's on her way back home. In a while, I might call you to get permission to drive home. We, today, you have, have permission to drive home. home. Yeah, listen, uh, hey, Barty, just hold on a second. Um, Joe, give Bart the hotline here. And, Barty, I want you to call me right back, because I'll, I'll go in the other room and take the call, okay? Okay. okay. All right, uh, just have, uh, go on hold for a second. Okay. okay. Yeah, this is. I mean, listen. That's that's real life. That's my kid. Absolutely. He's and, at uh, school. You know, the 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 people here in New York that are in the city are being asked to donate blood. We are trying to get updates on uh, the you know the ways out of the city. Uh, a lot of people, as Buzz mentioned before, were actually walking across the Brooklyn Bridge. But did you find out about the 59th Street Bridge? We're checking on it now. All right, let's go to uh, David in New York on NEW and JFK. David, hello. Hey, how are you doing? Hi, we're okay. Thanks. Oh gosh, guys, this is such a tragedy. It I was sure thinking, is. you know, I'm 27 years old and. Never in my life. This is the most, most tragic, most awful thing that I can, can even imagine. Friday, I'm right here in Brooklyn. Just wanted to address what you were talking about earlier about desensitivity in television. I mean, you're absolutely right. I, uh, I, mean, I heard it first on the radio this morning with the sport guys and turned on the television and watched about an hour, but then I went outside to go walk around. And I implore people to put on the, put on their earphones and listen to radio and just turn off the television and go out and talk to people. It's, uh, People are very emotional out there, especially people who haven't seen anything, people who are in stores or they're really crying and I really want to talk to people and really want to know what's going on. And I'm going to hang up right now and just go give blood myself. All right, that's great. Thank you, David. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, let me see. Okay, hold on. Bear with me. Paul. Hi. Paul, New York. You're on the air with Don and Mike on NEW and JFK. Hello. Hey, Paul. Or Hello? Joe. I'm sorry, it's Joe. Oh, hey, how you doing? Hi, Joe. We're doing great. Yeah, um, my, I had an uncle. I, I hope I still have an uncle. He was supposed to be working in uh, a different section of Manhattan, and they sent him. They had an office in the World Trade, and they sent him there at 8 o'clock this morning. Aye, aye, aye. And the, one of the worst things, my, my wife used to work in the World Trade, the second. She said there was a daycare center oh. in the second building. Uh, you know what? I don't, you know, that makes me think of Oklahoma City. I don't even want to hear that well, now. You know, it's, uh, it's going to be, you're going to get stories like this coming out. That I don't want to hear. But the strange, a strange thing, my, my dad works for the government still, and he says that there's been reports to them that the reason why the Pennsylvania plane went down is because they think that people, the terrorists couldn't get control of the plane and that people were fighting back in the plane. Yeah, and yeah, I would not be surprised. Because if you're going to die, screw that. These freaks are going to go, you know, if you're going to die, you're not going to let them take out that more people, you know? I, 
You know, that, that situation, uh, that scenario, although I know all we're doing is speculating here, mm -hmm. uh, which is something that we really don't like the networks to do, but I, I wouldn't doubt that that's the situation. If you, you wonder why the planes went down, you know, they, they, they probably had targets that, that were intended. Let's go to uh, Chris in uh, D.C. on WJFK. Hi, you're with Don and Mike. Hello, Chris. Uh, I'm not in D.C. I'm in New York, actually. Oh, okay. Sorry about that, Chris. I'm on uh, 84. I go to school in Sussex County, New Jersey, and they sent all us home, too. Okay. Mm -hmm. All the way out there. And the thing about Tom Clancy, the thing about that is he wrote a book about terrorist planes uh, going into the Capitol and the Pentagon. Yeah, I, I, I understand that, but it's like... Uh, you have the worst disaster in 50 years, and the best you can do is to call Dr. Yeah, Seuss. Totally the only thing I would say... Another thing, I heard about that other plane in Washington. Yeah. I heard on uh, another radio station where they had ABC on that um, there are F-16s out to seek and destroy that plane. Right. Yep, Buzz had and that also. The only thing I was going to tell about uh, Tom Clancy is because of the basic, uh, you know, we, we, he does have, uh, you know, it, I don't like speculation, and that's probably all it was, and uh, because he has... A knowledge, a working knowledge of the way that uh, modern terrorism is being fought because he has researched it. That's probably why they were talking to him. Do I think it's a good idea? No. I think right now they ought to be getting facts out and trying to report the facts and get information to people, especially here in New York City, as far as where people can go to uh, to help out, to donate blood, and uh, you know to do what they can. I'll go to uh, Paul now in New York. Paul, hi. You're on with Don and Mike on NEW and JFK. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um... You said something about you didn't know if you could go over the 59th Street Bridge. Yeah, we did. We, we don't know. Yeah, um, somebody on the street asked somebody if they could, and uh, somebody else answered them, and they said that they could. Now, can you drive over it or just walk over it? Just walk over it. Okay. There, there really is no cause going around. And I just wanted to say that uh, <clears throat> the, the terrorists tell us exactly where they want us. Seriously. They, they, want, us, they, they want us to attack back. So we should give them, if President Bush is listening to this, we should give them a taste of their own medicine. Well, you know, I, I think we've discussed this. I think most Americans feel the same way. If we can find out definitively right. who's behind this, but I, you know, and you can bet we will retaliate. And I will tell you, with the, we, you know, we've, we've had that before. Don't do it with nuclear warheads, though. Where we've tried to find people. The more important factor is, I think, at this stage of the game, what's going to come out of this is how... In the name of God, do we protect ourselves in this country? How do we secure our borders? And, I, I mean, you know, you, you joke about the wall. But Build I'll a wall. You, I'll tell you right now, it's just amazing how we live in such an open society. And, and that's why I think something like this can happen. And what's going to come out of this is we're going to have to develop a, a new game plan as far as how to protect our citizens. Bill in New Jersey. Hi, you're on with Don and Mike on NEW and JFK. Hello. Hi, Don. Yeah, hi. How you doing today? We're doing great, thanks. Great. Uh, I was actually in Newark when it happened. Uh, I go to law school down there. I saw the in, pretty much the entire thing. It, it sticks to my stomach. Uh, what I can tell you is this. Uh, I have an uncle that works in the Port Authority uh, for New York and New Jersey. He works at Newark Airport. Yeah. Um, and at the point that uh, the second plane crash happened, all of the bottom levels of the second trade tower were evacuated within about 10 to 15 minutes, he said, Good. which means that uh, the loss of life in there hopefully has been you know, reduced. Good. Well, that, that, that is maybe some good news. Yeah. I like um, to hear he that. said Thank that you. at this point, three or four days before the airport's open again. All right. Yeah, All right. at the very least. Uh, our phone number where you can reach us is 212-757-1027. It's the Don and Mike Show today, uh, WNEW 1027 New York City and 106.7 WJFK FM Washington, D.C. Buzz, we are going to do a, a, a break here. Do you have anything before the break? Nothing new to report. We'll keep gathering information. All right, then we are going to uh, take a brief break, and we will be right back. This is the Don and Mike Show. Howard Stern Morning, Don and Mike, Midday, Sophie and Anthony, Afternoons, the Sports Junkies at Night, and the Washington Redskins, Washington Superstation, 106.7 WJFK. Where are you? Are you tired of all the hidden charges that can add up so fast? Do you wish you had a way to control or eliminate the fees you have to pay, especially for basic things like banking? We are Wachovia, and we are here to tell you about a checking account that can actually free you from fees. Wachovia Access Now Checking. It requires no minimum balance and includes a free Wachovia check card, 
Free Wachovia ATM use automated telephone and online banking at no extra charge. And speaking of free, for a limited time, when you open Access Now Checking, you'll get your first box of Wachovia exclusive style checks free. Wachovia Access Now Checking. Freedom from fees. Visit a branch near you or call 1-800-WACOVIA for more information. Wachovia. Let's get started. Wachovia Bank is a member of FDIC, account subject to approval. Wachovia charges a fee for the use of non-Wachovia ATMs. Running a trencher is a tough job. You have to know the machine, where each line needs to be installed, and how deep it needs to be placed. And that's the easy part. The hard part is knowing where utility lines already are and how to work around them. Thankfully, you can leave that to Miss Utility. Miss Utility notifies all member utilities involved in your project to come mark their lines. Just follow their guidelines and you won't have to worry about breaking the law, being fined, disrupting service to neighborhoods or even entire communities, or risking injury to yourself and those around you. So dig with care, Virginia. That means call before you dig at 1-800-257-7777. Allow required time for marking, respect the marks, and excavate carefully. Check us out on the web at MissUtilityOfVirginia.com. And please, always dig with care. It's the law. This message is brought to you by the Virginia State Corporation Commission. International Motor Saab in Falls Church, Virginia is renovating its showroom and everything is coming down. Walls are coming down, ceilings are coming down, and the prices and interest rates are coming down. Interest rates are coming down as low as 0% APR on remaining 2001 93s and the acclaimed 95 sedans and wagons, which have received the Consumer Digest Best Buy and the Euro NCAP 5-star safety rating. Leases are coming down as low as $299 per month on a brand new 2001 Saab 93 Turbo for 36 months. The only thing left to come down is you to International Motor Saab in Falls Church, Virginia. Just call 703-534-7222. That's 703-534-SAB. 0% APR cannot be combined with other Saab offers and excludes 93 Viggen. Lease based on MSRP of 29170 12,000 miles per year for 36 months. Cap cost reduction of 1999 and bank fee of 595 due at lease inception. Rate included. Tax tags additional. Offer ends 930-2001. In the time it takes to watch Half a Dumb Sitcom, you could be doing something valuable, reducing your car insurance rate. Call 1-800-947-AUTO. Welcome. What is it you seek? A wise and powerful sage. Yeah. I seek the answer to... Hey, wait a minute. You're a greyhound dog. You were expecting what, a llama? Well, I... He's on leave. Besides, the answer you seek is a Greyhound Super Friendly Fare. With it, you will achieve freedom to travel to thousands of places for as low as $49 when you plan ahead. You, like, see all this? I see all things in black and white. Super Friendly Fares from $49. Call, walk in, or log on for details. Conditions apply. If you think you've seen some wild rock and roll stories on VH1, you ain't seen nothing yet. Producing Strange Frequency. Every week, different stories, different stars, different victims. Hosted by Roger Daltrey. Who are you? VH1 Strange Frequency. Rock and Roll's Twilight Zone. Every Saturday night at 10, 9 Central. I think he's dead now. Only on VH1. Another My VH1 Primetime Weekend premiere. Infinity Broadcasting WJFK FM Manassas, Washington, D.C. Partnered with GMR, a Sun Microsystems I4 systems provider of storage solutions. At GEICO Direct, our mission is clear. Like a butcher sharpening up his meat cleaver, our job is to cut the fat. Not pork loins or prime ribs, mind you, but car insurance bills. You could save 15% or more with some of the leanest rates possible. And we throw in a few extras, too. Like complete 24-hour service. Call 1-800-947-AUTO. 1-800-947-AUTO. It's the filet mignon of car insurance at a hamburger price. GEICO Direct, the sensible alternative. Let's dress it. One minute your schedule is packed, the next it's looser than cream corn. What's a time crunched globetrotter to do? Well, simmer down now. Just hightail it to Priceline.com, name your own price, or airfare to the destination of your dreams, and usually get your answer in 15 minutes or less. Priceline.com. Relieve stress on contact. Save up to 40% or more on airline tickets. Priceline.com. Hi, it's Jamie Lee Curtis for Voice Dream. It seems your wireless company thinks you're nocturnal. Why else would they restrict your calls during the day and give you way too many minutes to use at night? Seriously, you're not a bat. 
You don't sleep upside down during the day. So why do most wireless calling plans give you a ton of minutes you can use at night, but not enough time to talk during the day? With Voice Dreams Get More Plan, you get the most minutes that are truly useful. They're called Whenever Minutes, and they're good 24-7. Hey, that'll let me talk whenever I want, which is pretty often. I like the sound of that. For a limited time, we'll give you 600 nationwide Whenever Minutes, plus 2,000 weekend minutes for $39.99. I think it might be time to reconsider your calling plan. You need to get yourself some Whenever Minutes, so you can talk about whatever you want, whenever you want. Need more information? Go to VoiceStream.com or call 1-888-STREAMS. Some restrictions and limitations apply. See printed materials in VoiceStream stores for complete details. Infinity Broadcasting, WJFK FM, Manassas, Washington, D.C. 106.7 WJFK. Tell me Ronald Moe and Michael Mera, WJFK. This is the Don and Mike Show. I was kind of a CF. Well, you know, we're, we're doing the very best we can. We uh, we took a short break for everybody to get their act together and uh, bathroom breaks, phone calls, as best as anybody can make a phone call on I this think, uh, day of tragedy. I think for a brief uh, moment there, you might have been hearing commercials from Washington and New York, both. Both on the air at the same time. We apologize uh, for that, and we also apologize for uh, taking a break in the first place, but we did have to do that. And, uh, you know, we, we really are reacting to these uh, developing stories. And uh, right now, uh, we, do you have anything that's uh, the latest, Buzz? No, I'm, I'm waiting to hear the latest on that D.C. plane. I can tell you right now, here in New York City, doctors and nurses uh, are being asked to report to the hospitals in Jersey City, New Jersey. Uh, many of the victims are being taken across the river to uh, Jersey City. So all doctors and, city, uh, doctors and nurses who work in Jersey City are being asked to report right now. I do know that Mayor Giuliani will be addressing uh, New York in a moment. We will carry live coverage of that. I'm, uh, I, you may have already missed it. I just heard some taped comments from the mayor in which he said he does not know of any casualty figures yet, but that he expects it to be a horrendous number of casualties. Uh, Craig came in and said he thought he was going to make a giant press uh, He may be speaking conference. again. The tape I may have heard, uh, the tape that I did hear, may have been to an individual radio station. Gotcha. Uh, the Don and Mike Show, we're uh, in New York today at WNEW, also simulcast uh, on WJFK. This is the only number to call us on today, 212-757-1027. But you just said, oh, what? We just heard the report of a possible explosion at or near the U.S. Supreme Court. Uh, there was a report of a dull thud in the, in the area and uh, the sense that there has been an explosion there. So I'll be checking on that. Military planes are still combing across the capital area of Washington, D.C. And we still don't know the status of that uh, police supposedly plane? hijacked police plane. All right. And while all of this is going on, uh, for the people uh, in New York... Uh, for the for the most part, if you're in the city, if you're in the city, I know that uh, many people are asking you to donate blood. Yeah, and and you can't get out. I mean, you right. you can take the Brooklyn Bridge, the 59th Street Bridge, but you got to walk. Right. Buzz had a message for doctors. I remember that before. That uh, plastic surgeons, uh, you you had that on the plastic upper left. Plastic surgeons are needed at St. Vincent's. Many uh, victims have been taken to St. Vincent's Hospital on 11th Street, and they desperately at that location need plastic surgeons and burn specialists. You just mentioned bridges, and let me tell you that the uh, Tanzee Bridge is open. Most New York City bridges into the Tappan Queens. Is that the Tappan 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 yes. Uh, most New York City uh, bridges into Queens are now open, uh, except in Nassau County, they're they're stopping traffic headed into Queens from that direction for whatever reason. Uh, the 59th Street Bridge, uh, the Williamsburg Bridge, and the Brooklyn Bridge all closed, except to foot traffic as the exodus out of the city continues. Uh, back in D.C., all of the federal buildings, or most of them, uh, most of them have been right. evacuated. The uh, the Beltway is at a standstill. I imagine. Lots of parents in D.C. are going through what, what you heard me go through with uh, a moment ago on the air and then off the air where my son wants wants to leave school. They won't let him leave without, without the parents' permission. Without right. parents' permission. And I'm in a weird Which is a good thing to do. I'm in a weird position because I, I'm on the radio right now and my right. wife was 
coming up this morning, taking the train to New York. She got to Newark, and, and I finally got her on her cell and said, I'm you glad know, you were able to do that. Go back home. That's great that you were able to do that. So, yeah, she's on her way back to, to take care of him. So, I, I mean, I empathize with the parents who are now trying to get a hold of their kids. Uh, cell phones are down. We've not had a problem with the Internet. Uh, for the most part here in Manhattan. Also, telephones are down throughout New York. Right. You can call us at 212-757-1027. And let's go to uh, Mark, uh, Buzz, unless you had something. I just wanted to add that we've just heard a report that in the Middle East, uh, Palestinians are firing their guns into the air and waving flags yeah. in celebration of what has happened. Here, here. I got uh, Glory in New York, because we'll tell you the same thing. Glory. Hi. Hi. I'm actually online with my girlfriend, Siamata, and she can't figure out what station she's listening to, but they're saying that the, Palesti that the Palestinians, I can't even talk, I'm so shaken up, right. are That's celebrating right. in the street, chanting, God is great, and handing out candy. Oh, eight, it's 87.7 there in Florida. Bastards. Thank can you, you believe it? Yes, yeah, yeah, sad to say I can believe it. Um, doesn't, doesn't, of course, mean that they're responsible, but uh, they certainly are celebrating. Yeah. All right, let's go to uh, Vernon in Staten Island. Uh, this guy saw the plane. Of course, I think we all saw the plane. But uh, Vernon, what else did you see? Vernon, Staten How Island. Hi, oh, you're on the air. Yeah, I was at the order yard working. I saw this plane come by, right? Yeah. And I said to myself, I know this plane ain't going to hit that second building. Mm -hmm. And as it was going, the helicopter was next to the plane. And as the plane impacted into the second building, the helicopter kept going. Well, now, keep in mind, at the time that the second plane hit the World Trade Center, mm -hmm. you had Channel 7, Channel 2, mm -hmm. Channel... It wasn't a news helicopter. Channel, it wasn't a news helicopter. No, it wasn't. Well, it was like it was escorting to make sure, it, you know, it hit. Well, I, I didn't see that on any of my coverage, Vern, but, but, but that's why might have been a police helicopter. Nobody, that's why I called Could have been a police uh, helicopter that was right. tracking All right, thank you. Let's go to Al. Al, you're on with Don and Mike on NEW and JFK. Hello. Hey, how you doing? Hi, good, good morning. Hey, I'm doing pretty good. I'm just a little shaken up about the situation. Family in New York and everything. Right. Um, my main focus, though, is, you know, he's done most of the damage he can do, but my fear is what else he has under his sleeve, because um, everybody knows you don't bring your big guns out for the fight, and... He's done this. My fear is, yeah, he admitted it. He's going to go out. He's going to do what he has to do. My fear is what else is, you know, the worst is yet to come, you know. All right, now, well, I first, I, I want to ask, when you say who, that's a rhetorical who, right? That we don't really know who the who is. And, and, exactly. And second, I would say, uh, God damn, I think the fact that the World Trade Center has been virtually taken down to the ground mm -hmm. and that the Pentagon has been attacked and that all these planes have been hijacked, I think this guy, who, again, we're just using this guy, mm -hmm. He's shooting his load. I mean, this is... You never know. And then that's what I'm afraid of. God, I, I would pray that it, that it couldn't get any worse than this. And that's the thing about it. You know, my fear is, you know, everything going on, chemical warfare, everything right. going on you nowadays. What else does this, this guy have to sleeve? For him to do what he did, to take a piece of American history and just ruin it, you know, that's my phobia, you know? Right. No, we're with you. And I, you know, you share that with a lot of my, uh, other Americans, uh, especially people here in New York. Yeah. Gotcha, Al. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate it. You have a good day and be safe. Thank you. We're okay. trying. Let's go to uh, Amy in the Bronx. Amy, you're on with uh, Don and Mike. Hello. Hi. Um, I just want to say I live all the way in the Bronx, and I can see clouds of smoke. Yeah. Well, you know, not surprising. We had a guy calling from Connecticut. You see uh, smoke all the way around the tri-state area. Really? Yeah, that's, it's everywhere, Harry. Yeah. That's disgusting. Yeah. It is. It, it sucks. Buzz, do you have something? Or are you just, just a couple of transportation notes for people in New York City who are trying to get to their loved ones or are trying to get out of the mess. All subway uh, service and all path trains have been suspended. The outbound Long Island Railroad has just limited service at this point, and Metro North a rail service is suspended as well. Let's go to a Mark from uh, D.C. It's been, been a while since we took a call from uh, there. Mark, how are you on with Don and Mike? Hello. Yeah, how's it going? Okay. Um, first of all, I'm in a park in the middle of a field about a mile from the White House, a mile and a half from the Supreme Court, no big bangs. I can hear the probably F-16s in the air occasionally, mm -hmm. um, but you can't see anything. Um, but I want to make two comments Sure. regarding what you said earlier. Uh, one, I'm very happy the president we have in office. Um, part of that's due to the fact that, what is it now, eight years ago, we had another president in office 
Yeah, you know what? Years, I'm going to stop you because yeah. this is not yeah. the day I, for I mean, a listen, political agenda. I, I, was just, I was just asking a rhetorical question about if you, if you feel confident. Don's comment had nothing exactly, to do with politics. I, mean. you know I, I don't want to make this the Rush Limbo this show This is here. not a day nope, for that. Not. My friend, let me tell you something. It is not a day for a political agenda. Diane, we well, have to pull together today. What Mike said is true. It doesn't matter if it's Clinton or it's Bush. It you doesn't got, matter. you got to get behind whichever dope is the president. Right. And and that's exactly what I'm saying. And I'm not no, it's not exactly a supporter, but it makes me happy. We've had eight years. Oh come on, get okay. out of here! Right. Call, you know very clear. Call wow. Sean Hannity with that. He just started a new show. He'll appreciate it. Yeah, talk about lack of perspective. Hello, God. Rich. You're on the air with Don and Mike on N E W J F K. This is Rich from East Meadow. Yeah, what I want to say is Channel Five News. We just went into DefCon Five. Well, now, if Channel 5 reported it, can we believe that? Isn't that the Fox station? Right. Yes, that is. And could, that, 5. could that just be a tie-in because they're Fox 5? Because you want to say we moved to DEFCON 5? You never know. <laughs> and and how, would, how would Channel 5, though, if we moved to DEFCON 5? I mean, right? Dude? I have no idea. <laughs> Isn't that like a secret inside the Unless Pentagon? Unless they have the source of the Pentagon, I don't see how. It's amazing. All right. Uh, Los Angeles International Airport is also closed. Mm-hmm. Every airport in, in America right. All of them. is closed. Uh, let's go to Ale- Alex in uh, Virginia. Hi, you're on with uh, Don and Mike. Yeah, this is Alex calling from Arlington. Yeah, hi, Alex. How you doing? Uh, listen, I was a defense, uh, I, I do defense contracting out of the Pentagon. I was actually there at about uh, 9.10. Um, I was actually pulling into the security guard gate, and I actually heard the, uh, it was it was, um, it was unbelievable. I'm still, like, shaking up. Oh, uh, just, it was crazy. I mean, this is like, I don't know, I don't even want to get into, you know, this whole thing, but you guys are right. Everyone should put their American flags out today. I mean, our nation needs to come that. together. That makes and, you feel better. I think you should do that. I, I mean, no, I'm serious. I no, I'm, I'm serious too. I agree together. with you. I do. Agree. I really do agree with you. I think you know, uh, it, you deal with a situation like this, and you do what you can to get through it. And if that helps, I, I'm all for it. I mean, I was right there, and it's it's just, it's it's unbelievable. I mean, I just I'm still shaking up. I, I just hear you guys on the on the radio. I'm, I'm I'm still stuck in traffic here. I mean, I'm coming up. I live out in McLean, Virginia, and I'm just this is just uh, I've never experienced anything like this. And I know other countries, you know, deal with this on a day to day basis as far as explosions and things like this. And it's ridiculous that the amount of money that our government has and the amount of money that our military has that, you know, we can allow people internally to, to do things like this. I mean, this is just unbelievable. All right. Thank you. Thank you for the call. Yeah, no problem. And, you know, that is a, that is a good point that guy makes that uh, recently, I don't know, where, where was it? Palestine, where they had the, the bombings? Yeah, they've had yes. so many uh, uh, bombings. So the relationship between Israel and, and it Palestine. And uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the pizza place that said all right. the malls, it was a Saro, is that the name of the Sparrow. place? Sparrow, right. Yeah. You know, you see that, and it doesn't happen here, and you right. see that. and you, I re- you feel detached. I remember that. watching it, and my only connection with it was, right. hey, that's a pizza place sure. that I could go to in the mall. Hey, isn't that, like, when you you go to a foreign country and you see a McDonald's. Right. The world is a smaller place, and I think we've uh, we've learned that today. Yeah, let's go to uh, Martin. Uh, hi, Martin. You're on with uh, Don and Mike uh, on uh, WNEW. I just read a book on basically, you know, the jihad and the holy wars, and everything comes down to, to significant numbers. And today is is nine eleven, nine one one. Right, we've heard that. Oh, you've heard that? Yeah. And 2011, so I wasn't sure if you guys heard that yet or not, but I just wanted to bring your attention. That, that is how the jihad work, and, and that is basically a holy war, and they picked today for that reason. Mm-hmm. All right, thank you. Uh, the second uh, United flight that was uh, that was down. They were, the, the segment that went down, right? Yeah, I, they just had something on. I just saw it on TV. It was uh, from San Francisco to somewhere. That was the uh, supposed destination. Of the they were concerned about another flight. Do we have any information on that? There's no update on that flight uh, that United was concerned about. Let me see what I can find out. Is the latest that would be flight 175 from Boston to Los Angeles, the United Airlines flight. All right, let's go to uh, Tom in DC. Tom. Hi, you're on with Don and Mike. Hello. Don and Mike, so. Hi. Hey, loyal listener here. I'm in D.C. I work for the World Bank and the IMF. Right. And I'm just getting out of town back to my home. Uh, what I have to report from D.C. is that uh, it, the case is pretty similar to New York City. The only thing that runs mostly is the metro. Besides uh, three stations being closed in the national airport area, everything else is uh, running. Well, thanks for the update. Appreciate and it. That's the only way to get out of town. But. If you want to stick with me for another second, I'm just going to quote Mike here and say why we can all get along. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Although I think Mike stole that from Rodney King, but yes, why can't we all get along? And you know, you're listening to him, and you know, I I, I do hope that uh, you know when we're dealing with this, that 
we focus on the individuals that did this. Not, you know, because in any place, in any country, the vast majority of individuals are not the type of people that would condone or do something like this. Right. You're talking about the work of, of, of evil, unspeakable evil, and, uh, I, you know, I think you have to remember that. You really do. But, but you also have to balance that with the fact that if we're going to see reports that out of the news of, of, a, of a nation of people, even if it's isolated in the city, dancing, Right. Eating candy, celebrating the fact that right. this happened, then that's when you got the the, the moral dilemma. When you're right. thinking, okay, now everybody in the country certainly doesn't feel this way sure. right. if they're responsible. But right. but what about the bastards that are on TV eating Ab candy because they've blown up the World Trade Center? You do have to see, you have to take that into account. All right, let's go uh, go to uh, who am I going to here? I I don't know. Uh, it doesn't say. Hello, Don and Mike, you're on the air. Hello. Hello. Turn your radio down, please. But what about the bastards? Hello? Hi, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Keep your radio down, please. Sure. Uh, well, I'm I'm a dispatcher for a trucking company here next to the Dulles Airport. Right. And um, right now, from what I can see, there's a lot of uh, Army aircrafts flying in and out this area. Uh, Fairfax County has been, um, for the school system, they're letting everybody go out an hour early, but it's like a lot of traffic and a lot of, like, panicking around here as well. Yeah, it's, it's nuts. I was just, uh, during the break, on the phone with my kid, just telling him, just, just leave school now. Mm -hmm. but, because i got to imagine that uh, eventually, I, I mean, voluntarily or not, the Beltway is going to be shut down. Well, as I see yeah. on your screen that United also confirmed the crash of that Flight is... 175. That was from uh, Boston to Los Angeles, and that was the, one of the planes that they were concerned about? Absolutely. And let me add to that, that United doesn't know where the plane went down. They know that there were 56 people on board, but Flight 175 from Boston to Los Angeles is down. We just don't know where. Uh, Buzz, let's Let's go to uh, Jeff. Or did you lose him? We had a guy who was at National Airport who said they just brought a plane in. That the that the uh, the fighters just brought a plane down yes. to the ground. Now again, that's unsubstantiated. That right. was a guy who was on the telephone. Mm -hmm. Don't know uh, if, if it's true or not. Well, if it is true, we should be able to get that information as soon as possible. Yes. Hello, Don and Mike show. You're on uh, WNEW WJFK. Hello. Hi. Um, <laughs> Uh, your cell phone's breaking up, ma'am. I'm sorry. Um, can you hear me at all? Yeah, uh, go ahead. You know what? Now I see Kennedy Space Center has been shut down. Mm -hmm. I, I said this, and not kidding me before, I wouldn't be surprised if they closed down Disney World. Right, tourist locations. Yeah. Gathering places. Disneyland, you know, MGM mm -hmm. Grand, all that stuff. Yeah, hi, go ahead. Let's see if we can hear you. Um, I just heard reports that maybe the water they thought had been contaminated. I wonder if you heard anything about that. The we have not, we have, we have we not heard that, honey. No, that's okay, I just, I, I, it might have been a rumor, I thought, but we, I thought I'd ask you. We had a caller who mentioned it. Uh, we mentioned that the Centers for Disease Control had been looking into the possibility of uh, some kind of biological warfare, but there have been no reports that any of that has happened. Uh, if I can jump in here, Don, with the, 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 we were talking about the blood donations earlier. Uh, in Hudson Valley and the Bronx, uh, to find out where you can donate blood, call 914-339-5525. In Long Island, on Queens, 516-478-5012. Uh, In Manhattan, 212-468-2030. In Brooklyn and on Staten Island, 212-468-2030. 2186 in New Jersey 732-220-7004 and the uh, number for the Red Cross anytime 877 Red Cross. We'll repeat those numbers later if you need them. All right, let's go to uh, Brian from uh, DC. Brian, you're on with Don and Mike, NEW and JFK. Hello. Hey, Don and Mike, how are you doing today? All right, my friend. Well, listen, I work in a mall right across here from Pentagon City, and we've evacuated the mall as well. Right. Uh, we the whole building shook when we felt it. It was a Terrible tremor, but uh, all the highways are closed in this area. 395 is closed northbound. Uh, it's impossible to get on 395 south or anywhere near Washington and uh, Reagan National Airport. So it's a terrible tragedy in the U.S. today. I got to say that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Let's that go. To, uh, we do agree. I'll go to uh, Sharon. Hi, you're on with Don and Mike. Hold on a second. Let me see. Southern part of Manhattan. Okay. Got Mayor Giuliani right now. As many lives as possible. We've been in communication with Governor Pataki, who's uh, listening to Mayor Giuliani. We've gotten the National Guard ready, and they're going to come in and relieve us a little bit later in the day. And we've spoken to the White House, and the urban search and rescue teams will come here also to assist us. But right now, it's the New York City police and fire EMS that are down there trying to evacuate as many people as we possibly can. And we've asked everyone to leave lower Manhattan if they can on their own so that it relieves our efforts. 
and this will be going on all day. It's a horrible, horrible uh, tragedy. It is that. Uh, Mr. Mayor, can you tell me, uh, is it a... Are, are people panicking down there? Or no, people... Leaving? I, I, I was... Uh, and I, I was there right under the... Right under... Right in, the, in a building that got hit by the, by the debris when the first tower collapsed. So I had to evacuate with, with people. And we were trapped in the building for a while. And we, we finally were able to get out. And uh, we all walked to uh, we all walk north. And people, everything that I observed, even though it was hundreds, maybe in some cases thousands of people that were walking out of the street, they were orderly, they were calm. They handled themselves really and, and probably better than anybody had any right to expect. And, Mr. Mayor, we were told one of the problems, and Lord knows there are hundreds of problems, one of the problems was that a number, a large number of police, fire, EMS personnel have also been injured in this. Can you shed any light on that? I, 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 don't, even, I don't even want to contemplate what the number will be. But when the building collapsed, we had a lot of our police officers and firefighters in the building. And, I'm, and I know many of them because I saw some of them go in because I was there and I'm, I'm praying for them. I just hope they're able to get out. I think we all are. The losses to our police department and fire department Sir, do you, are going to be severe. Do you believe that it was there another set of explosions that caused the buildings to collapse or was it the structural damage caused by the plane? I don't, I don't know. I, uh, I, um, I, I, I saw that. that the first collapse and heard the second because I was in a building when the second took place. I think it was structural, but I cannot be sure. And can you tell us how many hospitals in the city and perhaps outside the city oh. too? Uh, All of them. Right now, right now, at the last, that last count, we were utilizing over 50. I think it'll be over 100 by the by the. And that was a, that, that was as of a half hour ago. And All right, that is uh, New York Mayor Rudy Giuliani. Let's go to uh, Jeff, who is uh, at National Airport. Now, Jeff, you're on with Don and Mike. Hello. Jeff. Oh, what am I doing? Hold on a second. Hold on. Which one, which one do you want me to take? The one that says San Antonio is on fire or the guy at National Airport? Okay, Jeff. Don and Mike. Yeah, you're on the air. Hi. Is it Jeff at National, Air, at National Airport. Yes. Hi, go was, ahead. I'm sitting on Route 1 going south, yeah. and there was, it looked like a Learjet. I'm not sure what kind of was, but it was coming from the south into the airport. Had two fighter jets, one in front and one behind of it, that we kind of took it right down to the ground, and then you couldn't see anything we else. Don't a, don't uh, we don't have a confirmation yet whether that's the uh, DC police no. plane that had been yeah, reported hijacked before. We don't know. All right, thank you very much, uh, Sharon. Hi, uh, Sharon. I'm sorry we uh, started to go to you when we went to Mayor Giuliani there. That's all right. I'm so yeah. I can't believe this, man. I'm like stressed out. I can't believe it. Yeah, it's 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 awful. There's no stress doubt. Really sick, man, stress out mean, would be the uh, word that would apply to everybody in this room and everybody in the city of New York and Washington. I can't believe that the mayor was in one of the buildings, much less, man. Yeah, the mayor was yeah. in there. Yeah, right. Oh my God, have mercy! What is the world coming to, man? I don't what know, honey. What is it honey. coming to? I don't know. I don't understand it. Gotcha. Th th Sharon, hold on. Let me check and see if uh, Mayor Giuliani's still speaking. Hold on. All right. East and then north, yeah. which is essentially the way I, I uh, walked out. I walked, I was right below the World Trade Center when it collapsed, and then we walked up to Greenwich Village. People should walk out of Lower Manhattan, get above Canal Street, uh, for safety reasons, but for a second reason. We need people out of there so we can get thousands of ambulances in and out over the course of the next couple of hours. And the fewer people we have there, the more lives we're going to be able to save. Mr. Mayor, are the subways operating? The subways are operating outside of Manhattan. Outside, subway, of Manhattan. outside of Manhattan, the subways are op are operating. A couple of delays here and there, but in all five, uh, the other four boroughs, the subways are operating. In Manhattan, there are significant delays. We thought we had the Lexington Avenue open, but it is not. I'm just checking right now. The Lexington Avenue is is not is not open. The A train is working, and uh, people will just have to just have to you know test and see. The best thing to do right now is to walk. The safest and best thing to do is to walk to your destination. Where schools, 
have remained open. Now we've worked with the, uh, the chancellor to try to make certain that the schools will remain open for as long as they have to to help uh, parents with uh, with the kids that are that, that would be coming home, you know, starting at around one or two o'clock. All right, that's uh, Mayor Giuliani, and again, his message in essence is uh, to be calm and get out of uh, Lower Manhattan. Evacuate Lower Manhattan. Buzz. He was talking about walking out of Manhattan. Uh, there are some buses running, believe it or not, in Manhattan above Houston Street. Buses are operating in each of the four remaining boroughs, but are experiencing, of course, traffic backups in many locations. And on the governor's direction, and no fares are being collected in an effort to try to help get people out. And for those uh, many, many, many people who, who had people or knew people in the World Trade Center buildings where there were thousands of casualties today, uh, Morgan Stanley, one of the financial firms located there, has set up a, a hotline for uh, finding out uh, about the status of family and employees. And that Morgan Stanley hotline uh, for people in the World Trade Center, 888-883-4394. That's 888-883-4394. You're listening to the uh, Don and Mike Show on WNEW New York, WJFK, Washington, D.C. I don't know how many of our network stations have... Uh, Joined us. Obviously, we're not doing our regular show. We're here in New York where the World Trade Center was uh, hit today with uh, two terrorist planes. Uh, Washington, D.C., the Pentagon, uh, a plane ran into the Pentagon. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the mall's on fire. There have been various uh, plane hijackings. Planes have been crashing. Uh, we've got a guy here now who, uh, unconfirmed, is going to say, what's he going to say, that San Antonio's on fire? Chris, how do you know San Antonio? Could that be uh, where the plane went down? Well, yeah. I have a uh, stepdaughter who lives down there, and okay. on their local news channel down there, um, they have a hemisphere tower, which is similar to a space needle in Seattle. It's not as high. Right. And there was a bomb that blew up there, and that's on fire. And also they have a uh, federal financial building that's on fire. And she said all the Air Force bases, Lackland, Randolph, and uh, there's one other base there that I'm not sure of. There's a lot of activity going on down there. All right. All right. Thank well, you. We'll, we'll see, see if we can get a confirmation on that. If that's true, that's where it starts to get... Mm -hmm. Harry, I, I mean, right. if it's just New York and D.C., that's awful. But now, don't you think even now that we've been on the air a couple of hours, as bad as it is, we've kind of adjusted to the fact that this is the crisis, that it's yeah, New York I haven't. and it's D.C.? <laughs> no, no, no. I, no, I, I mean, I, I feel really what that one caller said, and I feel this, too, and uh, you had mentioned it before. You know, my question that's right in the front of my mind, is this over right now? Is this over? Obviously, uh, you know, if this is true, what happened in San Antonio? That's what I'm it, saying. It's not over yet. If it, if it, if it continues to San Antonio, then where in America right now can you be safe? Exactly. Is there anywhere to be safe? You mentioned earlier they should close Disney World. In fact, they have in Orlando, Florida. Disney World is closed. Uh, and also, uh, again, addressing something you mentioned, uh, the Immigration and Naturalization Service has put U.S. borders with Mexico and Canada on the highest state of alert. G, do you think? Okay, let's go to... Uh... Don't got a name here. Just uh, a line on hold. Don and Mike show. Hi, you're on the air. Hey, what's up, Don and Mike? Hi. Buddy of mine, thank God, missed work today. He finally got in contact with one of the guys at his building. He said right before the building collapsed, people were just diving out the windows. Yes. Yeah, we heard that. That that is an awful, That's an awful right. thought. Unspeakable. My older brother from Anchorage told me that things ain't so hot in Washington either for you guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, no, we're here today. We're in New York today. Oh, thank God. Well, not really. Well, not hey, you know what? I'm so, like, nervous. I know. Don't worry about over it. my words. Don't Just worry about it. My heart and prayers go out to all these families. I mean, it's bad in both places. Yep. Uh, thank you. I want to go to Tommy, speaking of D.C., who uh, is in the evacuation. Virtually everybody in D.C. is being evacuated now. Is that true? Tommy, hi. Yes. Uh, well, all I have to say is that the bridges are, have an outgoing direction, leaving D.C. Uh, the Canal Road, the, the road that follows Potomac across to Maryland, has one direction. The right. police is trying to send people out back to the suburbs. Oh, I got you. So what they're doing, right. Canal Road, which they, which they normally make either inbound or mm -hmm. outbound, right now they probably turn both those lanes outbound to get everybody the hell out of the city. Got gotcha. you. Yeah. All right, thank you, my friend. Thank you. Uh, Buzz, you got anything? There have been a number of pieces of good news. As Mayor Giuliani said, people were not only not panicking, they, they've been helping each other in unbelievable ways. And I'm very pleased to report that the kids were evacuated from that daycare center at the World Trade Center. Ah. So they got out safely. All right, now there's a bit of good news. There you go. Let's go to uh, 
Sharon. Hi, uh, Sharon, you're on with uh, Don and Mike on NEW and JFK. Hi, sweetie. How you doing? I can't believe that this is going on. The mayor was in the building. Is this the same woman that called Sharon, us before? Sharon, I thought I hung up on you, honey. She said the exact same thing she <laughs> Yes, just, she did. That was the same woman. A lot of people in shock. Same thing she just said. I guess I just put her on hold. Right. Uh, Chris, hi, you're on the air. Hey, Don and Mike. Hi, you're on with uh, Don and Mike, NEW and JFK. Hey, I just wanted to say that everyone in New York uh, knows somebody who worked in one of those two towers. Sure. And, uh, you know, it's just, yeah, it's unbelievable to watch them fall like that. And 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 what what freaks me out is, and I think I said this earlier to Mike and to Buzz and to all of you guys listening, is not today or tomorrow, but whenever they come up with the final figures mm -hmm. of how many people in the World Trade Center alone, you know, you heard Rudy were killed. You heard Rudy Giuliani said before. It's uh, you know, it's unbelievable what the the numbers are. I, I don't, you know what? I don't look forward to hearing those. No, numbers. no, and that's what no, I'm saying. I, really I don't either. I, I, you know, I, I, it's, I, I get. I know we're here doing our jobs and we're trying to provide people with information, and and it's nice to hear hear the good news. But the the sick feeling I get in my stomach is knowing that as this continues and as more information comes in. This isn't going to get better. This yeah. is going to get a hell of a lot worse. We're yeah. at the very beginning of this. No, I think you're right. Thank you. Let's go to uh, Bob in uh, Sacramento, California. Bob, hello. You're on with Don and Mike. How are you doing? I'm out here in Sacramento, and uh, just glad when I'm not on the East Coast. You guys are taking the brunt for us. Well, now, listen, I mean, and, and yeah, you, you, you're lucky. Don't get happy. Yeah. Uh, but, oh, yeah, true, true. But, but you uh, never know. We've got a heads up on it. Anyway, hey, don't, don't you think the crew could be involved in that? Uh, they'd have to be somehow, don't you think? Not necessarily. Not in the hijack situation, but anything's possible at this point. You I never know, and that's what, you know, there are going to be investigations on top of investigations to uh, to find out what the deal is this, uh, you know, because there are people that are the, that are breathing right now that probably had something to do with it. I would give, uh, I think for the most part, the, the, the crews and, and the people on the planes, the benefit of the doubt with the with the thought that we had before someone called and said the reason the plane probably crashed outside in the suburban area of Pennsylvania rather than in a city was because the the the, the passengers and and the crew or the pilots yeah 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 right. or the pilots right. revolted against the guy and said you know what sure. you can kill us right. but exactly. you, you can't make us kill right. a bunch of innocent people right. but to override those controls you got to know a lot of uh, technical uh, things about the plane right. to override the controls all you got to do is is get behind the guy and and put a gun in his head that's yeah. how you override the controls and, and say take this plane where I tell you so you never know you never know what uh, what happened in well. it. and that's that's speculation you know something that's something where you probably won't know the answer four planes two airlines it's hard to say. Let's go to uh, Dave in New York. Dave, hi, you're on with Don and Mike. Hi, how's it going? Okay. Um, just, uh, I had to, my wife works uh, for Suffolk County District. Uh, I think I'm breaking up. No, you're doing all right. Okay, uh, she works for Suffolk County District School, and they're calling the kids whose parents worked on Manhattan. They're calling down and talking with them and stuff. Yeah. And uh, it's pretty... Uh, Awful thing. It sure is. Yeah, I, I mean it's 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 bad, and and again, I not my only I I can relate to this. You know, my kid called from right. high school in in Maryland, called to measure dad, are you okay? Yeah. You know, is is mom okay? Mom is coming up to New York today. I can only imagine if you're a kid and your mom or dad worked at the World Trade Center or anywhere near. Bart doesn't have any idea where right. NEW is right. in relation to that. Right. Right. But imagine, and, and you know, and I and I think what this guy's saying is true that the people from the school, and that's another awful thing to do, yeah. to call the kids in and say, listen, we don't know if your mom and dad are okay, but and that's going to happen. It's schools all over uh, the New York area. Yeah, yeah and and it, it's an impact for America, but I mean, the kids themselves, it, you know, they're young, they don't really know about the world. Yeah. And, and, and between between the two towers, on a normal day, now many people have been evacuated, and it's important that we say that, but on a normal day, right. from forty to 70,000 people work in those two buildings. Right. Right. Oh. All right, thank you for the yeah. call. Let's go to uh, Ben from Brooklyn on uh, Don and Mike on NEW and JFK. Hello. Yeah, hi. I'm hi. sorry. Um, I think it's a terrible tragedy. I um, think now America could feel what it's like for other countries that have to deal with this every single day. You're right about that. Yeah, That's... and I think that they'll realize that restraint and stuff like that is just nonsense when you're dealing with terrorists. Cause well, they're just getting concessions all the time, and they feel good about it. They keep on doing it. Well, don't you think, though, I, I, I mean, I don't disagree with anything you just said, and, and I, I think we should have retribution and go after the individuals who did this, but you've got to find out who they are first. You know, and you yeah, say to yourself, I know, I know. You, know but... you say to yourself, how much of this 
is a result of the escalating tensions. When you look over in the Middle East and you see mm -hmm. that there there has been such a, an escalation of the violence and the bombings and the retribution and the revenge, and this happens now when we're in the middle of that. And you have I, to I ask know, your, but, you but, have to ask yourself the question though. Yeah, is that the way? I mean, I think if the, we go and, 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 and we, we, we try to find revenge... I know what you said. Are, are we then asking for it are again? Are we asking for it again? Ten times on top. But, uh, but on the other hand, do you just take it? You, do you, do you, you can't just, do that either, can you? No, but no, you, know you can't. No, but I and think, here's, where I, here's where I really... Let me just say... Hold on, hold on. Sir, let me just say this. What I really think, and I've said it again and again and again, is you get into a situation where we have to be prepared to protect ourselves in a better way than we've done. Mm -hmm. I don't think you fight this kind of enemy. I don't think it's possible. I think it you're, is. You're, it the, is. Way you, the way you fight this is you protect yourself as best you can. Yeah, I don't think that security and the way our borders are, are set up right now, I don't think that, that, that that's going to be the same ever again. Right. That's going to change. Well, let me ask you, because I, I, I feel both sides of this. Now, right. now, let's say, though, that I'm talking to you on the phone. What's your name? Ben. Ben, yeah. All right, Ben, let's say that we find out it's, it's country Spiwak, for mm -hmm. lack of a better country. All right. That it's someone from country Spiwak. Right. Are you advocating that we go in and, and nuke them, that we, that we bomb the crap out no, of them? No, no, I think we stop all funding to all terrorist nations. Every nation that funds a terrorist, you don't say they have a worthy cause. They don't have any worthy causes, all right? You stop all funding. You stop calling them militants and you call them terrorists. What yeah, they you really can are. say that, but then you look at that and you say, well, they're going to get funding from other countries. You know, they're, yeah. they're, it's all right, but at least you don't show support for them. You don't tell okay, them no. that they're that they're poor and they're being occupied, and that's why it's right. You know, for it's them. weird. Do you feel like I right, do? It's, it's just weird to get political on a day like yeah. this. You know what I mean? I agree. It doesn't yeah. matter. It doesn't we matter those yet. people you know that have family in the world. Are you right, Buzz? We don't know who did it. We have no idea. Right now, all signs point to the country Spiwak. Right, as far as I'm concerned. Get them, boys. Hello, Don and Mike show. Hello. Uh, Hello. Hold on. You turn gotta, your radio down. You got to turn your radio down. You want to be on the air. Hello, Don and Mike show. Hello, guys. Uh, now I see uh, on, hold on, on CNN, they do have uh, footage of the United Airlines passenger jet that crashed near Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, they show a rubble in, in a forest area. And that's where, uh, at least the speculation here is that the crew... The crew or uh, the, passengers, the passengers, someone you know, brought that plane down before it could do damage, or perhaps the terrorists themselves might have been at the controls. You never know. I mean, it's impossible to tell. But you've got to think if they're close to Pittsburgh that they were going to aim somewhere in Pittsburgh. Yeah, you never know. Somerset, Pennsylvania, I believe just southeast of Pittsburgh. About United 15 Air miles away. United Airlines Flight 93 headed for from Newark to San Francisco. Gotcha. Hello, uh, you're on the air. Uh, am I on the air, guys? Yeah, you are. Hi. Listen, hi. How you doing? Listen, my prayers go out to uh, all the families involved. I hope I don't find out of any friends who were lost. But I just wanted to say, this, did, this didn't take two months to plan. You can talk about the escalation in the Middle East, but this definitely was a long time in the planning. Yeah. Oh, listen, that's one of the first things that... Uh, that I thought when these things started happening, like right. dominoes falling, I mean, when you've got two planes within 10 minutes knocking out both of the World Trade Centers, right. and 15 minutes later, a plane that, that attacks the Pentagon, right. and then the, the, the thing on the National Mall, and, and then the plane going down to Pittsburgh. No, absolutely, this is, this is somebody who's planned this out oh, absolutely. for months and years. You can't, you can't do something like this at the same time, simultaneously, without having a plan. Gotcha. Uh, Lanny, hi, you're on with Don and Mike. Hello. Don, Mike, I'm dying listening to these little little... People just saying, oh, no, stop the funding. Don't give them any money. Bomb them. Kill them. Make them suffer like we're suffering. I cannot believe people are just saying, oh, no, it's okay. It's not okay. You know, kill this, these people. I tell you, you know, everybody's angry. Everybody's feeling strongly. But i I, I got to reiterate to you that this is not the day to get political about this. This is the day to say prayers for the people that have lost well, lives you know, in the World Trade Center. And I'll say uh, on behalf of Lenny, I agree with what you said. Right. But I say also that, there, you know, I, I, I feel to an extent the same way she does. I mean, sure. you're lashing out. You don't even know who you're really lashing out at. Exactly. Right? That's, and, that's the frustrating and, thing. And you're lashing out in part because you feel the way that you just said. You know, this woman says bomb them, and you say, who? Right, but but, but, at, responsible? but at this point you're not rational. You, right. you're, you're thinking, well, I don't know who, I know. but just find out who, and then bomb, bomb the crap and out. And you know what? And I also ask the question, can we? 
can we find out who? Because obviously the you know this is the second time this has happened, and this time on a on a on a biblically tragic scale. Right. And you know, can we ever find out who did it? And Car- as has already said, three people have taken credit for it. Two groups have taken credit for it. So we may never know. Carmine. Yeah. Carmine. Hi, you're on with Don and Mike on NEW and JFK. Donna Mike, how are you guys doing? Okay. Uh, I was just letting you guys know. Uh, I don't know if you have contact with CNN over at your over at your uh, studio there. I'm watching it right now. Uh, a couple hours ago, when it first started, there were a couple of different PLO groups and Palestinian groups that were claiming uh, claiming responsibility. But somebody came through that was involved. I forget who it was. Said that Osama bin Laden supposedly gave the United States warning three weeks ago that something of this sort was going to happen on American soil. You know, you're not the first person to tell me that. My, my doorman at my, at my building told me that. So that there was a warning. As I, as I was yeah. walking out. Now, now, I don't know if that's true, if that's something that's been perpetuated in the media. Well, uh, from what I understand, after the, after the hit at the Pentagon, this all came to light because there was a couple of people that were involved with national, national security that came up and started talking about how they had heard that supposedly through different sources, and they didn't want to verify, you know, who the sources were as usual. All right, but, but uh, hold on. Let, let's stop for a second and say that this is true, that, that Ben Laden said that this is going to happen. Right. A- unless he gave you a date and a time, unless, unless he said on, on September 11th at oh, 8.45. Yeah, I mean, I mean, there's no way, yeah. How, how are you going to plan against that? Yeah, and they give those, there's no way to plan against it. You, you, you can't. And they make those warnings or threats all the time. All right, let's go to uh, Joel. Joel in uh, Brooklyn. Hi, Joel. You're on with Don and Mike on NEW. Hello. And JFK. Hi. Uh, how are you? How's it going? Okay. Uh, what you guys are saying that we don't know who to go after. I just watched 3,000 people dancing in the streets. They're thrilled that we just lost 50,000 people. I think we know who to go after. All right. Thank you. And you know, listen, I and I understand that. I mean, if you see people not celebrating true. this, you have to understand that. Of course, that's a normal feeling. When we had the the first call and say the Palestinians were right. eating candy bars, throwing candy to exactly. kids that they were happy this happened. Yeah, that's that's a that's a pisser. Right. I mean, that's beyond a pisser. Uh, Anthony, hi. You're on with Don and Mike on NEW and JFK. Hey, how's it going, guys? Okay. Uh, they showed the report that the Palestinians were all celebrating in the streets like a big parade. Right. Over this. Yeah. It's just so tragic. And I just realized, I just remember my, my brother works in the Pentagon with his wife. Mm-hmm. Well, we hope he's okay, man. I hope so, too. My dad can't get a hold of him yet. Yeah, you know, the phones are impossible. Sure. It's very hard to Everybody impossible. Everybody wants to talk about that. Everywhere. Hello. Uh, oops. A yeah, couple, of, couple of updates for you. Uh, first of all, United Airlines has now grounded all of its flights worldwide. And this is, uh, if you stop and think about it, it, it becomes obvious the first time in the history of American aviation that all air traffic has been stopped. It also it. shows you, really, how huge mm-hmm. this yeah, is. The, the yeah. scale of this exactly. and, uh, you know, the scale, uh, the human tragedy of this when all the pieces come together, the, it's, it's going to be The planners of this are getting exactly what they had hoped for. They, they've shut down the world. Uh, D.C. and cl- closed in the District of Columbia, uh, all the above-ground metro trains now, uh, as well as all the federal buildings we mentioned earlier, the museums, the monuments, and all of the embassies along Embassy Row Why would they, uh, as well. Uh, in D.C., why would they close the above-ground metro but not the below-ground metro? I don't know the meaning of that. All I know is uh, what I'm okay. being told all right. Here. Uh, take the uh, southeast southwest freeway to get out of D.C., I'm being told now. Uh, VRE and Mark are shut down in the District of Columbia. Uh, you, you know, you think New York is a mess right now. It's going to be a, a, as big a mess in D.C. today. Absolutely. Getting out of there. We don't want to understate that, although, you know, we're here where the, uh, the incredible tragedy of the World Trade Center towers collapsing has uh, taken place because of a terrorist attack. Let's go uh, to uh, Barbara in the uh, Bronx. Hey, uh, Barbara, hi, you're on with Don and Mike on NEW and JFK. Hi, guys. How are you doing? Hi, we're doing okay. Hi, I just uh, first off want to say I, I really feel bad about what's, you know, what's happening and what's going down. But um, it's kind of crazy over here as well. I work in a, in a clinic in the Bronx. Yeah. And um, we're in a state of emergency ourselves over here. We're on standby for, mm-hmm. like, Lincoln Hospital. Right. So that if anything happens, you know, we're ready for them. Well, our prayers are with you to be strong because obviously you're going to have a long day and a, probably a long couple of days. Well, All right. we, we're having a long day uh, as it is. All right, hang in there, Barbara. Our phone number is uh, 212-757-1027. That is the only phone line that we can get to work. I know it's long distance, but that's the only line you can reach us on Buzz. 
Yes, I was just going to say that uh, you've heard about these underground safe havens for government officials. A number of government officials, including Defense Secretary Donald Rumsfeld, are in those bunkers now. Oh, the caves. Uh, and uh, as, as are uh, many federal lawmakers and uh, New York state lawmakers in Albany as well. My dad, when he was a civil defense engineer, mm -hmm. for a long time had some kind of special clearance, and if something like this ever happened, right. he had one of those passes to get into the cave. And I remember when I was a kid that they would kid that my dad would kid us saying, mm -hmm. if it ever happens, I've got one pass <laughs> right. to get yeah. into the cave, and I'll get in the car and, well, and leave you guys <laughs> back well, here. Anybody that's been up to the Greenbrier in West Virginia would tell you also that uh, you know that's one of those shelters they have for uh, the uh, executive and. Uh, Johnny, do I I want this news conference. Is there a news conference going on right now? Hold on a second. Uh, by video phone from Afghanistan. And I am not hearing, and perhaps you guys are, but I am not hearing him. We should remind our viewers that Afghanistan was one of the sites that was hit three years ago uh, by the United States. Right, this is a news conference. We're not going to be able to understand. No, the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan have, has already explicitly uh, said its uh, standpoint or its position about terrorism. The terrorism tool and war of the Luna, the continuous for Afghanistan, the Urani, the Shkiri, the Abdul Tumur, the Shad. I can't follow that. I'm sorry. Let's go to uh, Dan. Hi, you're on Don and uh, Mike on NEW and JFK. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi, Dan. Hi. Hi. Um, I wanted to address briefly the potential for a, a Arab Muslim backlash on the neighborhood level. Mm -hmm. I'm neither Arab nor Muslim, by the way. Right. But I just spoke to somebody who said that as they were arriving home, they happened to go through a Arab community and, and they saw, you know, the store owners standing out in front of their stores as usual. And even though this person I would consider extremely liberal, said that they themselves could not help but feel a little bit of animosity. I think it's important that particularly New Yorkers at this time yep. don't play into that. Yep. And on the same token, I, I would think that members of the Arab community, who I, I certainly wouldn't blame unilaterally for this, may want to be a little bit low-key yeah. right now. No, I got you. I mean, it's going to be a tough time for anybody who's an Arab American or uh, a Palestinian. Right. I mean, it's going Absolutely. to be... Uh, very tough. Uh, thank you, Dan. To give both sides of things, we were talking earlier about Palestinians firing guns in the air, waving flags, handing out candy to celebrate. A Palestinian leader, Yasser Arafat, for whatever this may or may not be worth, has condemned the attack, saying he has sent his condolences and those of the Palestinian people to Bush and to the American people. Uh, back in uh, D.C., Union Station has now been closed down. Not surprised. Now, that affects your wife, I know, who's on a, a train uh, heading back home. Has she made it home yet? You don't I know that know, yet, I right? Don't know. I don't know because we're here doing the show. Well, your cell phone's safe there. <laughs> you know, there's so many people, and we can relate. Uh, you know, you, you, yeah, you I lost I lost my cell phone. Yes, my cell oh, you phone, lost your cell phone. Yes. My cell phone fell on the tracks. Yeah, right. Doesn't the, seem like that big a deal. No, on the metro no. track at Union Station yesterday. You know, yes, I'm sure. uh, everybody is in the same situation. Certainly here in New York, trying to get in touch with loved ones and find out if everybody's okay. And uh, you know, I I, I just. Uh, I frankly look forward to you know getting the moment to uh, to, to check in. I tried to call uh, you know my sister in Boston and uh, and find out you know if Paul was going to be in the World Trade Center today. My brother-in-law and you know and I couldn't do it. And everybody's in that same uh, situation. But Boston, of course, the source of a couple of the flights involved in the attacks here in New York. Let me repeat then, Mike, uh, for people who had uh, and there were uh, of course uh, potentially tens of thousands of people in the World Trade Center at the time of the attack this morning. Morgan Stanley set up a hotline for information on survivors. It is eight eight eight. 883-4394. And we told you earlier that burn plastic surgeons, uh, burn specialists and plastic surgeons are needed uh, in various locations, not just St. Vincent's on 11th Street. But if you are a doctor who can help, there are a number of locations where you are needed. And the telephone number to find out where and when and how is 212-752-4805. That's 212-752-4805. Buzz, let me uh, break in here. We've been doing a lot of coverage on uh, New York. Let's now cover D.C. Joining us uh, 
is that the gal who used to do traffic on our afternoon show, Vera, abruptly yes. with uh, the latest what is happening with traffic in D.C., Vera. Right now, everybody is certainly leaving town and has been for the past couple of hours. Certainly not the devastation that you guys are seeing in New York, but they've shut down the northbound side of 395. So traffic on 95 northbound jammed out of Newington getting to the Beltway where they have to choose one loop of the Beltway, either head towards the Wilson Bridge or up towards Tyson's Corner. Southbound 395 is open out of the city. I'm looking live from our camera atop the Willard Hotel at uh, Pennsylvania Avenue, 14th Street, virtually, uh, of course, isolated and uh, desolate right now because very little traffic is allowed through here or around the White House. Both these areas around the White House and south of there uh, on K Street, streets that cross headed east, have been jammed as people try to exit the city. Now, they've closed down a stretch of the GW Parkway and certainly all access to the Pentagon and the routes around at 110 and Washington Boulevard remain closed as they continue to find the fire at the Pentagon from the explosion from the crash there. Right now, uh, routes out of northeast and the uh, Beltway certainly in a rush hour mode on the inner loop getting out of Bethesda and into Silver Spring. They've closed down the uh, Rock Creek Parkway and outbound uh, Canal Road, Clara Barton Parkway, made that all outbound traffic just like an afternoon rush hour would be as people leave town right now. All right. Thank you, Vera. You've got it. Buzz, appreciate it. Buzz, I wanted to ask you as far as the Pentagon is concerned, uh, do we have any word on uh, casualties coming out of the Pentagon uh, just yet? Where Was that, a, you know, any word on whether that was, uh, you know, populated, where they had uh, whether they had evacuated that or whether there were a lot of people in there. There's been no word on casualties there, and, of course, we still don't know the numbers from many of the other locations where a tragedy has uh, struck. And, of course, the magnitude of the tragedy at the World Trade Center Towers is so great that uh, I think it'll be quite some time before we can get an accurate assessment of uh, of the loss of life. Let's go to Nikki, who uh, saw this whole thing this morning from Brooklyn. Nikki, hi, you're on NEW with Diane hey, Mike. Mike. How you doing? Hi, we're okay. Yeah, I saw this whole thing coming from the building that I work at in Brooklyn. And it was really, it was surreal. It was like watching it from a movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and as I look now at the live picture on CNN, the, the World Trade Center is still on, on fire. It's still smoking. It's still, I mean, the part that hasn't collapsed. I'm surprised there's anything left to burn. Yeah, John, I'm looking at uh, Buzz's uh, news here where, where it says that the uh, the original plane that hit the World Trade Center was not a 757, but perhaps a 767, which is a much larger aircraft. It was a big black plane. That's it a, like. According to a witness uh, talking to the Associated Press. And, yeah, so uh, every detail, even the earliest ones, are still sketchy. And you're going to have that probably uh, in For days. Yes. Days, absolutely. Yeah. So you saw it, Nikki? Yeah, and the oh, thing yeah, is, yeah. as soon as I saw this thing go down, I don't know if you guys ever heard of any a guy named Benjamin Friedman. No. Uh, he was kind of like, um, he worked with the government in uh, the early 60s, and in 1961 he gave a speech warning that Israel was going to get us into the Third World War. Here it is. Well, you know, we um, are at war. I, I, it is a war. -like we're at war state. with somebody. We are at war. We don't know exactly who we're at yeah. war with. But I, but I think that uh, all of the military bases and uh, you know all of the alert stages that you're getting around the country right now are similar to what they would be in a state of war. Absolutely. Will, hi, you're on with Don and Mike on WJFK and WNEW. Will. Hey, what's up, guys? Hi, guy. They completely suspended the, the train service here. I got cut off at a place called Union Street. Where, where are you from, Will? I'm in Brooklyn. All right, so no train. Well, yeah, obviously no train. Yeah, no trains going either way. Right. So and it, it looked like it was snowing in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. Oh, we all the ashes coming down all the way in Brooklyn. Right. Right. Christ. And the there were no public buses running either. We got a, a one of the private buses stopped for us. Now, Buzz, didn't you ever report that some buses in the city, were, or was it outside of the city where some buses were actually moving? No, some buses in the city are moving. In Manhattan, above Houston Street, buses are operating in each of the four remaining boroughs as well, but they are, of course, experiencing uh, backups, uh, and on the governor's direction, no fares are being collected on the buses that are running. How nice of him. Yeah. And then oh, all, the, all the freight trucks got sent back. They were going all on the Gowanus. Everything was going back. It was all lined with freight trucks. Everything was being sent elsewhere. And it was like, I felt like I was in the movie Die Hard with a Vengeance almost. Yeah, yeah. It very felt much just so. Like right? that. Very much Only so. Only worse. Thank Bigger. you, my friend. Thank you. And, and, and I'm pleased to report thousands of people are donating blood now. They're going to need more, so keep it coming. Uh, you know, if you are in cross. Manhattan, I, I do want to reiterate that, that uh, get out and uh, find out where, uh, is there a phone number or is there any information uh, on where people can donate blood? Because it's extremely important that uh, people that are still here in the city do that. For there are a lot of phone numbers. Let me give just one right now. Give the you, main one, Give some you? others later. That's for the American Red Cross. Call 877-RED-CROSS. That's R-E-D-C-R-O-S-S. -S. 
Don't leave off the last S. It's 877-R-E-D-C-R-O-S-S. What, don't leave off the last F for savings? Right. What's going on? You know, I sure hope they, uh, that they are, they're able to give us maybe some locations as well, because with the phone service being what it is, it's very difficult for people to get through on any phone number. Right. You are listening to the uh, last two stations I'm sure that you ever expected in the world would be covering the stations yep. WNEW-FM New York, WJFK-FM Washington, it's the Don and Mike show. Uh, we are going to, it's a couple minutes after 1 o'clock on the East Coast. Let's take a, uh, a quick break. We'll come back. Buzz will bring us up to date on absolutely everything. Mm-hmm. I think we have, uh, of course, more of your phone calls coming up. Uh, and then we have the, the sound bite of the actual building collapsing and uh, some of uh, Mayor Giuliani's uh, comments to the uh, people of New York. We will be right back. This is the Don and Mike show. Washington's 106.7 WJFK. Howard Stern mornings. Don and Mike middays. Opie and Anthony afternoons. The sports junkies at night and the Washington Redskins. Washington Superstation. 106.7 WJFK. Lady Luck here with some gardening tips. People ask me all the time if there's a trick to growing lucky four-leaf clovers. Well, I could tell you, but then I'd have to turn you into a toad. So just relax and let nature take its course because things just naturally grow fast here in the South. Whether it's four-leaf clovers, kudzu, or lotto south, new from the Virginia Lottery. It grows faster than I can turn a toad into an announcer. I mean, thank you. Top prize chance is one in 14 million. Current jackpot, two million dollars. This message is just 30 seconds long. By the time it's over, a NASCAR pit crew will have changed four tires, refueled, cleaned the windshield, and made any other necessary adjustments with 10 seconds to spare. If you can keep up with that pace, send a non-winning pole position scratcher ticket to the Virginia Lottery's pole position speed stakes. It's your chance to be in the pit in Martinsville on October 14th. No purchase necessary. Must be at least 18 to participate. Odds of winning based on number of entries. Pit crew duties will vary. Time's up. Put down your wrenches. At the top sales event this September, you want get the sound of tubas. You want to hear a bass drum pounding. And there won't be any bells, whistles, dancing ponies, explosions, or hucksters. And none of those. What you will get is a very attractive price for the car that was ranked best mid-luxury car in initial quality by J.D. Power and Associates. It's as simple as that. Lease a 2001 Saab 95 sedan. 36 monthly payments of $399. Total due at lease inception $2,892.90. Tax title insurance and registration extra. Program expires 10-1-2001. For details and J.D. Power & Associates award information, call 1-800-SAAB-USA. Visit your Washington area Saab dealer today. One 15-minute call to GEICO could save you 15% or more. Call 1-800-947-AUTO. That's 1-800-947-AUTO. GEICO Direct, the sensible alternative. The cheers, the fans, it's all kind of crazy. Eat the coffee cake muffin, the fresh new star at Dunkin' Donuts. Let's go beyond its cinnamon streusel topping and follow its rise to the top. One day nobody knows I exist. The next day everyone wants a piece of me. Traditional coffee cake had always struggled for mainstream acceptance. It seemed the only gigs out there were tea parties and bingo games. But then Dunkin' Donuts added the big hearty upstart to their lineup. Soon everywhere. A new generation reached for this legend in the making. Blueberry and corn, they're legends. I'm just happy to be on the same rack as them. Discover the sensation for yourself. Stop into Dunkin' Donuts today for the new coffee cake muffin. Available solo or with our delicious coffee in a value combo. Only at Dunkin' Donuts. Stop by Dunkin' Donuts today and try the delicious new coffee cake muffin and medium coffee value combo at participating U.S. shops only. Buy and hold. Investing online is not a new thing, but investing online for the long term is Buy and Hold is a young company with an old way of doing things BuyandHold.com and a proven investment strategy that's easy unlike other online brokerage services you don't need to have thousands to invest because there's no minimum balance Buy and Hold and their fees are among the lowest Buy and Hold not sure how to begin
weekend, visit the site at www.buyandhold.com. It's a simple process with lots of support and guidance. Buy and hold. Information at its best. Interesting columns like Dish from the Dolans, B&H 101 by best-selling author Chuck Carlson, Wall Street History, and Retirement Perspectives, to name a few. Buy and hold. Named best of the web for online brokers by Forbes and U.S. News and World Report. Buy and hold. Forbes, February 2001, U.S. News, November 2000. Buy and Hold Securities Corporation, member NASD, SIPC. WJFK is all over Washington. Enter to win a 2002 Volkswagen Beetle GLS in the AT&T Wireless Services kickoff promotion. If a Redskins player returns the opening kickoff of the first or third quarter for a touchdown, that week's chosen contestant will win a 2002 Volkswagen Beetle GLS. Each contestant automatically wins an AT&T free-to-go wireless prepaid phone kit, including a 5165 Nokia phone. Mail a postcard with your name, age, address, and daytime Telephone number to AT&T Wireless Services Kickoff, care of WJFK, P.O. Box 3649, Washington, D.C., 20007. You must be 21 years of age or older to enter. Pick up your free copy of the WJFK 2001 Gridiron Guide at your local Safeway Food and Drug. Don't miss out on your chance to get your hands on NFL Weekly Schedule, NFL Trivia, a Daryl Green Bio, and Skin History. You will also find the 106.7 WJFK Redskins Radio Network broadcast schedules and discounts on six-foot subs and party platters from Safeway and much more. The 2001 WJFK Gridiron Guide is available and supplies last in the deli section of Safeway Food and Drugs. Infinity Broadcasting, WJFK FM, Manassas, Washington, D.C. If you lost your job today, how long could you maintain your current lifestyle? A week? A month? A year? Hi, I'm Gordon Williams. As financial editor of Business Week and financial correspondent for ABC News, one absolutely crucial thing I've learned is that the difference between being poor and being rich is a choice. The rich aren't smarter than you, they just know more. They choose to learn how to become rich, and as a result, they get to play by a different set of rules. I've studied the wealthiest people in America for over 30 years. I know how they do it, and I can teach you. With my Wealth Builder system, you'll learn that you don't need a high-paying job to become rich. You need a financial education. Call 1-800-906-6866 and learn what the rich know about money that the poor and middle class don't. For just nine ninety five shipping and handling, you can review my entire Wealth Builder system free for 30 days. Call now, 1-800-906-6866. That's 1-800-906-6866. Howard Stern, Don and Mike, Opie and Anthony, Sports Junkies, and the Washington Redskins, 106.7 WJFK. This is the Don and Mike Show. Oh, Don and Mike Show. I got WKFK in Washington. WNEW in New York. I don't know what other stations have... Uh, have joined us. But if you're uh, joining us along the network, we're bringing you as much information as we can about the uh, tragedy that unfolded earlier this morning. My wife was uh, on the train on her way up to New York. Uh, as it turns out, that when the train got to Newark, this happened. She turned around, got on another train, just found out that Union Station in D.C. is closed. Oh. So now she's rented a car. Good. I'm is, glad she was able to do that. And is uh, driving back home. I just heard from my kid who... Uh, Made it home from school and made it home uh, safely. Have you been able to get through to anybody yet? Uh, no, but I'm actually doing it through the station, To uh, You know, my concern uh, is... Mike, hold on. I don't know if this is live or not. President Bush, hold on. Oh, yeah. Well, obviously, obviously we're having uh, a technical problem. Oh. Let me just... Now, as soon as they get it, we will go live to President Bush. I'm sorry. Were you able to get anybody? Oh, no, anybody? not yet. Uh, you know, my wife, uh, you know, if, if uh, she's gone through her regular routine, is uh, not in an area where, where, where she would be uh, affected. My concern is with my uh, sister's family and, you know, just seeing if uh, my brother-in-law is okay. And, and you know, he, does, he used to work regularly. Uh, that was where his office was in the World Trade Center. He doesn't do that, thank God, anymore. And, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm like everybody else in oh, this city Mike, right here's now. President Bush. Oh. Sorry, this is uh, this is coming to us from the broadcast pool. It's traveling with the president. They keep, they keep screwing wow. it up. I'll, I'll let you know when we get President Bush but on the line. Mike's doing a smart thing, and that's to try to relay messages back and forth through other people. Today, for a lot of people, I that's have, I, you know, thanks for giving me a credit for being smart. I don't have a choice in this city today. Well, you know what? You probably have right now. 
the best way to get a message yeah, to Laura, someone. Laura, I'm fine. On the radio. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, and that, that, and I mean, same, with, same with your sister. Absolutely. I, I, mean, well, yeah. I, I would think that maybe someone in Connecticut or something would, would hear you and, and make yeah, a yeah, call yeah, up yeah. to the Boston absolutely, area. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Buzz, would you please bring us up to date? Hold, hold on. We're going to try to see if we have the president. Is the president We're trying to broadcast? Yes. 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 Are working to assist local authorities to save lives and to help the victims of these attacks. Make no mistake, the United States will hunt down and punish those responsible for these cowardly acts. I've been in regular contact with the Vice President, Secretary of Defense, the National Security Team, and my Cabinet. We have taken all appropriate appropriate security precautions to protect the American people. Our military at home and around the world is on high alert status. And we have taken the necessary security precautions to continue the functions of your government. We have been in touch with the leaders of Congress and with world leaders to assure them that we will do what is, whatever is necessary to protect America and Americans. I ask the American people to join me in saying a thanks for all the folks who have been fighting hard to rescue our fellow citizens and to join me in saying a prayer for the victims and their families. The resolve of our great nation is being tested. Make no mistake. We will show the world that we will pass this test. God bless. President Floyd. All right, there is uh, the president. Uh, it's more than I had to say earlier today. Uh, of course, at this point, you know, what can he say? He knows. Well, you know, it, it, as you much like as me, we do. I mean, even it is the president to see him standing up there. He is reassuring the nation. Yeah, and, uh, it helps. you know, it does help. I mean, that's why I think, uh, you know, our system of government is the greatest in, in the world, because we have that. And uh, and the one thing he said that I've been saying all day long, you know, say a prayer for anybody you know that might have family members down there at the World Trade Center. It's, uh, uh, it's just uh, astonishing. Do we know yet of any... Uh, Injuries or casualties at the Pentagon, Buzz? We still have no count on that. No. Now, are, are they going to keep not. that secret because it's the Pentagon? You know, that, that could happen. Uh, and, and because of all the smoke and, and the difficulty in getting in there and the high security that's involved, I mean, I mean not just any firefighter can run in and, and help in that situation. So we no. had some uh, good news to report earlier that I think it's important to, to share some good news with you, Buzz, about that daycare center there inside the uh, World Trade Center. Great concern about, about the kids uh, who may have been in a daycare center in the World Trade Center, and uh, we have received a report that those kids were safely evacuated. Uh, many people were safely evacuated from the World Trade Center, at least for, from the uh, first tower that was hit by a plane today, uh, but uh, no casualty reports uh, from there either, and it will be some time before we know. You know, right, if, if, I just want to say, if you turn it on the radio now and you're, you're, you're expecting to hear our regular show, not today. Right. I mean, not today. Hopefully tomorrow we'll be able to uh, ease back into a, a bit more of a regular format. But, but frankly, this happened uh, an hour before we went on the air today. We, we came on the air an hour early right. in New York, and, and we, were, we preempted uh, Howard in, in D.C. to go on an hour early on WJFK because this is a story that affects the two cities that we live in and broadcast in, in New York and Washington. Right. And we only have one phone number. I just want to give this out again. 212-757-1027. Most phone lines in, in Manhattan and New York, and in fact, throughout the East Coast, are down. Right. But we do have that, that line open to take your calls. I'm going to do it again. I hope I don't seem redundant here, Buzz, but I am going to ask you to read those phone numbers for blood donations because uh, when, you, when you're talking about this, uh, this magnitude, I want everybody to, uh, that can donate blood. I think it's important. Uh, have something to write with. And here this is for the New York area. Here we go. And uh, blood is needed all over the country all the time, but never as much as today. In the New York area, in Hudson Valley and the Bronx, the telephone number is 914 339 5525. In Long Island and Queens, the number is 516 
Four seven eight five zero one two in Manhattan two one two four six eight two zero three zero in Brooklyn and on Staten Island two one two four six eight twenty one eighty six and in New Jersey seven three two 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 zero seven double zero four. Thank you, Buzz. Let's go to uh, Daryl in Jersey. Hi, you're on with Don and Mike on uh, NEW and JFK. Yeah, they better close Major League Baseball. I think the Yankees have already canceled the game tonight, right? About all over the country. I wouldn't be surprised they do that as well. You know, I, I would assume that yeah, they're going to probably Yeah, because you know what? That. Yeah, if they don't, again, that's like painting a bullseye on, right. on whatever arena happens to be hosting a game. Right. Everybody has to be on a heightened state of alert for, uh, for, you know, for the foreseeable future. All right, gotcha. Thank you. Uh, Ricardo, hi, you're on with Don and Mike. Hello. Hello. Hi, hi, you're on the air, Ricardo. Hey, hi, how are you? Uh, I'm calling from D.C. I just want to say a few words. Sure. Uh, to everybody that's listening in New York and D.C., this has affected everybody. My father immigrated here 13 years ago. We are citizens. I am happy to be an American citizen. And as an American citizen, I, I wish that every fellow American would hold hands and say a prayer for everybody that, that fell in, in this tragedy. I feel very, very upset right now. I don't have many words to say. I feel... Very upset for all the families and everybody that's lost someone. Amen. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Ricardo. We do agree with you. Thank you. Let's go to uh, Jake in uh, New Jersey on NEW. Jake, hi. Uh, yeah. Hi. I just want to uh, give first say uh, give my condolences uh, uh, to uh, the people who have been stuck in the building, and uh, hopefully a lot of people have gotten out, and uh, uh, it will be less casualties. Um, also, I would like to mention is that the people who have done this. Uh, oh, they shouldn't get away with what they've done and uh, we, the government already knows these people for years they've been tracking them and they know who they are and what they've been doing and uh, hopefully this time around since uh, American blood has been lost they will do something about it and not play political games and right. uh, just kill them all you know we mentioned before gotcha. and it has to be mentioned again when you're talking about the enemy to fight in a situation like this this is not like uh, we remember wars even Vietnam you know you talked about people hiding in uh, you know in caves and in trenches and, and very difficult war to fight this I can't imagine a more difficult war to fight when you're talking about individuals who are you know who can mix in with the population, certainly here yeah, in New York and City, and, and, and in Washington, D.C. And we were comparing this to Pearl Harbor, saying most people remember this like Pearl Harbor. Well, they say like Pearl Harbor because, in this respect, you knew it was the Japanese right. flying into Pearl Harbor. Everybody has a theory about who might be responsible for this, yeah. but we still don't know. You know, and it's easy to say we know exactly who they are. Well, I think we do know who a lot of these people are, but it is not, as we have demonstrated, it is not easy to get to these people, and uh, that's one of the the reasons difficult situation. I think that's one of the things that makes this more frightening because you don't know who you're looking for or who the enemy really is. Just go to Johnny UPS. Johnny UPS, are you driving your truck today? Yes, I am. You're still driving your route to UPS even while America's under attack. Right. The good men and women of UPS are still driving their trucks. Yeah, we're waiting to hear something. We got a message from the board earlier saying that the head boss was in a conference call now, I would imagine the building, the main building down at 43rd Street, has got to be closed or closing. The guys cannot be delivering down there because it's an evacuation situation. I would, right. I would rest, rest assured you're not supposed to make any deliveries down there today. Yeah, uh, most of my businesses here in the Bronx have closed. All my schools have closed. But my concern why, why I called, gentlemen, is you guys are going to need a place to stay this evening. Oh, no, the, okay. boys, the boys have all got hotels. We're set. Yeah, we're we're. Are you we're, gonna Are you gonna be able to get to them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. we are. They're very close uh, now. Johnny, I'm the only one that's going to be inconvenienced. What with uh, perhaps, and I don't know how. Might be a longer do. longer walk for you, right? Rob, perhaps to get the rickshaw ready because I may have a 12 to 15 block walk after right. the show to get home. You know, it's too bad you don't have a bicycle. Yeah. <laughs> oh, poor you. I know. Freedom was bringing my bicycle up today. As a matter of fact. <laughs> All right, well, Johnny. Listen, I'll keep you guys posted if anything happens out here, but. The people in the town, it's just everybody's going nuts. So people yeah. crying in the streets. Oh, yeah. There's four or five car accidents. Thank you, Johnny. You, okay. yeah. you know, from that standpoint, we don't, even though we're in the middle of New York, mm -hmm. we really don't know because we're isolated. We've been isolated on, all day. On we, the 10th floor of our building. We don't even get a sense of it. Uh, you know, what we're seeing is what we're seeing on the television monitors that we have. The wire service reports uh, tracking the information coming out of our sister station, WINS. And it's, uh, you know, I, I know, as I mentioned to you before, that this is going to get 
so much worse when it all really descends upon us and we go yeah. out of this building and see what's going on. Let's go to Jason. Jason, you're on with Don and Mike on NEW and WJFK. Hello. How are you doing, fellas? Good job keeping everybody informed today. How yeah, we're trying. Uh, just uh, to find out if you guys know anything about the bus service, New Jersey Transit Port Authority. You mentioned uh, something about bus service. I know. Now, in the city, there are, there are some buses that are running buzz. Yeah, and I only have information about in the city and that we talked about earlier. Hey, Lisa, would you find out about that? You want to know about buses where, Jason? I found out circle lines going back and forth between here and Weehawk but nothing about bus service from Port Authority so All right, far. we'll get Lisa on that right now. Cool. All right, keep Thanks, listening, guys. Jason. Thank you. And we do know back at home that uh, the metro system back in D.C., the underground trains are running, but the at, over... At, at all stations except some of the uh, more... I think uh, some I, of the stations yeah, by Pentagon City. Are, are shut down, but the above ground stations are also shut down. That's what right, we're all shut down. Let's go to uh, uh, Mike. Well, he's been waiting a long time. Mike, hi, you're on with Don and Mike on NEW and JFK. Hi, Don and Mike. How are Hi. you doing today? We're doing great, thanks. We're right. doing all right today. Well, it best it can be done, right? Yes. Right. Yeah. I was. Yeah. It's funny you mentioned that. You know, they were thinking maybe the pilots did this, mm. and I don't think so. For for the New York, it occurs to me they were showing the flight path for this, and as soon as they hit the Hudson, it looks like they just followed the river all the way down. Yeah. Uh, well, what's your point? I mean, well, I, I don't saying, think I don't know. I don't know. need I, to follow the river. I'm thinking that uh, have we got anybody that's called that said a pilot might guy. do it. No, no. We we had someone who called and said when we were talking about the planes being hijacked, saying that maybe the pilot or the crew was in on it. And remember, I, I don't think so. that's when we said that the way you hijack a plane is you put a gun to a guy's head and you yeah. say fly into this building. Absolutely. Man. Okay. All right. Thank you. Now let's go to uh, Ben now on uh, WJFK WNEW. Ben, hi. Hi. How you doing? Hi. Where are you from? DC. I'm from just outside of D.C. They've been a lot of they've been other radio stations have been switching back and forth. Oh, now why um, would you Ben? Why would you switch, Ben? Bad listener. I'm sorry because I'm just trying to get everything and y'all are isolated and I'm just outside of D.C. All right. So, so uh, what do you hear, Ben? Um, what I've heard is that right up uh, just after the Pentagon um, got hit, they evacuated um, G.W. Hospital and that they're also um, sent 22 people to. Virginia Medical Center that were injured, various injuries and stuff like that, and they sent the five most severely burnt to um, the burn center, Western Hospital Center. So these are people, just, uh, allegedly this guy's talking about people from the Pentagon that were hurt in the Pentagon? That would seem to yes. be the case. Uh, gotcha. That would account for some, but not all of the injuries, I'm sure. Right. Uh, no, not nearly, but that was that was the far worse from what I've heard. Right. All right, thank you. Let's go to uh, Angel here in uh, New York on NEW. Angel, hello. Hey, how you doing, Tom? Hey, hey, Angel. This is a tough day, I'll tell you that, but I'll tell you one thing. This is, uh, I think the president said it best, it'll test our resolve, and Absolutely. it shows that we're all American then. Even I wasn't, you know, I was just on my way into work, and I was caught just short of the bridge when the thing, when when the thing, when this thing all went down. And I just said to myself, you know, no matter what color we are, who we are, what we practice, what we do, we're all Americans. And I, and I was ready to go down there to help wherever I could, man. Yeah, all right. and, uh, you know, you heard the numbers from Buzz. The best way to help yep. right now is and to you know what? I, you know, I'm all negative. They need, uh, they need a gallon from me. They can, they're free to have it. All right, you got. Let's go to uh, Steve in New Jersey. Steve, hi, you're on the air. Hi, Don and Mike, how are you? Hi, we're doing okay. Listen, um, is there any, like, direct numbers to get in touch with any agencies for assistance in helping dig, in helping sort, in helping with names, numbers, what have you? Yeah, you know, I, I, that's a good question. I don't know if there was... there's only so many people, let alone the rescue workers who were, who were, who were killed, okay? But there's, there's gotta be the need for just able-bodied people to, to dig. Yeah, but you know what? I don't know if you'd be able to get through on a phone line to the people who might w want the help. But probably Red Cross, would that would be where you'd start? You know, I think it's foolish to speculate right now because when that is needed, when they want to go public with that, they will do that. That's yes. uh, that's what they're doing. And if that is I'm necessary... I'm sitting and heading, heading to the... My, one thing, I, I want to reiterate, sir, that the one thing that we have heard so far is uh, from the mayor of New York, Rudy Giuliani. He is advising people to get out of Lower Manhattan right. so that they can let the rescue workers do their jobs. Right. 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 I saw 40 ambulances heading 80 east from all different western New Jersey municipalities. Uh -huh. So uh, help's on the way. All right. And now uh, both towers of the World Trade Centers could have collapsed. They have collapsed. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but both of them, I might say, could have, have collapsed. Right. The two planes hit, hit within... I, I believe within 15 minutes Eight, of each about other. About 18 minutes, right? That, exactly. that is just, that's nuts. Let's go to uh, Rob in New Jersey. Hi, you're on with uh, Don and Mike on NEW and JFK. Hello. Hey, guys. How you doing? Hi, Rob. 
Hey, uh, I just wanted to call and see, you know, I've never been much of a person to go out and fight in a war, and I've always been kind of against that, but after seeing this, it's like, sign me up. Yep. Bring on the draft. Yeah, you know, there's going to be a lot of guys, I think, at least in the short term, and this is where I was concerned about what's going to happen three or four months from now, but right now, tomorrow, next week, right. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. you want to talk about Americans coming together and, we do. and Speaking dealing of our like moments of tragedy. Straight out America, everyone, just pull out the American flag, let it fly. I, you know, that's a great idea. I think yeah. that's a good idea. All right, thank you. Yep. Appreciate it. Thanks for the call, my friend. Let's go to uh, James. Hi, you're on with Don and Mike on the NEW and JFK. Hello? Hi, you're on the air, James. Hi, this is James. I just wanted to call. Um, this is the first time I'm calling, and I wish it didn't have to be under these circumstances. Um, I just want to let you know, my brother is a transit cop in uh, Brooklyn and Manhattan, and he called up a little while ago, and he said that there's bombs and bomb scares all over the city, all over Brooklyn, all over. Well, now, are there actual bombs, or are they just He bomb said scares? that on the station he's at, there's a box on the station, and there's actually, it looks like a pipe and wires coming out of it, mm -hmm. all sorts of electronics. And he said that on top of the box is a book that says, Why Do I Hate People? Well, you know, and i got to wonder at this point, and I don't doubt that your brother's telling you what's going on, and there's right. every reason to be concerned. I don't doubt that there's that certain idiotic element of our society sure. Sure. That, oh, wants, yeah. that, that wants to get involved in this and say, hey, this would be a great time right. you know, to make a fake bomb yeah, or, yeah, sure. and certainly to call and make the bomb threats. I think that comes with the territory with this all. The scary thing is, too, I mean, this is just one station in Brooklyn. There's no way you're going to get bomb squad or canine units down there. When right. They're all at the airport, mm -hmm. you know, so everyone, he just said everyone's just standing back and they just got to wait. And, you know, thank, thank you for the call, uh, James. You know, sure. we, uh, we're looking at this just from the standpoint of two cities, mm -hmm. New York and Washington, but all of the airports, every airport in America now, you can't yes. take off, right? And that's never happened before, right, right. which so, is just incredible. So the whole country is is paralyzed. Mm -hmm. You got Disneyland, you got Disneyland closed right. down. Right. You have the, the guy, the which I guess was unconfirmed, calling about the thing in San Antonio. Well, you also, as uh, this Carl demonstrates, uh, you have the crazy factor too. And uh, you yeah, know, that is San as amazing report. as it might be uh, to believe, you're going to have people that are going to do that kind of crap. San Antonio is still unconfirmed. Uh, we have received word now, not surprisingly, that there are fatalities fatalities at the Pentagon, but still no word on that, but the, ner the Navy has confirmed uh, fatalities, and uh, everything now is just a sort of a mishmash of mismatched facts. Uh, uh, the city of New York will be restoring subway service soon, and that will help people uh, get around and get out of, get out of town. Right. Uh, the Board of Education here in New York, uh, schools are open and closed at the same time. What that means is that kids can go home only if they board a yellow school bus or if their parents pick them up, but at the same time, the schools are going to stay open late to accommodate the parents who may not be able to get there right away, so the schools will be open uh, into the evening as well. Well, I think that that's a good plan of yeah, that. That's a very good plan of that. Certainly, if you're a parent and you can't get to your kid, you wouldn't want the, the school to just say, all right, Johnny, get out of here, go exactly. home. Exactly. Oh, and, and uh, you know, neighborhoods, uh, people without children, if you uh, can help, you mm -hmm. know, I think it's a good uh, chance for people within neighborhoods to network as best they can yeah. to help help out your neighbor in a time like And this. on blood donations, uh, this will really simplify it, I think, for a lot of people, and that is that EMS is now saying, call or go to your nearest hospital, because all hospitals in the area are taking blood donations that will be uh, distributed here in lower Manhattan. Gotcha. Our phone number is 212-757-1027. In case you're wondering what's going to happen when we're done with this marathon shift at 3 o'clock. Right. Opie and Anthony are not able to make it into the city today. They are in Long Island. Yeah, they'll be broadcasting from uh, Long Island, and I've, I've got to think that they're going to be doing much the, the type of show that we're doing today. Absolutely, I know, getting as much information to people as they can. I knew when, when we came in today that, that somebody said to me, boy, it's going to be a hard day for you guys to go in and goof around, and, and I looked at them and I said, we're not going to goof around today. No, you don't and, goof around on and this day was, like this. And this was before the Pentagon thing happened. This right. was just oh, when, yeah. just, you know, I mean, the, the, now looking at it back, just saying, it was just when the World Trade Centers and, and sure. the, the planes went into them. Right. This is uh, a, an awful day. Let's go to uh, Mario in uh, New Jersey. Hello, you're on with uh, Don and Mike and uh, the NEW and JFK. How are you doing, Don and Mike? We're doing all right. Um, I was wondering, has anybody sat down and actually thought about those poor people that were on them planes and what they must have been thinking? Oh, like, yeah. oh, my God, I'm crashing into this building. Yeah, no, that, that had Pretty to be amazing. horrific. I, I mean, mean, just awful. 
And that not only touched the people in New York, you got people in Boston, you got a plane that left from Newark. Well, you do, and, and you know, as the president said, your prayers have to be with everybody that might have been uh, touched with this, uh, this family. And the plane from Boston was scheduled tragic, to go, go to Los Angeles, right? Both, two so, of them were scheduled so to go I'm to guessing, LA. You know, you got, right. you've got people from California. And I do want to say it again, if you can, check in with your neighbors, uh, you know, if you're in the D.C. area, in the Washington area. Help them, and uh, you know, even if you don't have children, this is a good time for people to get together. Bill in New York. Hi, you're on with Don and Mike. Hello. How you doing, Don? Mike, Buzz, how's it going? Okay. Listen, how on earth did an airplane get anywhere near the Pentagon? This is the most restricted airspace in the world. Uh, okay, now listen, well, this is this is something that we had discussed a couple of hours ago because you know that's where we we are originally from is is mm -hmm. D.C. and I grew up there and. The thing about the Pentagon is, you don't get it if you don't live there. Right. You see pictures of it, and, and you say, wow, it looks like a fortress. It looks like it's impossible to get, to get into. But if you get on Route 1, or you get on 395, or you get on Route, is it 27 or 29 in Arlington? 29. You get on Route 29. You can drive close enough to the Pentagon to spit on it. Yeah, and uh, that's why it happened. If you're talking about a plane taking off, you know, it, it, did the plane take off from National Airport that hit the Pentagon? Did they say? No, from and Dulles. And, Dulles. and the Pentagon Dulles. is only three miles from National Airport. Right, right. So it's not like it's got some, some gigantic force field exactly. over it. Uh, and, oh, no, absolutely. And, but what I'm saying is, I mean, isn't this restricted airspace like nobody's allowed to fly there? Yeah, you, you, would, you would think so. But one last-minute turn on a, you know, on a proper approach at the airport, absolutely. and you're at the Pentagon. And that's what happened. And, that's going to change. I'm sure you're going to see that change as far as okay. regular. I'm, I'm also thinking that this plane might have been shot down, because if you look at the hole in the front of the Pentagon, don't you think a 767 with a direct hit would have... Put a little mm. more than a little hole in That's the front. That's speculation. It's we don't know. We've not seen enough yet. We don't know the Two size. Of them took down the World Trade Center. All right, listen. We'll find out later. Thank you for the call, Bill. Let's go to uh, Nick. Hold on, Nick in uh, Virginia, WJFK. Hey, yeah. how you doing? Hi, we're doing all right, sir. Hey, I think a uh, shout-out should go out to all the EMS people and all the emergency people for running down there. Yeah. My uh, daughter was home today. She was off. She heard what happened. She got all her gear on, went to the nearest fire station, and she's down there at the Pentagon right now. Oh, God Beautiful bless you. Job. All right, thank you, my friend. Amen. Let's go to uh, Steve. Uh, Steve, I don't know where you're from. Hi, you're on the air. Hi, I'm from Jersey. Hi, you're on with Don and Mike. Um, Hi. I, I remember from being a kid and seeing the, the, the skyline in New York City over the Jersey Turnpike, and it's not going to be the same for the future generations without the two trade centers there. No, and you know, I'm sure they'll be rebuilt, but for a, for a long, long time, mm -hmm. yeah, it's going to be a lasting reminder. And how many people like myself are going to remember that when, when I came out of my building today and saw the smoke? Now, whether they'll be rebuilt. Pouring out of them. Whether they'll be rebuilt remains to be seen. Yeah, it took yeah. six years for the original ones to be built. And yeah, so. it's true. The, the New York skyline hasn't looked like this since 1970, so it's, it's unnerving in addition to being upsetting about all the lives lost. Maybe you guys are right. Dave in New York or New Jersey. Dave, hi. Yeah, hi. Hi, uh, you're on the air with Donna Mike. How you doing? Okay. Um, I just really wanted to call, to just call and say thanks to you guys. Um, you know, there's all this this talk about like let's go like bomb them and you know we don't we don't really know who they are right. and like you guys bringing it back and saying you know let's focus on what let's focus on what's 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 really important. Focus on the people that are hurt. Um, I'm, I'm actually I'm, I'm actually driving out of the hospital with a couple of friends to get blood. Hey, good for you, um, man. Way to go, man. Yeah, it's it just you know, I when I, when I first heard this and I, and I first like hit that it was an actual terrorist attack, my first thought was, geez, you know, where do I sign up? Yeah. You know, how do we get back at them? And you know, I just happened to be listening, and, and I forget exactly which caller it was, but somebody said, you know. Something about bombing them back. And, and, but, but you yeah. know what? I think to an extent, uh, everybody feels that way. I feel that way. It's just I don't know who to your reaction to rage they, out at. You react at that, and then you think about it, and then when you think about it, you realize that uh, who is the enemy? Who are we? You know, that's where this is. This is so terrifying to me because it's difficult to point out. You know this this army or this force of, of of another nation. It's not. These are individuals. These are zealots. These are people that do this that we you know we can't always control. It's you know, terrifying. It, it sure does look like war. Every time I turn and look up at the monitor at CNN, I see 
the streets of Manhattan that look like a war zone. I see the streets of D.C. And now, I understand the streets of D.C., you don't see the billowing smoke, because for those of you who don't know, the Pentagon is virtually in the suburbs as far right. as Washington, D.C. itself is considered. Right. But you see people running out of the office buildings in D.C. They had the, the, the copter up in the air where you see the, the, the beltway just blocked for mm -hmm. maybe like with a 15-mile backup going around that thing. This is like something that nobody could have ever dreamed would happen no. in America, right? It's terrifying. I mean, it's America. It, it looks like what we've seen in movies, but it's a much eerier feeling to see and know that it's real life. The District of Columbia and the state of, of Virginia have now both declared states of emergency. Uh, we're getting some finally some uh, casualty reports trickling in. Of course, they, they represent a, a very small uh, a part of the number that we're going to be seeing. St. Vincent's Hospital reports... Uh, that it has two dead, 15 in critical condition, and hundreds of injured. Uh, another hospital reports three deaths, so that's a total of five so far as the count begins. Yeah, and I mean, we're not even taking into uh, account right. the people on the airplanes. On the plane, we, know, on the, we lost a couple of hundred there easily today. Christ, and then the Pentagon, oh, yeah. and uh, let's see, let's go to, uh, okay, here's uh, Jim who claims to be a terrorism expert. Jim. Yeah, hi, Don. Hi, Mike. How you guys doing? Hi, we're doing all right. Well, I'm pretty upset. I'm uh, out near Dulles Airport. For those of you listening, uh, if, if you hear anything out of me, it may be my opinion, and my opinion only, uh, not the not the uh, radio show. Uh, there was an aircraft about 15 minutes ago that you people at a Dulles Airport in Virginia may have seen flying by. Uh, that was a military aircraft, so nobody needs to be concerned about that. I appreciate that. Uh, number two, uh, addressing what the president said earlier, uh, the president certainly was not prepared to make a speech. Uh, he is on Air Force One, obviously, uh, flying around at uh, high altitude. Uh, that's probably the safest place for him. I believe he probably came down and landed in Louisiana at an Air Force base to give a speech well, you know to what? let the public okay. be comfortable. Yeah, I just hung up on that guy. Well, what's, what's, that guy wants to get his own radio show. Yeah, Tom I mean, Clancy calling. That's yeah, exactly yeah, right. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Enough of that. Thank you, Tom C. Hello, uh, Mark. <laughs> Mark in New Jersey. You're on the air with Don and Mike. Hello. Hey, how's it going, guys? Hey, it's going okay today. Uh, I'm driving up Route 1 North here in New Jersey, and you can see where the cloud just billows from the spot and goes miles across. Yeah, uh, amazing. The thing the is, horizon. They, now, I don't know if, it's, if they're still burning or if that's just smoldering, but keep in mind, at, at, in bo now, I don't know how much of the buildings have collapsed, but you got you got a plane at each building also. And we, right? I don't think we have any idea. I saw idea it live the... on CNBC, and both buildings are gone. Yeah, I, both buildings are gone. They're I just the gone. Plane, they I... floated upon themselves. The tops let go, and the weight just split them like bananas. Yeah, I think a lot of what you see now is dust and ash and smoke. I think the planes disintegrated once they entered into the buildings, yeah. and and now the buildings have virtually disintegrated as well. Christ, yeah, I'm hearing every I'm hearing everybody talk about how they want to sign up. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, if we went out and eliminated every known terrorist group that's on the planet, ten more would spring up in Absolutely. their place. I couldn't agree yeah. with you more. Yes, but on the other hand, I, I I kind of agree with the people who say, sure. you know, at this point... How do you fight them? How do you find them? Where are they? Where are they hiding? I, 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 I don't know that. Part. I, I mean, that's... It's the other really unfortunate part. This yeah. is the way the war is going to be fought against yeah. us here. Yeah, you, we'll never... You, I'm sorry. You're asking me a rational question, and, right. I, and my my only answer is irrational. That I, I know. don't know who it is. I don't know how we're going to do it. But goddamn, we can't just sit back and take this. Well, you heard what the president said, and I know we're not going to sit back and take this. And I hope that they, you know, as far as efforts at targeting terrorists and efforts at protecting our borders and our citizens, I hope we're in for an improvement and a change. And out of a tragedy like this, if they can take measures that 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 will possibly prevent something like this from happening in the future. Build my wall. Yeah. Build my wall. Hello, Mike in New Jersey. Mike, hi. You're on with Don and Mike on any other. guys. How are you? Hi. We're doing okay. Just let you know, where I am right now, I'm in Clifton, right on 46, New Jersey. Yeah. Can see miles and miles of smoke right above the city. It's ridiculous. Everybody can, all the way to Connecticut. But uh, I'm just saying, you know, there's no other, there's no other uh, choice. You know, these buildings have to get rebuilt because if they don't, like, if we just put a park on top of it, like Oklahoma City, you know, we're just gonna look like pussies to the rest of the world. You know? Yeah. No, I agree. The message I agree. has got to go out. Got to rebuild them. Thank you, my friend, uh, Paul. Paul in New York. Hi, Don and Mike show. Hey, Don and Mike, how's it going? Okay. Um, God damn, it's unbelievable. 
Yeah. Uh, question, do you think that they're going to rebuild the Twin Towers? You know, that, that we had talked about it earlier, and the guy just called. I, I, would, I, would, I agree with what that guy said. Right. That I say, you know, now what happened in Oklahoma City was, you know, nutty Timothy McVeigh, and it was right. their decision not to do it at Oklahoma City. But this is New York City. Right. Yeah. I mean, this is freaking New York City. I mean, this is the pinnacle of the world. Yeah, you know, yeah. the capital of everything. I mean, I mean uh, good point. It's New I work York. As a, I'm sorry to cut you guys off. You've got you to rebuild those towers. Yeah, I, I work as a cook in, the, in New York City for a temp company. And I've worked in the Twin Towers and everything else. And all the Twin Towers are is supercomputer for uh, the New York and the National Stock Exchange. Mm -hmm. If they wanted to do anything, they would hit the gold reserves about five, okay. ten blocks right. away. Right. Well, I, I, I don't like the idea of you making suggestions about what they should hit. Well, that's, uh, you know, and that's like that uh, dumb Bruce Willis movie. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's like the Die Hard with a Vengeance movie, mm -hmm. right? Where they did all the stuff and they sure. they caught the cops off guard and then they... Uh, nice direction so I could get to the gold reserves. Yeah. That's precisely that's, what he said. And that's where Bruce Willis says... Uh, Attention! Attention! Okay. Attention. News is dead! Right. <laughs> Let's go to uh, Mitch uh, in D.C. Mitch, hello, Don and Mike show. Hey, Don and Mike, this is Mitch. Yeah, hi. Uh, Don and Mike, this is probably the, the worst scene I you could ever could imagine, what I saw today. Now, where, 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 were you, where, where were you in D.C., Mitch? Well, really, it's the Gannett Building, which is about... Uh, oh, down in, down in Roslyn. In Roslyn. It's about two miles from the scene. And what happened... Uh, all of a sudden, we felt this big shake, and uh, you know, there's a lot of building going on around there. And we thought it was like a, a girder or something hit the ground. And I uh, looked out my window, and I saw this white smoke. And immediately, down the halls of the Gannett and the USA Today building has about, I don't know, 20,000 employees. And to see about five or 6,000 people running down the halls, literally screaming like something you would see in the movies, it was like unreal. Yeah, and I'm, I'm just, I'm picturing my head. If you're in the USA Today building, you have a bird's eye view of the Pentagon. Right? Yeah, you see exactly what happened. I mean, that. yeah, you look right out your window and you see the Pentagon, and two miles beyond that, you see the airport. Those people's lives are changed forever. I think all of our lives are changed forever. All right, thank you. Listen, we got to run. Let's go, go to uh, Eric. Hello, you're on with Don and Mike on NEW and JFK. Hello. Hey, Don and Mike. Hi. Yeah, uh, I was just, I'm calling from uh, New, uh from Long Island. And I was on my way down to uh, Jones Beach because uh, you can see. Well, you were able, you were able to see the twin towers from down there. Right. And you just see this 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 big mass of just cloud, and and that's from over the water, and we're miles and miles away. And uh, I was at work. I'm a school teacher, and uh, I was on the Long Island Expressway heading east, and uh, it looked like west was just closed. You saw signs uh, of emergency vehicles and Suffolk County uh, fire trucks and ambulances were going out there. Uh, the Southern State Parkway on Long Island as well was closed only for emergency vehicles. Yeah, it was an awful situation. It still is that, an awful situation. It still, still is a, a bad one. Uh, Mike, uh, hello, you're on the Don and Mike show. Hello. Hello. Hi, uh, you're on the air. Hey, what's up? Um, yeah, Mike Cousin was actually in one of the buildings, and I want to tell you about that if it's right. Well, yeah, which building? He was in the second building to get hit. Mm. He was working on the 71st, 72nd floor at Morgan Stanley. And she just told me what happened. She's like, um, the first, she heard an explosion, looked out the window, saw that there's a giant hole and, like, papers are flying out and people flying out. Well? Yes, go ahead. No, we're here. Um, so she and a bunch of her friends just like, all right, let's get out of here. So they ran, they ran to uh, the stairs to run down the stairs. And uh, about a couple minutes later, the second plane ran into them. And they were about, I don't know, about the 50th floor or something, and, the walls and the steps, they all started cracking in as she was running down, and luckily by, like, the 40th floor, they caught a freight elevator all the way down and, and got out. Oh, Christ, God. can you Can you imagine? Can you imagine that being in that building? So, so she was on, hello, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. So she was on the 70th floor. Something around there, yeah. When the, it happened. Yeah, the plane hit around about the 90th floor, I believe. Wow. Oh, that's goddamn, that's goddamn lucky. Yeah. That really is. So it sounds like some people got out, and, and a number of people got out. Yeah, she told me that. She talked to one guy who was on the 80th floor and said as soon as it hit, the whole uh, ceiling collapsed right on top of him, but somehow he got out. Well, that's good news. Christ. All right, well, good for him. Good for your sister. Thank you for calling. Let's go to uh, Nick in New Jersey. It's uh, Don and Mike on NEW and WJFK. Hello. Hey, how you doing? Okay. All right. Uh, what you said before about how we should rebuild the towers, yeah. I don't believe that because if we put them back up like how they were, that's just another target for them to be like, hey, let's go knock that down. You know, it does fall into the category, though, of that's the same thing as the political discussions that we have. You know, right now, 
that doesn't matter. What what matters is dealing with this tragedy and dealing with the people that that are going through this. Whether we rebuild that that that's a question that has to be answered way down the road. But I exactly. do. I, I, I think they should re- rebuild that wall. I think they should rebuild them. I I mean it's you know. I mean, but it doesn't matter right now. No no right it doesn't matter should, now. But yes. But uh, eventually I, I mean because if not what are you going to do? Are you going to take down everything in this country that could be a possible target? Yeah. Are, are you going to say let's not have any more football games because there's the possibility something could happen in a football game. Mm-hmm. You know, let's not let's tear down the Washington Monument because there's a chance something could happen there. I mean, that, that's why I feel strongly about rebuilding. Yeah. Right. And I understand your point too that that certainly is not the most important thing right sure, now. Sure, yeah, but I understand where you're coming from. Yeah, you know, I'm just saying, you know, it's, it's, I mean, you do, you know, you know, you, you, you know, you get to a situation where, if you know, when do you lay down? I mean, you, not to be hokey, but it's about American pride. Right. I mean, it's about that we we don't take this s from people. Why are you hiding it? But hello, Don and Mike. Uh, you know what you mean. Okay. Well, hello, you're on the air. Hello. Hi, this is the Don and Mike Show. Hey, Don, Mike, what's up, man? This is Pat calling from uh, Woodbridge. I was um, working in the Pentagon at the time that it happened. Really? Yeah. Um, I, it was funny. We were. Um, my boss, his mom, called and said, "Oh my God, the tower!" You know. And then we get on CNN.com. You know, we get on the internet, and we're like, "Wow!" They get the picture up. I'm like, "Holy cow!" Next thing you know, uh, she's screaming on the phone, and then she sees the other plane hit, and I'm just like, it was like, I was like, what, what? And then he's telling me, so we look again, and this thing. Next thing you know, we're talking about it. Ten minutes later, boom, the building shakes. We're freaking out. Next thing you know, we see, we look through the corridor, people are running. Get out, get out. I was just like, I freaked out. Amazing. I did not know what to do. That's at, the, pe- at the Pentagon? At the Pentagon. I work in the Pentagon. I'm a, um, I'm a contractor. I work for this one department in the Pentagon. So, anyway, so I'm sitting there, and I'm, I, I was able to grab my bags and, and my stuff, and I'm walking down the hallway, and I'm coming out of the south parking area. Now, when, the, when it hit, it hit on the west side. Well, I'm on the southwest area. It on the west side. And you can see, you could not see the Pentagon. There was so much smoke. You right. could not see the Pentagon. Gotcha. It was Thank unbelievable. You. Hold on, Buzz has got something for us, Buzz. I, I just want to say, I keep thinking about the guy I heard on Channel 2 News here in New York this morning. He was calling from the 86th floor, and he wanted uh, certainly police and firefighters to know where he was and what part of the building he was in, but he wanted them to know that he was okay and uh, that the situation where he was was under control. Well, of course, it wasn't long after that that the building collapsed, and I don't know if anybody oh, the got second there or not. Right. Right. The second building? I will tell you now, we know that at least 40 to 50 stories of at least one of the World Trade Center towers is still standing. It's on fire, but there's still about 40 or 50 stories uh, to at least one of the World Trade Center towers. So it, it wasn't at the base of the building, but, but apparently somewhere in the middle. And uh, firefighters are marching up the steps, uh, no elevator service, obviously, uh, to look for bodies and to, and to rescue people who are still alive. At so least now, Buzz, is the fire isolated to the top of it? Those are brave guys. Has it spread down to the bottom? Uh, uh, firefighters are still getting in there. The building's full of smoke. How far down the fire has spread and what remains of the building, I don't know. Todd, you're on with Don and Mike. Oops, hold on. I just hung up on him. Uh-oh. My apologies. Uh, Sharon in D.C. You're with uh, us on uh, JFK and NEW. Hello. Hi. Hi. This is Sharon from Washington, D.C. Yes, hi, Sharon. Hi, how are you? Hi, um, hi. I was calling. I, I was actually standing on my balcony this morning. I live in southwest D.C., directly across the river from the Pentagon. Oh, and so you could, see, you could see the Pentagon, right? I actually saw the plane hit the Pentagon. Wow. Oh, Jesus. Um, and it, it was just massive. The reverb across the river was enough to shake the window in my bedroom so that it broke. Um, but I'm a grad student at Maryland, and I think what's really important for everybody to do right now is treat this almost like a natural disaster, take care of business, take care of the people who are injured, and not look for the people to blame or the people to hate over this. And check take with your neighbors, as I, as I mentioned before, check with your neighbors and see if you can help them, uh, you know, with people that might have uh, been more impacted by this tragedy than you were. Exactly. Donate blood. Um, take care of the people that you can, and let the people who are in charge of finding out about these things find out about it. It could be weeks. It could be months. Yeah. So, you know, don't go on a hate rampage until we know what's going on. Yeah, but, you know, that's – and I agree with that, but on the other hand, I know that – we're doing the show right now, and I know when I get home tonight and I watch this, I'm going to get pissed. Right. Mm-hmm. And my thought is going to be... But you more than most people, uh, you know, need to show restraint as well. Yeah, I know, but I'm, I'm just telling you, when I get home on my own tonight, I'm going to be sitting there thinking... Who, once again, who's the enemy, you know? Yeah, but, right, but I'm going to be frustrated thinking. Mm-hmm. I mean, I can understand 
the mindset of people saying, "Let's find who did this and right. and let you know, let's let's rip them out." So can I? Let's let's do it. Our telephone number is two one two seven five seven one zero two seven, and uh, you're on the air. Hello, Donna Mike Show. Hello. Yeah. Hi. Um, yeah, I just want to let the guys know there's a whole slew of analysts that's just coming on for Route 3. I know we're talking to folks. There's a whole, there's a whole slew. People want to come up and help you people. There's a whole slew of what? Ambulances. Oh, where? On Route 3? I just passed about 40 on Route 3 just outside of Clifton. All right, All right. got gotcha. you. Thank you, my friend. Hey, have a good one. Okay, thank you. Let's go to uh, Steve. Uh, you're on the air. Hi, Steve. Hi, Don and Mike. How you doing? We're doing okay. You know, I, I I know you said you wanted to have fewer commercials during a show, but this is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> really. Yeah. And this is this is all it took for them yeah. Yeah. to give up commercials. Right. Imagine that. Right. And Just the loss of human life is all it took Ken Stevens yeah, wow. to, to bend over and say, "Don't play commercials. Take a break right. from the All American Dollar." But you know, seriously, what I was calling it to to talk about was that you know you also have to think about that there are people who are at home. Who have loved ones who were down there? I'm, I'm 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 calling from Queens right now, and you know there 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 are people who are at home who have loved ones down in the city who are working them because no. you know the phones are going in and out. Mm -hmm. They have no idea what's going on or, or what's with their loved ones, and 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 it's and it's just this harrowing situation. Bus has some uh, for bus has some phone numbers and some information. If you do have people that were down there in and, the World uh, Trade Center area, Morgan Stanley set up a hotline that you can check on uh, people, and that number is eight eight eight. Eight eight three four three nine four. And uh, an update on the kids, by the way. They got out of the daycare center. Uh, those kids can be found at St. Vincent's Hospital. All of them safe and sound, safely rescued from the World Trade Center building before it collapsed, but after the plane crashed into it this morning. Uh, and I know you're wondering about uh, how long will stuff be closed. We just got word that both Reagan National Airport and Dulles Airport in D.C. will both be closed tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So they've wow. already decided to close in New Orleans. And I would right. guess that, that uh, the three airports in New York will be closed as well. I would assume so. Sure. I know that Union Station in uh, D.C. is closed. Mm -hmm. Any word about the train station here? Uh, I'm not sure what, uh, whether Penn Station or Grand Central, what the uh, situation is there. I would assume that they are closed. I, I'm not sure that we don't have that uh, that information. Most but of the commuter commuter trains, check, have, commuter trains have stopped running, certainly, right. and uh, since officials are not allowing traffic into the city, it would be a safe bet that the Amtrak trains are being stopped short of New York City. Hello, Don and Mike Show. You're on the air. Hi. Yeah, I was wondering if they're going to, um, you know, take out any kind of repercussions on all those people, like vigilantes against the people that own, like, the 7-Elevens and the gas stations. Well, what do you think about that? I think they will. Oh, uh, now, who, is, who is that? Not, not me, not me personally. Who no. is they? You're just talking about people. Now, now, if you're asking like, if, if if I think some guy's going to go into a, a 7-Eleven and, and find a towel head in there and and take it out on him, no, because we we don't know yet. Right, we don't know who, who did it. And you, you know, but I mean, all those people that are just playing, you know, ignorant and. Don't, don't no, care. I, you know what? I I hope not, and I and I hope that people uh, you know don't do something like that. And I don't I don't think it will. I I think that we are uh, we're probably a little more sophisticated than you give people credit for, and we we know you know to, how to follow our news outlets and get the information, but. There's there's going to be a sense of anger in this country, the likes of which has probably never been seen in our generation. Yeah, with, I was just going to say, with this generation. With this generation, you know, this generation that uh, seems so caught up with so many different things, uh, this is really like a state of war. Hello, uh, Anita in uh, New Jersey. It's uh, the Don and Mike Show on WNEW and WJFK. Hello. Hi. Hi, Anita. Hi, how are you? Oh, we're doing all right. Okay, I just wanted to say that it's like I am thoroughly outraged by this. But what people have to realize is that in America, we have been living under a false sense of security because we think we're America and no one's ever going to touch us. Absolutely. And all of that. But I do have to say we do have to rebuild those towers. We do have to show them that we will keep coming back and we will go after them. I, I, I'm with you, and I know what Mike's point was before, that there's other things more important than that. Yeah, and I know you, you understand my point, and I will tell you that I probably agree with you about when all is said and done. Let's rebuild that that's, them. That's what you should do, because for the reasons that you said, that, that we're talking about 
uh, you know, a symbol, uh, you know, that we are we are going to rebuild, and then this is America, and we have American pride, and uh, it's just there's so many things in front of that right now that are on my mind. Let's go to Buzz. As we told you earlier, there are fatalities at the Pentagon, and we are still waiting to hear how many. We do know, however, that seven people are in critical condition from the airline crash at the Pentagon, all seven of those uh, with burn injuries. And we also mentioned a few moments ago that uh, the state of Virginia, or northern Virginia, and, and uh, the District of Columbia have been... Uh, uh, put under a state of emergency, uh, folks in the district are being told to go home, stay home, and stay off the streets. Now, what phone numbers do you want Buzz to repeat? Um, his Red Cross, uh, all the numbers that he's been reading for help, especially the ones if you have uh, people at the World Trade Center, people weren't able to get there. Uh, well, would you repeat those numbers, please, Buzz, if you have a, a family members sure. at uh, the World Trade Center, you think? Again, if you want to check on people at the World Trade Center, and let me reiterate that the kids are okay from the daycare center. They are, are at St. Vincent's Hospital. To check on uh, somebody who may or may not have been in the World Trade Center, that hotline number is 888 888- 883-4394. Call your local Red Cross or uh, your local hospital if you want to take blood. Uh, give blood. All the hospitals in the metropolitan New York area are accepting blood donations that will be directed to the scene of today's tragedy in Manhattan. The generic number for the American Red Cross is 877-R-E-D-C-R-O-S-S. I do know that uh, the National Guard has been called out here in New York. Yeah. Uh, in D.C., all National Guard members are being urged to get to the D.C. Armory ASAP. Uh, I had a question about Penn Station. Uh, they were just on the phone with us. Penn Station has been reopened and limited eastbound service will resume shortly. You may experience delays entering the station because the, the cops are out there. Right. Uh, the LIRR train service continues from Atlantic Avenue in Brooklyn and Hunters Point Avenue in Queens. Limited service continues to Port Washington customers only from Woodside Station in Queens. And, of course, it's a free BGB today. Right. Take the train. train. It's a uh, good free. job, guys. Good job getting that information. Out. Yeah. Take that. It's We've uh, gotten free. a lot of great support help, and we want to thank everybody for that. Let's go to uh, Cheryl in Long Island with uh, Don and Mike on NEW and JFK. Hello. Cheryl. Cheryl, you there? Hi, Don and Mike. How are you doing? Hi, you doing okay. I just wanted to make a comment and ask your opinion on it. It's been like, you know, obviously several hours since this has gone down, and we haven't heard any information about any of the other planes that are still being hijacked, at, you know, where they might be, if we've had any, you know, if we've seen them to try and... Re- Buzz, you know. let me see. Uh, hold on. Let me see if I've got this right. There, there was the concern over that plane 175, mm-hmm. right? And that, that, that they confirmed that that plane had crashed also? Uh, United Airlines has confirmed that that flight 175 did crash, but at last report, the last they didn't know where. we had is they didn't know where. Now, now well, what about the plane that crashed outside Pittsburgh? Is that a different flight? That was an American Airlines flight. Let me just confirm. No, excuse me. That was also a United flight. Two United flights down, two American flights down. Uh, outside of Pittsburgh, that was United Flight 93 headed from Newark to San Francisco. Uh, the American Airlines jets were headed from Boston. Boston and from Washington's Dulles, both of them headed for Los Angeles. So, so I understand what Cheryl is saying here, though. Keeping in the in, it's like juggling. You, you got so much stuff in the air at once. Right. But there were other planes that we thought were being hijacked, right? Yeah, I thought so. Yeah, you know, but I, I think uh, just the DC police plane is the only one other one that I know. So about. a total of five planes that were uh, right. involved. In all this right, well, today. Cheryl, maybe they've all come down then. <laughs> I hope so. Okay, all right, thank you. All, all right, thanks, thanks you know, for and, the call. And that speaks to you know with the, the the fear and the and, and the yeah. fear that people are still experiencing uh-huh. uh, all over the country right now. Hello, uh, Larry in, in uh, Jersey. You're on NEW. Hello. Hello. Hi, it's Don and Mike. How are you guys? We're doing all right. Listen, I know you guys didn't want to keep rehashing about the revenge on this. Sure. The question I have is this. If, in fact, I know it, it has been said that it's not positive yet, but if there are people celebrating this um, and we do act calm and rational about it, don't we feed people like that to think that they can do this again? In other words, if, if we were to do something outrageous now, like pull a full military attack on them, but them, them who? who is all right, them? No, no, no. Celebrating in the all right, all right. Now let's let me just give you the example here because it's the Palestinians, the, 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 the Palestinians, the Palestinians right. that, who uh, allegedly were celebrating, dancing and, and giving candy to the kids. So you're saying that we should what? We should go over and bomb them because they're dancing about this? What I'm saying is, is this: we we have had hostage situations in this country. We've had terrorists before. Suppose we did, as the president said find out, hunt down, and find these people. Mm-hmm. We will give them a trial. 
And if they were found guilty, the worst thing we would do is put them to a death sentence. If they're able to get into a plane and crash into a building, death doesn't doesn't fear them. Well, and that you know something that applies to if you send in a hit squad and and try to take them out as well. Uh, exactly. These are people with the the the, the idea of death. It's a different. They have a different perspective. But but I also I, I agree with you to the standpoint that if listen if people are dancing and, and laughing about this, mm-hmm. I say f them. Right. Uh, and 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 I, there's nothing I can do about it. And right. I'm not advocating that we go drop a bomb on them. But no. I'm just I'm just saying, f them. How no, how, how dare they? Right. If they're involved in this or not, sure. You know, be laughing and handing out candy to their kids on on, on the worst day in America. In 50, in 50 years. Uh, i got to go because uh, Steve in New Jersey says he has a uh, correction on the blood donation info. Steve. Yes. How are you on the air? How are you doing? I just wanted to make a small correction. At least one hospital in Jersey, which is the Bayshore Community Hospital in Keyport, is not accepting donations. They send you down to the blood bank. And there was a four-hour wait at the door, and I was 150 people away from the door. Wow. Wow. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good for the people of this area. Yeah, Fantastic. It's so crazy. And by the way, I have uh, totaled up the presumed number of airline casualties, casualties today, and that number now totals 381. Uh, you know, that's going to be a mess when we get through that and yeah. the people at the World Trade Center. And, uh, Incredible. Hi, hi, hi. Eric hi, in uh, Maryland on WJFK. Hello, Don and Mike Show. Hi, how are you doing? Doing all right. Um, I'm, uh, I'm a volunteer EMT firefighter, uh, Washington area, and, uh, I just, uh, my, my big thing is I wanted to, uh, people to remember all the emergency workers who are, uh, giving their time, especially some of the, uh, brothers and sisters up in New York have lost their lives during this. Yeah, and, and, uh, and, and what those people, people to, yeah, what those people are going to go through, too. I mean, uh, you know, our exactly. prayers are with them, absolutely. You know, 10,000 emergency workers, and you mentioned the National Guard. The Connecticut National Guard has now been called up and is volunteering its services to assist the New York National Guard. All right, one more before we got to take a break. Uh, Mike in uh, New Jersey, a truck driver. You're on NDW with Don and Mike. Hello. Hi, Don, Mike, Buzz. Right. Hi. Hi, guys. How you guys? Well, I Hi. hope you're holding in as well as I am, as best can be expected, unfortunately. Yeah, we're, doing, we're doing all right, Mike. Um, listen, I, I was actually a little bit concerned. I, I've grown into listening to your show, and I heard before that you had sent your wife home. Is that Was that correct? Yes. All right. I, Just so I, you guys know, and, and other motorists out there know that can hear you in the D.C. area and also up here, all the uh, water crossings, such as the Delaware Memorial Bridge, uh, the Baltimore Maryland bridge over there. Um, those bridges are all closed. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, we have several of our drivers that are stuck in Maryland mm. that can't get back up to New Jersey because everything is shut down. She'll figure it out. I mean, I sent <laughs> I, I, I sent I sent my wife back home because. Bart was going to be with with neighbors, and that's when right. they, they closed Union Station. Yeah, right. and, and as it turns out, they, you know they they closed. You checked Union in with Station. her, right? And she's okay. Yeah, she's fine. She, trust me, uh, if anybody's going to get through, if there's a barricade or something, she, <laughs> you know my my wife will do it. And I've got we've got it worked out with Bart anyway. That that well, he's I, fine. I just want to let you guys know that I, I really enjoy your show. Unfortunately, today, of course, is on the the worst of terms. Mm-hmm. Um, but you guys are, are a number one in my book, and a lot of listeners up here. And God bless you, and please be safe. Oh, of course, and uh, thank you for the call. Thank All right, have you. a now great listen, day. Got to, uh, I hope, hope things get better. Thanks. Well, they can't Bye-bye. get much worse. Yeah, uh, no I, I hope not. I, I knock yeah. on wood. Yeah. we got to uh, squeeze one more break, and I think we've got more, like an hour of the show left. Mm-hmm. Uh, WNEW FM New York, WJFK FM Washington. We'll be right back. This is the Don and Mike Show. Washington's 106.7 WJFK. Howard Stern, John, and Mike. Opie and Anthony. Sports junkies and the Washington Redskins. Washington Superstation. 106.7 WJFK. For more than 25 years, Alban Tire and Michelin have remained loyal to the dual aim of their founders. Product quality and the quality of service for their customers. Alban Tire is here to help you select the best tire for your vehicle needs. Alban Tire has the knowledge from 25 years in the tire business. They offer world-class products from Michelin, BF Goodrich, and Uniroyal. Let their experienced staff extend their quality service to you, providing not only great tires from Michelin, but peace of mind, because so much is riding on your tires. Alban Tire, located off I-95 in Springfield, Virginia. Call
call 703-455-9300 for information on their products and services and for directions. For peace of mind, call Alban Tire today for any of your vehicle needs. From pickups to sports cars and vans to SUVs, Alban Tire has the tires and services for you. Experience the quality sales and service from the first phone call and every step of the way. Alban Tire, here to help you. Call now, 703-455-9300. When you think tires, think Alban Tire. In Springfield, Virginia, 703-455-9300. 1945, Chicago. The war was won. Chicago was ready for some good times, and great little neighborhood restaurants were flourishing. One of them was Uno's, and today Uno's is legendary for great food, great times, Chicago style. And they just brought back an old favorite of mine, crusted Dijon chicken. Oh, succulent chicken breasts, roasted in a savory mustard and breadcrumb crust, served with Dijon sauce. Now that's a Chicago legend you can eat. They've got great food at Uno's and great times to go with it. From legendary deep dish pizza to juicy steaks, burgers, salads, pasta, and for a limited time, crusted Dijon chicken. Uno, Chicago Bar and Grill. It's a Chicago legend with the best food around. Visit Uno's today in Georgetown on M Street at Reston Town Center or at Dulles Town Center Mall. Thank you for calling Dish Network. May I help you? Uh, yeah, I'm calling about your nine dollars a month TV deal. Yes, sir. Uh, how many channels do I get for nine dollars a month? You get over one hundred of America's best channels, all in one hundred percent digital quality. Well, suppose I wanted ESPN and Fox Sports Net. How much then? They're both included, so just nine dollars. All right. Say I want TNT, USA, and TBS. Nine dollars. Uh, uh, okay. What? if I want Disney, Noggin, and Cartoon Network for the kids? Nine dollars. <laughs> uh, okay. Suppose I want a Discovery, Discovery Health, a and Animal Planet. <laughs> Still nine dollars. CNN? Nine dollars. Fox News? Nine dollars. MTV? Nine dollars. It's the I Like Nine deal only from Dish Network. For a limited time, you'll get 117 of the top channels in digital quality for only nine bucks a month when you buy any Dish Network system valued at $199 or more. Can your cable company do that? Call 1-800-333-DISH. Prices, packages, and programming are subject to change without notice. So call 1-800-333-DISH today. This is it. In Maryland, the cost of drinking and driving just went up because the legal blood alcohol concentration level just went down. 0.08 blood alcohol concentration is the new law in Maryland for drunk drivers. And if you blow it, you blew it. The cost of drinking and driving is too high. You or someone else could die. And a DUI or DWI arrest is a legal, professional, and economic nightmare. (laughs) If you're still drinking and driving, the new .08 law is aimed right at you. It's not complicated. It's simple. Don't blow it in Maryland. Never drink and drive. It's just not worth it. This message is from the Maryland Department of Transportation, State Highway Administration, Highway Safety Office. Excuse me, I couldn't help but notice you two have been in this library for hours. Yeah, we're looking for a new car. No, doing research. Getting the books. No, cramming, so to speak. Ah, well, I don't mean to be intrusive, but now is a great time to get an Accord at your Honda dealer. We know it is, and we love the Accord, but... Well, we suffer from a research addiction. You know, honey, that is really such strong language. I know it is, sweetheart, but... I'm so sorry, but the Accord has everything you want in a car. Great styling, a roomy interior. Tell us about it. After this, we go home and read 35 brochures. Then give each other written tests. But the Accord has an incredible engine, superb handling, brilliant ergonomics. We know, we know. You know, our hearts say Accord, but our heads say put yourselves through hours of needless misery. Well, I suppose you don't even want me to get into the terrific lease terms now available on a wide variety of Accords. No, we'll crumble. Vanish in a cloud of dust. Well, I'll be pulling for you, too. It's a great time to get an Accord at your Honda dealer. Okay, your research is over. Introducing new Ginsana Gold Blend, specially formulated to give you the vitality you need. Because with all you have to do today, your two-year-old just gave up his afternoon nap. (laughs) This unique blend of G115 Ginseng plus 17 vitamins and minerals is the only supplement clinically proven to reduce fatigue and increase vitality. Okay, give Daddy the pots back, Billy, and let's play horsey. For the vitality you need to enjoy life, try new Ginsana Gold Blend, blended for vitality. Listen. 
That's what you sound like. Dr. Jean Wagner talks about nighttime teeth grinding. Aside from being a turnoff for the person you sleep with, it can cause tooth loosening, even tooth loss. That's why I created a dental protector to cushion your teeth. It's called the Doctor's Night Guard. Because you fit it yourself, you'll save money. More importantly, you'll protect your teeth. It might even help your sex life. The Doctor's Night Guard. Relieve the nightly grind. The D.C. Art Center Gallery and Theater promotes art and new artists. To find out more, call 202-462-7833 or call us here at WJFK. 106.7 WJFK. Howard Stern Mornings. Done in black and middays. Opie and Anthony Afternoons. The sports junkies at night and the Washington Redskins. Washington Superstation. 106.7. WJFK. And Mike, WJFK. What is this? Is the Don and Mike Show. The Don and Mike Show, and uh, we are on 1027, WNEW New York. 106.7 WJFK Washington, D.C. I don't know how many of our affiliate stations are going to pick this show up today. If they're going to run it, they might run a best of. Screw them. It's only the worst day in America in 50 years. You know, walking around the building during the commercial break, um, a lot of tears in a lot of people's eyes today. Uh, I've never seen any single thing impact people, whether you have people down there or not. But certainly here in New York City, and we're in the middle of New York City, this is... Uh, this is something I've never witnessed in my entire life. Even for people who didn't have people in the World Trade Center building, the fact that something of this magnitude has happened here, uh, standing next to lifelong New Yorkers who are just gasping and clasping their hands over their mouths and, and yeah, getting misty-eyed, uh, unbelievable to know that their city, and I, I think this has struck all of us today, that we're all so vulnerable, and this is a, a very clear reminder of that. You know, I know, I know certainly that we have uh, dealt with the... Uh, with the, I don't want to say the second city syndrome because that's Chicago, but I know that people in D.C. have given us crap for for doing the show from New York, and that, that I live up here part time, and we come up here. But if we could put all of that aside for a second, Washington D.C. is the nation's capital. There's no doubt about it. Right. But when you think about America, you think about New York. New York's the world capital. The, yeah, and, 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 and it's funny when you mention something like that. You mention people giving us grief. It, it, it takes all of our petty differences in this country. Yep. What city you're from? What team you root for? Uh, you know, what color your skin? Even and you, you just an event like this puts it into perspective as, as we are all dealing with this right now as an American tragedy. Uh, I didn't think it could get much worse than, than Oklahoma City. And, no. and, wow. and it has uh, and it has in, a, in such a way that I, 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 can't, I still can't believe it. And what this has done today, this has hit us in both of our our strongest points. Yes, right. The nation's capital, where we think we're invincible, and New York, mm -hmm. the greatest city in the free world. Both places that I think most Americans consider to be safe havens. Mm -hmm. Where you could live, where you could walk around. I mean, hell, don't you feel safe walking on the streets of New York? Yes. I do, and I don't anymore. And, uh, you know, I, I mean, it's just, it's just astonishing. When you get by the anger and you get by the shock, what settles in is an uneasiness that uh, will be with us uh, certainly here in New York City and in Washington D.C. I think for for quite some time. All right, let's uh, let's go back to the phones. Now the only lines we have open today are two one two seven five seven one zero two seven. We'll get a, an update from Buzz here in a second. Let's go to uh, Al. Al in New York, you're on with Don and Mike. Hello. Hey, Don and Mike, what's up, guys? Hi there. Hey, listen, I just want to give my support to you guys. I'm a long time listener of NEW and. You know, over the past couple of weeks, I've been hearing a lot of people, you know, kind of rag you guys out because you're from D.C. And even when I listened to the show, I said, oh, here they go. They're talking about D.C., D.C. But I think it was meant for you guys to be in New York today. It's, yeah. uh, it's strange that we are here after, you know, uh, quite, a, quite a bit of a break. And uh, being here... You, you do get the sense of, uh, of what this city, what has happened to this city. One of the things I hear from so many people, uh, they took away our skyline. Yeah. And, uh, and that's what they did. And it's, uh, it, putting it into words, it's impossible. I can only describe it the way I feel and the way I felt all day since we came on the air today. And we really got the magnitude of this after we went on the air uh, as to, as to how huge this was. And it is, 
it's not a nauseous feeling, but it is a, a sickness that I feel deep inside of me, and and I think everybody that I've come in contact with feels the same way. Yeah, and and I know. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I hear what you're saying about it. It's, it's good that we're here today to experience it. And I don't disagree with that. But I, I think that if we were back in D.C., right. we would feel the same empathy for New York. Now, we wouldn't be able to get the, the one-on-one feeling from New York. Right. But, but keep in mind that what they're going through in D.C., while it's not as bad as the World Trade Center no. be, being attacked, What's happened in D.C. has never happened before, ever. Absolutely. Yeah. I would ever. say when the nation's and capital is under a state of emergency and everybody's being told to stay indoors, that that's, uh, that's pretty devastating in itself. And, and people in, in D.C. are pretty freaking terrified. And I think mm-hmm. with... Uh, I think with with good good with with good uh, reason. With reason. Thank you. Uh, the George, I'm sorry. I was just trying to read something. The George Washington Bridge is now moving slowly back into New Jersey. So the the, the GW Bridge is, is open. Is that car traffic on uh, the GW Bridge? Yes. Yes. Okay. The upper levels of that bridge have just been reopened uh, back in toward New Jersey, and that will make it easier for people to get out of uh, Manhattan. home. Everybody that's yeah. on that GW Bridge and back into Jersey. A uh, Greyhound has, in the meantime, shut down all service in New York City, and uh, there is limited ferry service. Another way to get uh, back to Jersey from New York. City. Really? Limited ferry service uh, at Pier 11 on oh, 30th Street. Some things don't change. I'll take you home. That may have been the only joke today. That's very good. Hello, Oscar. You're on with uh, Don and Mike on NEW and yes. uh, JFK. Hi. What's up, boys? What do you call it? The reason, like, everybody's so affected by this tragedy is because here in New York, everybody knows somebody that works in the World Trade Center. Some, someone said that to me also, and, uh, you know? and that's true. Everybody's touched by this in some way. And I just want to say to you guys, you know, I'm feeling it for you, too, because, you know, you got people up here and you have people down there. So I don't know how it is in D.C. Does it, in D.C., does everybody know somebody that works in the Pentagon? Uh, not, not in the Pentagon, Quite. but everybody knows somebody who works for the government. Mm-hmm. And, go. and even though the, nothing's happened outside of the Pentagon, they, they have released all the people from all the government offices down right. there. Yes. So I guess I mean, everybody's scared because they all consider their buildings like the next target. target. Yeah, right. Yeah, you know, yeah, one absolutely. of the things, I, you know, I said to check in with your neighbors uh, tonight, but I think this is, uh, this is one of those occurrences where... People need to be with other people. And I, I'm telling people for their own good. If you have friends, if you have neighbors, this is something you don't want to handle. Watching the news and watching this tragedy, I don't think you want to be sitting by yourself in front of the television doing no. this. I think you want to be with other people to, to, to help lessen this as much as possible. Yeah. Soften it, I should say, even though it's uh, probably impossible to say that. Does this mean you want to go to dinner tonight? Right. I, no, I'm not, I don't think I'm going to eat dinner tonight, but I, uh, but I certainly will drink it. Hello, Bernard. Bernard hey. in D.C. Hi, Don and Mike show. Hello. Yeah, what's going on? This is the first time I've ever got through to you guys. Hi. Um, but I have a question. Where are all those unekay countries that we help out when they have problems? You know, like when somebody comes to bomb them, why are they, you know, coming over to help us or saying anything about us? Well, now, I, mean, they li- li- no candy I, I think the eyes of the world are going to be on the United yeah, States. Bernard, to, to be fair, the, this thing is, is six hours old. I mean, I, I don't think, I, I'm sure that Britain, you know, will... will, will. Yeah, there have already been re- fierce responses from uh, British Prime Minister Tony Blair and uh, leaders of other countries as well, leaders of the European Union and, and even some Middle Eastern countries have expressed, at the very least, deep condolences. Yeah, I mean, it's been on, only six hours, for goodness sakes. Uh, Jason? Let me find him. Hold on. Jason in uh, Jersey. Hi, you're on with Don and Mike on NEW and JFK. Hello. Hey, what's up, guys? Hi. Um, I was just calling in because I, I actually watched from my office window as the towers went down today. Pretty oh, tragic. Christ. Christ. Um, but, I mean, more importantly, I'm trying to think of what happened in the surrounding area. I mean, you know, those buildings aren't exactly small. I want to know what kind of impact it had on smaller buildings around that, it. That is an excellent question. Yeah, we're going to have to wait. Uh, the waitress that, uh, that, I, that I was talking to in the diner this morning, the Brooklyn diner, was trying to get in touch with her mom, and I, and I said, you've got, a, you've got a relative. Your mom's in the uh, World Trade Center. She said, no, she's in the building right next to it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you have to wonder what is the impact of that. And, and we're not going to know the answers to this until, uh, until the rescue workers can really get through this, and this is going to be a matter of weeks. We, we haven't been, heard for a while that Mayor Giuliani was trapped in the building across from the World Trade Center uh, just by the falling debris. He eventually obviously got out okay, but uh, yeah, so those buildings across uh, immediately across from the World Trade Centers were uh, directly affected. Yeah, I'd feel hinky if I was in one of those buildings. Yeah. You know, I mean, oh just, just with the force of the, of the plane hitting the Trade Center and you, oh, you think the shaking and everything we've heard about it, it was like being in an earthquake. Plus the Gannett building, you know, with the people that called us uh, from the USA Today building. Oh, in D.C., right. right. Yeah. Uh, hello, uh, I don't know, Chris? Oh, I got it right. Chris, you're on with uh, Don and Mike on NEW and JFK. Hey, hey, it was mentioned earlier about uh, a flight that went in close to the Superior Court or the Supreme Court. Uh, had 
Had that been substantiated? We, or we had the report of a possible bomb explosion near the Supreme Court. Uh, there's not been any follow-up to that. So How I, about we, the car bomb at the State Department? Now, that has been uh, determined to not have happened. The State Department was evacuated, as was the Supreme Court building, but uh, we have no confirmed reports of car bombings at either of those locations. And most of you, do we? Well, I thank you guys. Keep up the good work. Thank you for listening. Did, did we ever find out about the, the hijacked police airplane? Well, you're, if you remember... In DC? We yeah, heard, I'd love to know about that. We heard that F-16s, two of them, escorted a Learjet to the ground at National Airport at a time that no other planes were landing anywhere else. And I, I have to think that that was the hijacked D.C. police plane. But in answer to your question, no, we haven't heard anything else. But, you know, I guess they would probably keep that quiet. Just like when we I asked about the, about the casualties at the, at the Pentagon, they're going to want to keep that quiet. And that anyway. interception and escort actually was, was brilliant because we were all sitting here debating, you know, if you have a plane in the air, do you shoot it down or do you let it go ahead and do its damage and not know how many people it's going to take out. Uh, the authorities may have done us one better here by safely escorting that plane to the ground. There may be suspects or people we can talk to on board. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, Buzz. Hello, Harold in New York. You're on with Don and Mike on NEW and JFK. Hello, Harold. Harold. Hey, hey guys. How are hey. you? Hey, dude. Uh, one of the things, I, I agree with you about rebuilding it for a symbolic point of view, but th this is really going to put a damper on the economy in New York, at least, because all these companies, they're not going to want to relocate. And if they do rebuild the buildings, who's going to want to work in them? You know, I, you can you can speculate on things like this all day long. Uh, right. I, I got to say, and I know I'm repeating myself quite a bit here. You do get to a point where you know there are so many things that are more important than that right now as we oh, speak. I, I, I and, agree and, and with that. Having which... said having said that, though, I I I, I mean, I think. You you don't people aren't going to stop coming to New York no. because this happened. People are not going to stop coming to Washington D.C. No, no, they because won't, this on happened a, on a personal level. Would you work in a building like that, a prime target now in the future? I listen. I mean, how, 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 do how, how do you know what building is a prime target and what building is not a prime know. target? Never target big. It was a target in 93. Be a when target, especially that. I mean, the Statue of Liberty, for all, all intents and purposes, could very well be yes. a target. So what are you going to say? Never go to the White House? No. Never, it, no, never, never take it. Well, this leads to my next point. They, they, they're creating fear over here. What we have to do is create fear over there. All right, yes, and they're, where they're, is, they don't, they're, they're more than happy to die. They let, can't wait to let die. Let me stop you for they a do. second. Where is over there? Well, Hamas, is, I've, I've heard one of the reports that Hamas claimed some responsibility. I, or I've heard Hamas somehow. three or four different people who have claimed responsibility. Okay, so we don't they, know. They want to claim responsibility. We should just bomb the hell out of them. And they, so, they so put another, a message out to any other terrorist cells. So in, your opinion, so, you, responsibility. so in your opinion, innocent lives for innocent lives is, is justifiable. Well, right? Even if the no, fact you, is you could go in and, and bomb a whole city and you might not get the masterminds of something that somebody no, we, that we, does. So we have a lot more uh, knowledge as to where their leaders yeah, are. What kind, of, what kind of knowledge? I'm sure the CIA, the FBI, they have some knowledge. They, no. they well, let me just, you mentioned before, these, these, these terrorists, they don't care about dying. And I agree, that's right. They're okay, happy hold on, die. hold on. I think the, the bottom line in all of this is if we identify who's responsible... Then yeah, then you yeah. can talk it's about just, right. you it's, talk it's about severe and yes, decisive. I don't disagree with that, but I'm saying right. what you're saying right now is anyone who is claiming responsibility, let's just go in and wipe them out. No, I'm not saying just go out and bomb all of the Middle East. Okay. Anybody who who wants, to, well, maybe not anybody who wants to claim responsibility, but we can get leads. And then, uh, as you said, they they don't they're not afraid to die. What they are afraid of is these terrorists. They blow themselves up in Israel. Their families are rewarded. Tremendously, no. they're given cash bonuses. Their families are now looked upon, and they're respected. If we strike fear into them, maybe these ones who are on the fringe, they will decide. They, All right, they listen, decide. hold on. I don't totally disagree with you, but I don't either. I don't. But, just, you know, but just let me say, if we do that, aren't we as bad as they are? Well. But they're striking fear into us. You know, they want to kill forty thousand of uh, our okay. people. Maybe we should. Send a message to them. You know, so it'll, I, it'll I, stop. I will tell you, there are going to there are going to be opinions and there are going to be speculations as to how to deal with this threat. But what we have to deal with right now, what I what I don't understand is that I hope people focus on the families and the and the individuals that were affected immediately by this tragedy today. The people that were really affected, not the people just in the city of New York, but the people that were had family there in the World Trade Center. I That's what I'm concerned I, I about. Before I want to fight this war that we don't we, where we don't know where the enemy is. But for a lot of these people that are calling us, they're people who've just listened to the radio all day, sure, watch TV all day, and they're day. angry. They know no one who they know no one directly. Directly, who was involved right. in this? So you got to understand their perspective too. They're they're just pissed. They're pissed, and you know, I listen to 
a guy like that, and I say to myself, if that's the case, if you have the uh, you know the terrorist families being rewarded, it's something we're going to need to uh, address. Um, let me see. All baseball games are off tonight. Uh, again, I know in the big picture, this doesn't really matter, but uh, there will be no baseball games played uh, tonight. Anywhere, Major League Baseball games. Um, I was having a conversation with uh, somebody during the commercial break. Hold on, Bush is on TV. Hold on. And the necessary security precautions to continue the functions of your government. We have been in touch with the leaders of Congress and with world leaders to assure them that we will do what is, whatever is necessary to protect America. And Americans. I ask the American people to join me in saying a thanks for all the folks who have been fighting hard to rescue our fellow citizens and to join me in saying a prayer for the victims and their families. The resolve of our great nation is being tested. But make no mistake, we will show the world that we will pass this test. God bless. Now, is that a replay? Of what I think that's a replay. It is, in fact. Could you tell? I, I couldn't see the monitor from here. Could you tell where he was speaking from? Could no. he, did it appear he might be aboard Air Force One? No, absolutely not. Yeah. All right. It, well, it appeared. I don't know. I don't know where he was. Okay. I, but, but, it, but he was on an airplane. You don't think so? No, it looked to me like he was in a meeting room somewhere. Really? Uh, well, mm-hmm. no. I, it's hard we'll, to tell. We'll, fi- we'll figure out the next time it's on. Right. I've been running it all the time. Uh, no baseball games tonight. I was uh, in conversation with someone wondering if the NFL was going to play games this weekend, and I said. Yes, the NFL played games the weekend after JFK was assassinated. Mm -hmm. They played games the weekend after Pearl Harbor, for God's sakes. Right. Yeah, I was just looking on the Internet, actually, about the baseball and all that stuff, and it said, it mentioned that, that after JFK's assassination, they played games, and they said, NFL said that was the biggest mistake we ever made. Mm -hmm. So they are considering um, college games and NFL games will most likely be canceled this weekend. No announcement, however, has been made. Wow, and you know, then if you think about that, if you think about the fact that there's not going to be any football, right? I mean, not to have the world revolve around us, but we are here doing a show. What type, what type of show do we do tomorrow? You wonder. I mean, tomorrow, tomorrow. You know, we do what we always have done, Don. We do what we've always done, which is based on that thing in front of you, that telephone, because we sense when we're getting our phone calls what people want to deal with. And you know what? I mean, do we do a regular show? Do we do uh, half a regular show and, and, and half a show about this? I mean, if we do another show like this, is it just going to be a rehash of what we've done today? It's, I hard, mean, to, it's hard to say. I don't really know. Is. I don't know. Uh, oh, here's another guy who thinks he just go bomb them. Yeah, bomb course. them. With them. The, we've hey. heard a lot of the military experts going. Don, on. hello, Don. Hey, Don. Hi, you're Don on the air. Mike, Buzz. Yeah. Hi. Everybody doing a fantastic job covering this thing. Thank you for listening. Listen, uh, all these people out there saying, you know, okay, we need to concentrate on, on the immediate people that, 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 that you know, uh, are befallen in this tragedy and everything, but this is an act of war. We need to find out who these people are, and, and, and even if we don't know exactly who they are, Go after them. Go after the people. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on. Yeah, you, even if you you lose, we don't know who exactly you lose who they me. are. You had me. I feel like Jerry Maguire. You, you had, had me at home. Well. You, had me until, <laughs> you had me until you said, even if we don't know who they are. Well, I'm one of those right, people right, that no, says we should. Let, let me, sir, hold on a second. Clear, hold on a second. Down. Hold on a second and okay. let me speak, okay? I was one of those people you're talking about who said we should focus on the people that are suffering right now before, you know, there are people in this country, in this government, that have the responsibility of protecting us and finding these individuals that did Let me this. comment on that real quick. Let me jump in. The people that are responsible for protecting us, the people in the government, the people in the military, why, for God's sakes, after the second plane hit the World Trade Center in the second tower, yeah. did they not scramble fire uh, uh, fighter planes in the Washington, D.C. area? They had to know. I don't yeah. doubt you're going to get answers to some of these questions they down the road. They had to know that something was going on. Mm-hmm. Why, in God's green earth, why in this country can we let a plane attack our center of military operations? And that's what it was. It was an attack. No, and listen, you're not going to get an argument from us on that, right? No, you're absolutely right. We feel the same way. And and it's difficult to, you know, answer these questions because we are hours away from this tragedy. We're disc jockeys. We don't know. But no, I I agree. How could it be that a guy could fly a plane into the Pentagon? How could it possibly be? I don't know. Here is... uh, 
Mike in New York. Hello, you're on with Don and Mike on NEW and JFK. Don and Mike. Hi. I believe uh, Channel 7 was reporting that when President Bush made the speech, he landed in a military facility in Louisiana, and they said that was briefly. Now he is back up on Air Force One. I just want to let you guys know that. All right, thanks. We thanks. appreciate it. Hello, uh, Mark in New Jersey. You're on with Don and Mike. Hello. Hi, and don't forget... Uh, this is this is uh, I mean reaches far beyond D.C. and New York. There's no air travel today in America anywhere. And everybody's affected by this. Everybody yes. that has a television set is affected by this. Hello. Hello. Hi, Mark. You're yeah. on the air. Hi. I'm in New Jersey. Yeah. Hi. Yeah, I can see the smoke from the trade centers from my building. Crazy. Um, I have an opinion that, that this is this is a world problem right now. Oh yeah, I agree. And with that that. the the U.S. should put out messages to all the countries of the world that are now offering their condolences that they should help offer the solution I agree. which is for all of these so-called human civilized countries of the world all of the governments should get their act together and anyone who supports this type of terrorist activity be eliminated from within if we can identify it, as, as Jerry uh, said, again, follow the money. Again, we, we've right. got to identify the people. I've got to gonna... identify it. I'll tell you one thing, that, you know, that I was talking to the people here. The world has changed forever as we know it today. I, you know, I am, I am blown away. I mean, I'm almost getting desensitized to the pictures of New York. And I've looked out on the window and seen the pictures in the street. But to see the Pentagon... Yeah. Like, like with the, the ashes coming out of it That's and stuff. Amazing. I mean, that... Sickening. That... That, that makes yeah right. It makes you feel sick. It's a sick thing. Like, Jesus Christ! How could someone do that? That's the Pentagon. Jesus Christ! The Pentagon is on fire. You know. Hello, uh, Marie in Brooklyn. You're on with Don and Mike on NEW and JFK. Hello. Hey, Don and Mike. How are you? Hi, Marie. Thank you for waiting. No problem. I just had some update information. If anyone, anybody wants to donate blood in Brooklyn, not all hospitals are accepting blood. They have deferred. Um, to 120 Lawrence Street. Uh, the phone number there is uh, 246-1684, 1634, or 1912. Um, it's, again, 120 Lawrence Street. Wait, it's hold on, Buzz. What, are you, are you going to correct her? or? No, no, she's doing fine. Okay, great. All right. Okay, those are just the extensions that I read. I want to make sure we get it right. All right, thank you, uh, Marie. We, we appreciate it. It's off of uh, Fulton Avenue new, uh, near Metro Tech. And also the Marriott on Adams Street is going to be setting up later to be accepting blood donations. Beautiful. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Marie, thanks. I know you waited on the line a long time. No problem. Those Appreciate hospitals, uh, that was good information. Those hospitals, if you do approach one and they say, we can't take it, they can certainly refer you to who can. Uh, we had a caller earlier who said he had no O negative and he'd donate a gallon if they needed it. O negative is, in fact, one of the types of blood they, they need most severely, O and O negative. And do you know uh, what type of blood you have? O-Town. Oh, town. <laughs> I, I have no idea. I, I feel A bad positive. about it. A positive. I forgot. No, I thought yours was gravy, Rob. <laughs> gravy. That's ragu. right. <laughs> ragu. Yeah, ragu. And here's an 800 number for people in the New York area also to check on uh, the ability to donate blood, and that's 1-800-933-2566. That's 800-933-2566. I'm seeing a crawl on CNN that says uh, the FBI says they have no idea. Oh, great. No, no idea who's done this. I mean, it, right. and you can't expect them to solve no, it, it, it not immediately in, no. in six hours for so, so many times when things like this happen it weeks drag on and months drag on and we never hear and i don't know i'm hello. concerned about uh, it frustrating don and mike show you're on the air hello hello hi who's this this is kevin from dc hi kevin hi um we were roofing on a um apartment building in arlington at the time this happened and uh, there was a fighter plane Following the jet plane, I think they could have shot it down, but it's a passenger plane, so how can you shoot it down? Um, are, 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 are we if that's true. Are we talking about the the DC plane that yeah, we that would be if they're in Arlington? That'd be the one that uh, heading towards the Pentagon. Right, so. right. We um, we heard the fighter plane go by, and then we heard the explosion um, probably two minutes later. Mm. And uh, there was another plane of four uh, engine. Big gray, look like a military plane. Now hold on, let me just stop you for a second. Are you talking about the plane that ran into the Pentagon? Yes, he's talking yeah, about because okay. they were in okay. Arlington. He's talking about and seeing a military plane. And there was plane, a fighter that was following that. And plane? then he's saying a four engine, uh, right. what appeared I to be believe, a military plane. I believe they knew about it and they could have shot it down, but they they had the uh, 
issue of shooting down innocent passengers mm-hmm. when you don't really know where it's going to land. Yeah, that's that's a question too that arises too. You know, when do you know what's really what's really happening? You know, yeah, and that's well, where that's where the protocol for approaches and takeoffs from National Airport will probably have to be a little firmer. All right, changes. Thank mind. you, my friend. Let's go to. Uh, uh, Anna, Anna, I'm sorry, Anna from New York. You're on with Donna Mike on JFK and uh, Eddie W. Hello. Hello. Hi, baby. Um, I was going to school in Oklahoma City during the bombing. I was only 15, and now I'm here in New York going to school. And um, I will definitely tell you this one takes the cake. And I have my uncle now in the Pentagon, and I don't know. I haven't heard any word from him. And somebody had called in. Talking of our people still going to visit New York, um, and our people, you know, no one ever knows when and where this is going to happen, and people right. aren't going to want to live in New York because now this is going to be the prime. Right. What's your point? Well, the point is, is nobody knew that the bombing was going going to happen in Oklahoma. I mean, who's going to think? Oh, there's going to ever be a bombing in Oklahoma. No, you're right. And the point is, you can't you can't live afraid. You, you well, can't you can't be afraid to live in D.C. You can't live afraid. And also, another thing, another point is, is that right after that bombing happened, everyone was pointing fingers at terrorism, at the Arabic countries, or you know, like they're doing right now. Making well, the evidence is really you know. Yeah, we don't have any evidence yet. Well, yeah, we, we don't, don't have know. any evidence, but of course. We were pointing fingers at suspects that really could have matched up, and then look who did it. It was an American. Right. And what I'm saying is we cannot point fingers at all right now. What we need to focus on are innocent lives yeah. and families. Absolutely. I tell you what, though, if it's an American who did this, yes. Jesus Christ, let's put it on Fox and let's finally do that televised I mean, I mean, and an execution is it's too kind a word if it's an American. But she was absolutely right as far as uh, the reaction after the Oklahoma City tragedy. I mean, I remember getting the same kind of uh, response from people about, "Hey, we ought to get them," and we got, you know, we have to find out as much information as we can get. But right now, the focus is on. God, what if it is a douchebag like Timothy McVeigh that's behind us? You never what know. If, I mean, you never know. I would say the scale. Of what happened today, and uh, the the number of incidents today would uh, would probably uh, push that possibility to the back. A little more brain power, perhaps, than your average Tim McVeigh. Or, yeah, a little more organized. Huge, yeah. Yeah. huge operation. Yeah, right. Hello, she made a good point. But you notice this only happens in cities where she goes to school. So Hello. she right. could do us a favor and stay home. Dave, you're on the air with Don and Mike on NEW and JFK. Hello. Yeah. Hi. Uh, hi. I just had a brief thought. Uh, although we may not know specifically who did this act. They have a pretty long list of organizations that have engaged in terrorism. Right. And if they haven't proved anything else by this, they've proved that they're not a nuisance. They're really dangerous. Mm -hmm. Uh, It might be well to think of starting at the beginning of that list and going down to the end of it and trying to stamp out these organizations before they get us. Yeah, who knows? Like having a dangerous snake in your living room. All right. I got you. Thank you. Hello. Here is uh, Paul with uh, Don and Mike on NEW. Hold on. Is this Giuliani? Hold on. We're all undergoing right now. Is Mayor Giuliani right now? This is live. Live. We've had nightmares about I probably thought wouldn't happen. Hold on, Paul. My heart goes out to all of the innocent victims of this horrible and vicious act of terrorism, acts of terrorism. And our focus now this is Mayor Giuliani. to be on saving as many lives as possible. Right. Uh, WNEW. We have hundreds WGFK. of police officers and firefighters who are engaging in rescue efforts in lower Manhattan. I want to thank Governor Pataghi for the incredible cooperation and coordination and including uh, deploying the National Guard that will be available to relieve our police officers and firefighters and emergency workers in the next couple of hours. Uh, the governor and I just spoke to the President of the United States. The coordination with the federal government from the time of the first attack has been excellent, including closing off the airspace around Manhattan and doing everything that can possibly be done in the face of this barbaric act to make the city secure. And we will uh, strive now very hard to save as many people as possible and to send a message that the city of New York and the United States of America is much stronger than any group of barbaric terrorists, that our democracy, that our rule of law, that our strength and our willingness to defend ourselves will ultimately prevail. And I'd ask the people of New York City to do everything that they can to cooperate, not to be frightened, to go about their lives as normal. 
everything is safe right now in the city, and the people who are doing the relief effort needs all, need all the help they can get. And then, uh, Governor, thank you very, thank you, very much for your assistance and your help and your support. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor, for your leadership through this crisis. This is uh, a vicious attack upon New York. It's an attack upon America. It's an attack upon the whole concept of freedom and our way of life. Uh, and we cannot let these uh, attacks succeed. Uh, the first step has to be to make sure we do everything in our power to protect the people and to save the lives of those who, whose lives are still at risk and to help those who have been injured. And I want to commend the mayor. And I want to thank my colleagues from Connecticut, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and the federal government have all offered and made ready uh, support to help us uh, deal with this ongoing crisis. Uh, the people of New York are uh, not only the, the freest and most diverse people in the world, we're also, I believe, the most capable of rising to meet the challenges of this type of attack. And right now we want New Yorkers to uh, remain calm, to go about their business, to appreciate the fact that everything to provide for their safety is being done, to appreciate that everything that can be done to provide for the health and the needs of the people who are still at risk is being done and that we will continue to work to make sure that we get through this uh, as strongly and quickly as possible. I want to thank the uh, federal administration. Secretary Thompson has been on the phone with me a number of times as well as the president uh, for what they are offering and prepared to do. Uh, and we're just uh, confident that, uh, uh, well, this is a horrible attack and one that uh, is despicable and uh, really unthinkable in its magnitude. We will get through this. Uh, and we will continue to have a great and free country, state, and society. Do we know the number of casualties at this point, sir? I don't, I don't think we, we really want to speculate about that. The number of casualties will be more than any, any of us can bear, ultimately. And I don't think we want to speculate on the number of casualties. The effort now has to be to save as many people as possible. And I, don't think, I don't think we will know the answer to that until sometime tomorrow or the next day. Numbers of firefighters. There are a large number of firefighters and police officers who are uh, in harm's way, and we don't know how, ma how many we've lost. But there's no doubt we've lost we've lost some firefighters and police officers. Do you know anything about the cause of the explosions that brought the two buildings down yet? Was it caused by the planes or by something else? We, be we, we believe we believe that it was caused by the after effects of the of the planes hitting the, the, the buildings. We don't we don't know of an additional explosion. specific information to that effect. Obviously, the city is now closed. The airspace around the city is closed. Uh, and we are on heightened alert. But we have no specific information suggesting any further attack. I think to give the people of New York confidence, to show that the federal government is standing with us, and, and to uh, just to make certain that nothing further happens. This has been a very, very difficult and traumatic day for the people of the United States and the people of the city. And I think that it's, a, it's an act that shows that the federal government is going to do everything they can to support us and help us. There, there are over a thousand rescue workers, probably about 2,000 that are deployed, trying to get into the buildings, trying to find people, trying to search for people. The governor and I spoke a couple of hours ago. The governor has deployed the National Guard to relieve them because our, our people are going to need reinforcements pretty, pretty soon. But right now they don't want to leave because they're searching they're searching for innocent citizens and they're searching for some of their some of their brothers and sisters. Are you finding survivors? Yes, we, we have um, we have some numbers that we can give you. We have 1,500 people at Liberty State Park who were evacuated, described as walking wounded. They were evacuated by ferry and other means. There are about 600 as of about 15 minutes ago in local hospitals that we account for. 600 people were being treated in local hospitals, and there are 150 uh, in 
particular that were critical that were moved by EMS. New York City has 170 hospitals, so we have a lot of hospitals, and we're utilizing all of them. Probably the one that was the hardest hit was St. Vincent's Hospital, and I would like to just single them out and commend them, because as I was rushing down there, after the first plane hit, uh, before the second, they were already deploying people on the street. I could see the doctors and nurses outside getting ready to receive people, and that was before the second plane actually hit the World Trade Center. What was your experience down there? Also, blood donations. We have several sites for blood donations. 153 East 53rd Street, 66 in Amsterdam, which is the Red Cross, and 310 East 67th Street. Uh, we, if people want to do something and they can donate blood, that, that's going to help not just today, but tomorrow and the next day. This, uh, this relief effort is going to take uh, some time. Mr. Mayor, you were one of the first people down there. Can you describe the scene in your own words, what you saw down there? I don't know that I'm really able to describe it. It was the most horrific scene I've ever seen in my whole life. Uh, we saw the, the uh, World Trade Center uh, in flames, a big gaping hole all the way on the top of it. We could see people jumping from the top of the building. Um, and then uh, we, we went into um, Barclay Street, 75 Barclay Street, I think it was, and we were there when the building collapsed, and it collapsed in part on 75 Barclay Street. So we were trapped in the building for maybe 10 or 15 minutes, trying to get out different exits. And we finally went through a basement and came out 100 Park, Park Place. Sure. Yeah. Uh, there is uh, Mayor Giuliani. That's uh, that's live. That's what's happening. We are uh, rapidly running out of time. Don and Mike on 1027 WNEW New York, 1067 WJFK Washington. Uh, Buzz, uh, can you can you wind things up? Can you give us a final look at, at what's happened and at where we stand now? It, well, uh, things are quiet, and that's the best news that we can report right now. Uh, we understand that uh, there are now 50 uh, planes in American airspace, and the FAA reports no problems. Uh, I don't know what that means exactly, because all of the airports are still closed, and all transatlantic flights are still, at last report at least, being diverted to Canada. Well, if it's uh, transatlantic flights, uh, Buzz, that means that uh, perhaps some domestic uh, planes are, are in the air, Perhaps I would, I would in the air yeah. from yeah from previous launchings. Um, again, uh, an amazing uh, terrorist attack on the United States today. Uh, the devastation uh, of which we will be feeling for some time, uh, with a tremendous loss of life, starting with uh, the crash of two separate planes into the two separate towers of the World Trade Center. Within an hour later, a commercial jet also uh, crashed into the Pentagon. As we estimated earlier, a total of 381 airline passenger lives lost. Uh, we don't know how many thousands from the World Trade Center. No reports of fatalities yet from the Pentagon. We do know about 50 people were injured, and at least seven of them are in critical condition. Uh, your government officials are, are safe and in control. Uh, Colin Powell has returned to this country from Latin America. Uh, President Bush is returning to Washington from uh, some plans he had in Florida. And uh, the Secretary of Defense, uh, Donald Rumsfeld, is uh, safely at the other end of the Pentagon from where the plane crashed into it today. All right, Buzz, we want to uh, thank everybody at WNAW, yeah. everybody back at JFK, and everybody up uh, on the uh, 10th floor at uh, 1010 Winds. I do want to say, if you get a chance uh, sometime today, say uh, say a prayer for yeah. all the people that have been affected directly by this tragedy and also all the uh, the rescue workers, the EMTs, the emergency personnel who are at this hour uh, working to try to find survivors and uh, help people out of this uh, disaster. We uh, will be back tomorrow. I, I, I don't know if we're going to do a regular show, if we're going to do a hybrid show. Uh, you know, we'll see what happens. Find this uh, the greatest tragedy in American history. I, I really do believe, and uh, that Excuse that me. will dictate what we do tomorrow. We we'll try to get back on track, but again, you know, we'll see, and who knows what's going to happen tonight. Uh, it may seem jive, but I do feel that uh, this is the appropriate song to play. We're going to play this now. Do it, uh, Ray Charles, and we'll leave you. Opie and Anthony are next on 106.7 WJFK and 102.7 WNEW. We will see you tomorrow.